Kukuru Mountain. Looks like it's in the Republic of Padukia. The country is open to all foreign visitors. You should be able to get there in three days by airship. So when do you plan to leave? As soon as possible. I'll stick with you all the way to the ends of the earth, Gong. That flight was so relaxing. Well, this time we were in first class, not like when we flew during the exam. So what are we going to do now? Now we need to find a train that'll take us to Dendora. And from there, we should be able to find our way to Kukuru Mountain. Huh. This is what a first-class cabin looks like. Ah, oh, this is great! <laughs> it's so soft! <laughs> oh, oh, what the...? Hey, what's the matter, Gone? Uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to get out of this thing. You should stay put. You're injured, so you should be taking it easy. Huh? But I was hoping we could go and explore the train together. Are you kidding? What makes you think I'd want to do that? You always try to poke your nose where it doesn't belong. No hmm. thanks. Ooh. So what am I supposed to do then? Why don't you ask Kurapika? Maybe he'll go with you. Hmm. Well, Kurapika? What the... Oh. 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 Sorry, Gon, what were you saying? Yeah, never mind. You can't even feel the train shaking in first class. Uh-huh. There's only two first class cabins, so we're lucky to get one. It's because we have these. Our license cards? That's right. The Hunter Association receives priority seating on all major forms of transportation. That's why it was so easy for us to get these seats. This was covered during orientation. Huh. Was it really? I'm guessing you were busy thinking about how to find Kilua. No wonder you didn't learn all that much. Well, whatever. I'm just glad we get to ride in first class. I can never get much sleep when I travel in coach. There is a way to sleep, if you know how. Uh -huh. I've developed a special technique. Yeah? So what is it? It's actually very simple. The problem with third class seats is that you can never lie down because they have armrests, right? Mm-hmm. So the question is, how do you get comfortable? Hmm. I found there's only one thing you can do to get to sleep. I'm a hunter and I still get to listen to what it's like to travel and coach. Oh, man. Hey, Laorio, are you even listening? Yeah, I'm listening. There it is. Kilua lives on that mountain? Yeah, Kukuru Mountain is where the Zoldic family estate is supposed to be located. And now seeing it with my own eyes gives me the creeps. We'll have to be very careful about how we do this. I say we check into a hotel and come up with a plan. Yeah, and maybe ask some questions around the village. We don't need to do that. We came here to visit a friend of ours, didn't we? Who knows, maybe he'll even let us stay overnight at his house. <laughs> Are you really that clueless? Ah! Oh. Ah, this is a brand new tie! Mm. Ah. <laughs> Come back here, you little... It was an accident! Clueless, huh? You're going to Kukuru Mountain? I'm guessing you want to see the Zoldics. There's a tour bus that leaves from the village once a day. A guide will even go along with you. A tour bus? They really have that? We didn't come here to sightsee. We have some business with the family. Huh? Uh -huh. There seems to be a lot of tourists who have business with the Zoldics. Well, anyway, your best bet is to take the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, ma'am. You're welcome. How's everybody doing? Thank you for choosing Lamentation Tours. We have a lovely trip planned for you today. I'll be your guide for the duration of the trip. I'm very pleased to meet you all. My name is Coco Lou, but since we're all friends here, you can call me Coco. 
All right, everyone. If you need anything, just ask me, okay? Oh, I certainly will. Mm. Tell me something, Coco. Uh, yes, sir? I want to know how long it's going to take us to get to Kukuru Mountain. <laughs> uh, we'll be there in about two hours, sir. Hey, did you hear that? What should we do, make them step on it? The mountain's not going anywhere, so let's just sit back and relax. You can keep going, Coco. Right. Now I just have a few announcements to make. Any Those guys don't look like tourists to me. My guess is that they're bounty hunters who've come to try to bring in members of the Zoldic family and claim the reward money. That's because there are many the woman from the village probably thought we were planning okay? the same thing. Also, please refrain from standing or moving up and down the aisle while the bus is in motion. All right, everyone. If you look out the windows to your left, oh. this is Kukuru Mountain. Home to the infamous Zoldic family. It's actually an extinct volcano surrounded by a beautiful old growth forest. Legend has it that the Zoldic family mansion is located on the summit, but no one has ever seen it. There are currently four generations of the Zoldic family said to be living on the estate. There's the great-grandfather, one set of grandparents, and a family with five children. And they're all assassins. We'll have an even better view of the mountain in just a few minutes. Oh. What the hell? That's gotta be the biggest gate I've ever seen. This is the main gate to the Zoldic estate. No one who has gone through those doors has lived to tell about it. That's why it's known as the Door to Hades. What the heck is Hades? It's the underworld. Sounds like fun. Excuse me, uh, miss? Please, you can call me Coco. <clears throat> Do you know how we can get inside there, Coco? Everything beyond the gate is Zoldic family property. So I'm sorry, but this is as far as we go. Seriously? I had a feeling it wasn't gonna be that easy. But we're not anywhere near the mountain yet. That's not fair. They own all this property? That's right. They own the entire forest as well as all of the land surrounding Kukuru Mountain, including the very mountain itself. No way! So the land from here, all the way there, belongs to them? Um, excuse me, miss? Uh, miss? Uh, Coco? Yes, what is it? How do I get through the gate? I want to go in. Hmm. Weren't you listening to my announcements, young man? Yeah, but I... Even if you uh... got inside, you'd never make it out. This is the home to assassins, remember? Yeah, but I... I'm not buying it. It's all just a story they've created to protect themselves. But since nobody's ever seen these Zoldics, I've heard that photos of them are worth hundreds of millions. No way! Their reputation's based on nothing but rumors. Yeah, I bet in reality they're not all that tough. Wait! What are you guys planning to do? <laughs> That's dynamite! You're gonna blow up the gate? Could have gotten us all killed. Huh? Oh. There's not a scratch on it. Ah, crap! That gate's a lot stronger than I thought it would be. No kidding. Now well, that was rather foolish. If you guys thought that would open the gate, you don't know what you're up against. Well, well, the security guard. How convenient. <gasps> I want you to open the gate. I can't do that. My master would never forgive me. I'm under strict orders not to let anyone in. I wouldn't worry about that. After we're through with your master, he won't give you much trouble. But listen, this gate can't be... Look, just shut up and open it. You hear me? Open it right now. Hmm? It looks like you dropped something. <clears throat> hey, mister! You all right? Yeah, thanks for asking. I'll be just fine. Hmm? Hey, listen, you two! I wouldn't do that if I were you! Hmm. 
Don't say I didn't <laughs> warn you. <sighs> Ready or not, Zoldix, here we come. Don't mess with me. <laughs> I'd like to see him try. <laughs> They're gonna go and spoil Mike's appetite. Huh? I better get ready. <clears throat> Mike? Yeah, uh, doesn't that sound like a name of a cat? Yeah, kind of. Orders not to let Mike snack between meals. Mike, you want to get fat? Ah. What was that thing? <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. May I have your attention, please? You've just witnessed what happens to those who venture through the door to Hades. Hey, would you just shut up and get us out of here? <sighs> All right, everybody. Time to get back on the bus. It's okay. Huh? You go ahead. We're gonna stay here. Thanks. Huh? So, you're his friends. It's been a very long time since I last heard that word. My name's Zebro, and I've been working in this gatehouse going on 20 years now. To be honest, this is a first. No one's ever come here as a friend before. And it warms my heart. It really does. As an employee of the family, I probably shouldn't be telling you this. But this is a very desolate place. No one ever comes here to visit them. Well, except for guys like that, of course. We get plenty of them. I guess that's to be expected. Part of the cost of doing business. It's not much of a business, if you ask me. Well, it was very nice of you to come all this way for a visit. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's no problem. Uh, hey, it's our pleasure. Unfortunately, there's still no way I can allow you to pass through those gates. Huh? You saw what happened to those bounty hunters, right? And that big grizzly paw? Well, that belongs to Mike, the Zoldic family guard dog. That beast can't be called off. It only takes orders from family members. It's still acting on orders given by its master over ten years ago. Kill anyone who sets foot on our property. But he's pushing his luck. He's not really supposed to eat them. So, there you have it. As long as old Mike's on the job, you better not go in there. And the three of you are Master Kilua's only friends. I can't let you get eaten alive, can I? <laughs> Excuse me, Zebro, but why doesn't Mike attack you? Hmm? You have keys to the gate, which means you must go inside from time to time. How do you avoid getting eaten? Isn't it obvious he's an employee? Mike knows him. But he just said that Mike couldn't be called off and didn't take orders from anyone other than members of the Zoldic family. So that also means he has no control over him. And didn't you also say that the orders are for him to kill anyone who sets foot on the property? Which means, under that order, even a trusted family employee wouldn't be safe on the other side. You make a very good point. But you only guessed the half of it. Huh? When I go through the gate, I don't actually use a key. All those keys up there are meant for intruders. Like those bounty hunters today. There's always at least one or two of their kind on the tour bus that comes up here every week. And they all think they can get inside by simply breaking down the gate. 
After a while, I started getting tired of it. So I went to the trouble of having a side door installed, which has a lock. I see. Now, when they realize that they can't break through the main gate, they come after me and steal the keys. And of course, once they get inside, Mike chews them up. It's pretty clever, don't you think? <laughs> it sure is. You're not really a gatekeeper, are you? You're quite right. I'm not actually a gatekeeper. I'm just the guy who cleans up after Mike. And the reason you don't need a key and Mike doesn't attack you when you walk through the main gate is because it's not even locked, is it? Bingo. <laughs> what? Hmm. Huh? Ah! This stupid door won't budge no matter what I do! Well, that's because you're not pushing hard enough. Come on! I'm giving it everything I've got! I'm sure you are. This gate is also known as the testing gate. If you can't open it, then you have no business entering the Zoldic property. Now, if you'll please stand aside. Oh. Oh. As you probably noticed, the gate slams shut as soon as you release it, so you have to move quickly. Uh, oh. Every year it gets a little harder for me to do that. Once I can't do it anymore, I suppose I'll be out of a job. <laughs> You're a very clever young man, you know that? Do not attack anyone who enters the property through the testing gate. That's the other order Mike's been given. Yeah. By the way, the doors of that first gate weigh about two tons each. Two tons? No way! Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I hear you say first gate? Yes. See for yourself. There are seven gates in all, and with each additional gate, the weight is doubled. Doubled? What gate number you open depends on how strong you can push. By the way... When young Master Kilua came home, he was able to open up the third gate. Really? That would be... 12 tons! Actually, it's 16. Now you understand. They don't live in the same world we do. You just can't walk up to their house and ring the doorbell. So it's virtually impossible. I know another way. Hmm? We can just call Kilua and ask him to open it from the inside! Couldn't you call Kilua for us and tell him that Gon, Kurapika, and Leorio are here to see him? Well, that is an idea. But it's not something I can really do, you know? Why not? The only thing you need to do is talk to Kilua. Once he knows we're here, I know he'll open the gate. You can do that, can't you? Well, th the thing is, we have all sorts of rules and regulations here. Mm, unless you tell him we're here, I won't move from this spot. Hmm. <laughs> Even if you, you do that, uh, there's still nothing I can do. Huh? Hey, what are you guys doing? Not you, too. Oh. Ah, uh, this isn't good. Around here, all sorts of wild animals come out after the sun goes down. to be mad about. You're not even hungry, are you? You were just feeling a little annoyed, weren't you? Annoyed? Oh, boy. Hmm. hmm? That's, That's not good. Good doggy. All right, I give up. 
If I don't help you now, I'm sure you'll come up with a way to get in sooner or later. And then you'll just be devoured. And Mike and I would really regret it if Master Kilua's only friends were eaten. Well, come on. Let's give it a try. Really? Hello? Yes, hello. This is Zebro. That's right. Uh, sorry to bother you, but I have three young men here who say they are young Master Kilua's friends. I know, and I I'm sorry. Of course, I understand. It won't happen again. Oh, I should have known that he'd get mad at me. So what happened? Did you get to talk to someone at the house? Well, I only spoke to the Zoldig family butler. You can't speak to anyone in the family without going through him first. They almost never answer the phone themselves. Hmm. Hey, wait, I've got an idea. Yeah? Let's try calling again, okay? I'll talk to him this time. If that's what you want. But don't be surprised if he gets mad at you. Great, thanks. Hello, you've reached the Zoldic Butler Chambers. Hi there, my name is Gon, and I'm here to see Kilua. He's a good friend of mine. Do you think I could speak to him, please? Master Kilua doesn't have any friends. Huh? Hello, you've reached the Zoldic Butler Chambers. It's me again? What's that supposed to mean? Why can't I talk Master to- Master Kilua doesn't have any friends. Oh. Hello? You Listen, reached... buddy, how do you know he doesn't have any friends? Let me talk to Kilua right now! Did you say your name was Go? That's right. Let's assume for a moment that Master Kilua is in fact friends with someone named Go. There's no way for me to know that you're really him now, is there? Put Kilua on the phone, he can tell! I assume you mean by the sound of your voice. I'm afraid that's not good enough. Why not? Put Kilua on the phone, he can tell! It's very easy to record or imitate someone else's voice. Especially when it's over the telephone. Yeah, but... Let me guess. Now you're going to tell me that he'd know you if he sees you in person, right? Again, even though it's more difficult, there are ways to make yourself look like someone else. And even if you are who you say you are, how do I know that someone isn't just using you to get to Master Kilua? Assassination is the family business. Naturally, this creates a lot of enemies. But it's my job to make sure those enemies don't get anywhere near them. So as long as you pose even the slightest threat to Master Kilua, there's absolutely no way I can allow you to see him. I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. <coughs> <sighs> Uh, hey, Gone! Uh, what do you think you're doing? What did he say to you? Tell us. He tried to tell me that Kilua didn't have any friends. Hmm. He also thinks we might be here to kill him, and that's why he won't let me in. But if he isn't gonna let me in, I'll find my own way. That's too dangerous. He's right. If you go over that wall, you'll be chewed up by Pochi or Fido or something. Mike. I know that, but that's not gonna stop me. Because all I'm here to do is see my friend, and why do I have to prove that? You guys, wait for me here. Huh? I can do this by myself. Are you kidding? There is no way you're gonna get by that monster by yourself. I'll think of something. Oh, yeah? Would Don't you worry, two calm I'm down? Right. Hmm. No, you won't. That's what I'm trying You've to You've left tell me you. no choice. You want to die or something? I'll be here, all right. Here, huh? Go. Use this. Huh? Is that the key for the side door? Yes. No sense in breaking your neck trying to climb over the wall. It's much easier to use the door. Hold on. To tell you the truth, I agree with what Gon was just saying. It doesn't seem right that in order to visit a friend, you should have to prove who you are first. But if you climb over the wall, you'll never make it. Mike will eat you for sure. As far as I'm concerned, if you're willing to do something like this, you've already proven yourself. And that's why I've decided to go inside there with you. What? If I'm with you, there's a very slight chance that Mike will recognize me, and that might be enough to keep him from attacking you. Or, at least I hope so. You don't have to do that. Because you've already gone out of your way so much to help us. Oh well, I insist. It would be the same fate either way. Hmm? 
I could never face young Master Kilua if I let his friends get eaten alive by Mike without at least trying to help them. Now could I? If you die, then I'll die along with you. I'm really sorry. I wasn't thinking. I never meant to put you in trouble. What a good kid. He's very determined, yet he's willing to put aside his own desires for the sake of others. It's no wonder his friends are so loyal. He's ready to face any danger as long as he sticks together with them. And that's not all. Hey, Gon, would you like to go in and meet Mike now? Huh? Sure. Then I'll open the testing gate again so you can see him face to face this time. Uh, I'd like that. <laughs> Hey, are you sure it's safe for us to be in here? Of course. If you enter through the testing gate, you're not considered an intruder. Something's coming. <sighs> Whoa! Is that him? That's Mike. <sighs> now do you understand? This is a highly trained hunting beast. You thought you'd be able to communicate with him. Until you looked into his eyes. At the moment, Mike is getting to know you by memorizing your appearance and scent. He doesn't care about anything else. Like a machine. Exactly. Even though he sees me almost every day, if I came in through the wrong gate by mistake, he'd kill me in a heartbeat. So, Gon, do you still think you can tame him? Uh, there's no way. I can't. He scares me too much to do that. Such honesty. Well, we should probably get moving. What? The servants' quarters aren't too far from here. We'll put you up for the night. Come on, follow me. Seek one. Well, what do you know? We've got company. I'll introduce you. This is Sequant. He's one of my colleagues. These boys are friends of Master Kilua's. Their names are Kurapika, Gon, and Leorio. Hey there! Master Kilua has friends? Huh. <laughs> well then, make yourselves at home. Or try to anyway. It won't be easy. What does he mean by that? Okay, you three. Your rooms are right this way. We have to go in through these two doors. So, who wants to try opening them? Here! Let me! Like this? It won't even budge! Each of these doors weighs 200 kilograms. All right. There you go! That wasn't so... They slam shut just like the testing gate. So you can't really let up until you're inside. You could have told me sooner. Well, this is it. Come on in. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's with the slippers? Oh, right. I forgot. They each weigh 20 kilograms. Please, come in. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Ah! Hey, what's wrong with you? You'll know soon enough. Just try to take a sip of your tea. Mm -hmm. uh, Told you. This cup is a lot heavier than it looks. In order to live here, we have to train ourselves constantly in everything that we do. What? It certainly makes sense that anyone who lives beyond the testing gate would be stronger than average. Hey, we're hunters, right? We should be able to do this no problem. <laughs> You're hunters? Yeah. Actually, we all just passed the hunter exam together. Oh? Yeah, big deal. Excuse me? Even if you got a hunter's license, that doesn't mean much. There are lots of times when it's completely useless. I was watching you just now. I bet you didn't even open the testing gate, did you? That's what I thought. If you can't even open the gate, you have no business being here. You should go home now before you get hurt. Hang on a second! If I open the testing gate, you better take that back! Leorio? Well, I've got to do something! I can't just stand here and let some guy who's not even a hunter put us down like that! I'm gonna do it too! 
I'll keep on trying for as long as it takes, and I won't quit until I open it. Go. Maybe he's right. If I can't even open that gate, maybe I don't deserve to be here or talk to someone in the Zoldick family. Hmm. I understand. I'm just worried we won't have enough time to train for it before we have to leave. What do you mean? You heard him. I seem to remember some young imbecile insisting it was too early to start using our hunter licenses, so we all had to enter the country on tourist visas. That means you can only stay in Padokia for a maximum of 30 days. But the three of you are still quite young, so I think we should have enough time. Would you like to train here with me at the house? Can we? If you'd like to. Let's do it! How could we refuse that offer? I'm ready for it. Well then, why don't we get started right away? Yeah! yeah! Guess we'll see. This is part of our training? Yep. Before you go to bed, I want you to clean the house. Okay, consider it done. Ooh. Ooh. Heavy! The broom and mop weigh 25 kilograms and the bucket weighs 30. That makes sense. Let's get this over with. It's probably not so bad once you get used to it. Oh, that's right. One more thing. <sighs> What's next? Those weights you're now wearing total 100 kilograms. You should wear them at all times except while you're asleep. See you in the morning. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I already mopped over there. At the rate we're going, we're going to be here all night long. What is going on here? You haven't finished with this room yet? You still have to clean the second and third floors, you know. And please don't forget the bathrooms. Is this actually training or does he just want the house clean? Maybe it's a bit of both. <laughs> I'm here, Chilua. Not far from you. We'll definitely see each other soon. Huh? Leorio? Where are you going? Bathroom. Go! <laughs> are you okay? Uh-huh. This is the first time I've ever heard you hum. Really? I'm still trying to figure out why you brought them here. I had no idea you were that bored. That kid Gong came all this way just to visit young Master Kilua, and he did so because they happened to be friends. How could I turn him away? Don't be a fool. They can't see each other. It's impossible. That may be so. Huh? But you know, there's just something about Gon that makes me think there's hope. <laughs> Careful, old man. I think you got your hopes up way too high. A lot. So you're working pretty hard, aren't you, kid? Yeah. I want to see Kilua as soon as I can. You know, a few years ago, a blacklist hunter came here with a hundred of his finest men, planning to storm the Zoldic estate. Yeah? But before they could even reach the foot of the mountain, they were struck down and left a pile of corpses. That's what's going to happen to you guys. You'd better quit while you're ahead. You don't know that. We're not going to quit without even trying. In this world, there are some things that are too difficult to achieve. You better take my advice, kid. Go home. You don't belong here. No way! I'm not going anywhere until I've seen Kilua. Huh. Sure. Whatever. You almost got it! Ooh. Keep pushing! It's no use. Just a little more and you would have had it. Oh. Well, I should get going. It's almost time for my shift. It won't move. How long is this gonna take? Hey, no one ever said this was gonna be easy. That's true. But we've been here ten days. I wonder if we're getting any stronger. 
I know. Hmm? Hmm. There is this one. Yeah, what about it? I'm gonna try to see if I can open up Zebro's little decoy door. But if you open that door, won't Mike attack you? No, not if I don't go inside. I guess not. Don't worry. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Has all this training made me stronger or not? <laughs> <laughs> gonna get back from there. Mike's gonna find Leorio any second. I've gotta do something. But what? <gasps> what the hell? You idiots! Hey, look, it's Sequant. Huh? Go, wait! What have you done? Well, we, No uh... time to explain! Ugh. Don't run off trying to lure Mike away! Stupid kid! This is crazy! What was I thinking? He's gonna catch me! Damn it! What am I doing? Oh no! Gone's trapped! He can't move! Stand back! Hey! Shut up! You'll have to trust me. Go! Sequon, please! Isn't there something we can do to stop Mike? No. Mike's a hunting dog. Only someone in the Zoldic family can stop him now. This is it! Who's whistling? Don't! Don't! He's over here! Huh? What a lucky kid you are. Here, grab my hand. I got you now. That was a close one. Listen up, everyone. The enormous gate you see behind me leads to the Zoldic Estate, home of the infamous family of assassins. It is said that once you go through the gate, you'll never make it out alive, which is why it's also known as the Door to Hades. Uh, excuse me, Coco. Yes? Who are those people there? Whoa. You got it! Push just a little more. <laughs> Way to go! All right! You did it, Goad! Good work! Incredible. You've all made it through, and it only took you 20 days. And Leorio did a lot better than me. He was strong enough to open the second gate. Well, that doesn't really come as any surprise, does it? Uh, Coco, who are they? Uh, they are, uh, the first three people to ever escape from Hades, I guess. Zebro, Sequant, thank you so much for all your help. Don't mention it. Just look out for each other, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, follow the path that leads up the mountain. I believe it will eventually take you to the Zoldic house. You don't know? Well, no, to be perfectly honest. I've never been invited up to the house. I wish I could give you more specific directions. You've done quite enough. Well, it's time for us to go. Of course. Good luck, boys. They're really something. Now do you understand why I was hoping for the best? Yeah, I sure do. But the testing gate was nothing compared to what's next. We smashed that gate wide open. We are prepared for anything. But then, all 100 men fell in under five minutes, slaughtered by a single servant's apprentice. 
and she was only a 10-year-old girl at the time. Yes, I remember how horrified you were. You gave up being a blacklist hunter and have been with us ever since? I had no choice. What was I supposed to do? After what I'd seen, I knew I was in over my head. They're all monsters living up there. The employers and the employees. But who knows? Maybe they've got a chance. <laughs> you know, I never get my hopes up. But maybe now's the time to start. By the way, I heard you pointed your rifle at Mike while you were trying to save Gon. Is that true? That doesn't sound like the sequent I know. <laughs> There's hope for you yet. Who are you? You're new here, aren't you? Yes, Master Kilua. My name is Canary. Here, I want you to have this. I'm sorry, but I can't accept this. Sure you can. No, I can't. I'm sorry. As much as I appreciate your kindness, I can't take it. I'm sorry. After all, I'm just a servant. I'm just a servant. That's all. I'm gone. We're on our way to visit Kilua. These are my friends. This is Leorio. Hey. And Kurapika. We're trying to find our way to the Zoldek house. Go back. Uh? You're on private property. You do not have permission to be here. Hey, didn't you hear him ask you what your name is? The least you can do is tell us that first. I'm not telling you my name, and honestly, I have no desire to know yours either. What? Listen, Hang you! Hang on, try not to get upset, okay? Didn't you hear her? Let me tell you one more time. Leave immediately. You're on private property. This is a Zoldic estate. No one enters without permission. But I called ahead on the telephone, and all three of us got through the testing gate, and Zabro and Sequant even told us to take this path up the mountain to the house. But the butlers didn't give you permission, did they? Well then, how can we get permission to be here? I'm Kilua's friend, but nobody's letting me talk to him! Who knows? Ugh. To be honest, there's never been a precedent. So the only way in is to trespass? Yes, it would appear so. Listen. I'm afraid this is as close as you're going to get. If you put one foot across this line, I will remove you by force. <laughs> hmm. Go and wait! Let me handle this. did you expect? I told you what would happen, but it seems your friend wasn't listening. Uh, so that's how you justify attacking him, is that it? I did make myself very clear. If that's the way you want it! Wait, come back here! You can play at that game! Since this is your first time here, I'll let you off with a warning. But next time, you won't be so lucky. <coughs> Don't cross this line. Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> 
Oh, my face. What was with that girl? Well, you did charge right up to her. <laughs> you should know by now I'm not half as level-headed as you are. Gone. it looked to me like she was holding back her true strength. What do you think? Yeah, you got that right. I don't think we've even seen the half of it. Seriously? You think she took it easy on us? If she really wanted to get rid of us, she could have simply killed all of us with that cane she had with her. But instead, she decided to let us go with another warning. Why would she do that? Sequant told me something earlier today. He said a few years ago, a blacklist hunter led a hundred men in an attack against the Zoldics, but all of them were killed before they even got to the house. I'm starting to think she might be the one who killed them. <clears throat> Hey, you knew all that and you still crossed the line? Oh man, seriously, I'm gonna need another 12 lives to live if I keep hanging around with you. Anyway, I think it's worth another shot, so I'm gonna try again. Now hold on, let's not get too crazy. There's gotta be a way that's less dangerous than going up against that girl. Like, why don't we go over to that fence there and just jump over it? I'd advise against that. Hmm. It may be tempting to jump over that fence because it looks easy, but if our experience has taught us anything, it's that looks can be deceiving. Remember the testing gate in Mike? It seems to me that unless we follow procedure, the consequences will be severe. So I think it would be wiser to plan a strategy than to face the unknown. Guess I'm not as smart as you. I bet that's why Zabro told us to take this path in the first place. Okay, forget it. So, let's hear your strategy then. Hmm. You don't have one? Well, for now, why don't we go back there and try talking to her again? Maybe we'll think of something. <sighs> All right, let's go. I appreciate your kindness, Master, but I can't accept this. I'm very sorry. Hmm. What's the matter, Gon? See that? Hmm? Kilua's skateboard. I wonder what that's doing here. Yeah, it's hard to imagine Kilua would just leave it there like that. Back for more? I guess I didn't hit you hard enough. Please, listen. We don't want to fight you. The only thing we want to do is see Kilua. That's why we came back. We're his friends, and you may not believe that, but it happens to be true. The three of us met him during the Hunter exam. That is irrelevant. Ugh. Your reasons for being here mean absolutely nothing to me. I have my orders. It's that simple. <sighs> oh, give me a break. It seems to me like you're just another version of Mike. Exactly. Huh? That figures. Huh? Huh? She already warned us before. We won't get a second chance. I hear you. That's Kilua's skateboard, isn't it? Yes, that's right. I wonder what it's doing over there. Master Kilua gave it to me as a present. He gave it to you? But why? He didn't tell me why. He just gave it to me. I'm sorry, but that's a little hard for us to believe, because during the Hunter exam, he hardly ever went anywhere without that thing. I can imagine that's true. He's rarely been seen without it since he got it as a child. Huh. That's my point. We all know how much Kilua loved that skateboard. And I, for one, don't think he'd just give it to someone without some kind of explanation. Anyway, we didn't come here looking for a fight, so why don't you just let us pass? One more thing. If you're lying to us and we find out Kilua was actually forced to leave his skateboard here for some other reason, and we find out that you had anything to do with it, then you had better watch out. Oh, really? Yeah, consider it a warning. And we're not gonna give you any second chances either. Um, excuse me, did he really give you his skateboard without saying why? That's correct. Are you sure? If you don't want to believe me, I can't make you, but that is how it happened. All right, then I'll try to prove that's true. You want to prove it? Mm-hmm. And how do you propose to do that? Just like this. You help.
held back during your attack. I thought you weren't gonna do that again. Yes, that was my mistake. You all seem to have such good reflexes. But I hope you got the point. You don't belong here, so you better turn around. Go back where you came from. <laughs> I think you're right. She's definitely going easy on us. But you still get a sense of her true power. I don't understand why she'd do that when she could just as easily eliminate us. There's gotta be a reason. If we knew that, we'd know how to fight her. Exactly. But how the heck are we supposed to figure that out? Look at her face. It gives nothing away. Looks don't account for much. To be honest, judging by physical appearance alone, I would have never guessed that you would have wanted to become a hunter. Hmm? Leorio, Kurapika, stay where you are. Leave this to me. But go! Are you all right? I'm fine. What's with her? She'll attack a defenseless person without even batting an eyelash. It's just not right. Even though I'm no match for her, I'll fight her with everything I've got. Dirt in my mouth. It's getting hard to tell my blood from my spit. Enough. You have to stop. Please, don't. You have to stop doing this. It's useless. Why can't you see that? I can't let you cross this line. It's impossible. 
Why don't you stop him? You guys are his friends. Who are you? Huh? You didn't tell me before. I just want to know who you are. Me? I'm a... I'm a servant's apprentice of the Zoltik family. No, I meant your name. Tell me your name. I'm an apprentice, trading to become a servant. I haven't been given permission to tell you. But they didn't actually say you couldn't tell someone your name, did they? So let's try it one more time. Who are you? I'm Canary. Okay. It's nice to meet you, Canary. I answered your question. Will you please leave now? I have another question. You do? We've come all this way to see our friend, Kilua. Could you let us through? Master Kilua is the chosen heir of the Zoldic family. They'll do everything in their power to protect him. You can't just walk up to the house and visit him like he's an ordinary person. And besides, people like you aren't qualified to be his friend. To be friends with someone, you don't need qualifications. I told Kilua's brother the same thing. You don't qualify to be a friend. You just are. No, that isn't true! I don't know how things work where you come from, but around here you just can't say things like that. Everyone who works here is responsible for a designated area of the estate. And my duty is to make sure no one crosses this line. You can't just walk into someone else's world and expect them to change the way they do things. That's never gonna happen here. Hey, Canary? Step back, Gon! You know that story you told us about Kilua giving you his skateboard? I'm starting to think it's true. And if it is, then... You're Kilua's friend too, aren't you? And because you are, I think you believed us right from the beginning. That's why you took it easy on us. You're wrong. Master Kilua would never be friends with me. But he'd never give me that skateboard as a gift. The truth is... Huh? He just dropped it there. I was only imagining that it was given to me. I'm just an apprentice, not even a servant. I shouldn't even be thinking about things like this. I'll never be one of Master Kilua's friends. Why? Just because of your status? Yes. I'm just... just like Mike. I only exist to carry out my master's orders. That's how it is. Who are you? Huh? My name is Gon Freaks. Kilua is a friend of mine, and I'll do whatever it takes to see him. What about you? I'm an apprentice, training to be a servant to the Zoldic family. I thought your name was Canary. It doesn't matter if you're an apprentice. Your name is Canary. You've drawn a line in the ground and won't let anyone cross it because that's what you've been told to do. But why don't you ever cross the line? Why do you stay on that side and do everything they say? Because those are the rules. Because of the rules? That's right. Then what about Kilua? Huh? If you only follow rules, then did Kilua actually say you couldn't be his friend because you're only an apprentice? Uh. You're new here, aren't you? Yes, Master Kilua. My name is Canary. Nice to meet you, Canary. Here, let me give you this. Oh, no. I can't accept that. Thanks, all the same. Come on, it's okay. Take it. Just the fact that you offered it to me is enough. Master Kilua. Enough with the master stuff. Just call me Kilua. Oh no. I couldn't do that. I'm just an apprentice. And you are my master. Who cares about that? From now on, me and you can be friends. I'm sorry, Master Kilua. But I'm only here to serve you. <sighs> Fine. I'm very sorry, Master Kilua. I 
first met Master Kilua, he spoke to me like an equal. But... But then I... I said something that hurt him. Now what should I do? You see? That wasn't so hard. <laughs> that proves you're different than Mike. No matter how hard you try to deny your feelings, they're still there. I know they are, because every time you say Kilua's name, I can see it in your eyes. And you just can't hide that. Please help him. Please help. Master Kilua. You must help him. Oh! Huh? Huh? How shameful! Huh? We can't have the servants speaking like that. The silly girl made it sound as though we were torturing Kilua. But what does she know? She's only an apprentice. How is she, Leorio? It's okay. She's just unconscious. Hmm. Why did you do that? Ah, you must be Gold. Hmm? Illumis told me all about you. Keel is also aware that you have ventured onto the premises. He asked me to pass along a message. Would you like to hear it? Oh. Uh... I was happy to hear that you came to visit. Thanks for thinking of me. But right now, I'm unable to see you. Sorry. Yeah, sure. No problem. Keel? You know, Mom's really mad at you. <laughs> she told me to do whatever's necessary to keep you from leaving here. Do you hear what I said to you? Damn you! You're not so tough now. Or maybe it's just that you're in too much pain to even speak, is that it? <laughs> Come on, say something! Huh? Uh, wake up! Uh? Oh, hey, good morning. How you doing? Do you know what time it is? Hmm. Let's see you sleep through this. Hey, that's hot. Come on, you know I'm really sorry. I was way out of line. I can see that now. Don't give me that! Not convincing enough? Damn you! I almost forgot. I have some good news to share with you. Apparently those three guys who claim to be friends of yours have made it almost all the way to the butler's quarters. Does that make you happy? Not really. I don't think they have any idea what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> or maybe they're just that stupid. <laughs> what do you think I should do? Should I give mom a call? All I'd have to do is ask her to give the order to the butlers, and then that's the last we'd hear of those three. Listen to me, Miluki. 
Lay so much as a finger on them, and I'll kill you. <laughs> Excuse me, boys. I think that's enough, Mill. Come on, Grandpa Zeno! He's just pretending to be sorry! Don't you think I know that? Kill, you're free to go now. Thanks. Well, I'm glad that's over. Listen, Mill, even though I do the same thing next time, I am sorry. That's why I let you get away with hitting me. Kill, your father Silva wants to see you. He does? All right. So, Gon's getting closer. My goodness! I almost forgot to introduce myself. I'm Kilua's mother. And this young lad, this is Kaluto. Wait a second, that's his... That's his mother? As you know, Kilua is indisposed and won't be entertaining any guests today. It's an unfortunate situation, but it can't be helped. You'd best be on your way. Mm. Mm. I was wondering if you could tell us what's so important that he can't see us. It's because he's in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Kilua misbehaved. He attacked his brother and I, then ran away from home. But he regretted his actions, and when he finally decided to come back home, he let himself be locked up without any protest. And as for when he'll be released, well, that's entirely up to him. What? Kilua's gone? Oh! You always have to stick your nose in where it doesn't belong! He should be chained up! How could you let this happen? Oh, this is... oh. If you please excuse me, I have another matter to attend to. Safe journey. Please come again. Excuse me, wait! Please, ma'am, if it's not too much trouble, would you let Kilua know that we'll be in the area for ten more days? I'll be sure to tell him. Thank you for coming. Good day. For. Let's go! Yes, Mother. I don't know about you guys, but those two give me the creeps. I don't believe for one second that Kilua would come back here voluntarily. Gon, we can't turn back now. What do you say we follow him? Yeah. <clears throat> but if we do that... I have a feeling that Canary is going to be blamed for not stopping us. <sighs> You're probably right. <sighs> Don't worry. Huh? huh? It's okay. I'll take you to the butler's quarters. And maybe there you can get a direct telephone line to the Zoldick mansion. Then I can talk to Kilua? He won't answer. But if Master Zeno does, then maybe. Damn it! It's exactly this kind of thing that's made Kilua into a spoiled brat! He thinks he can do whatever he wants! Hmm. Well, he happens to be very special. Tell me, how much potential do you think your brother has, Mill? Of course, I have to admit he's amazing. He's probably the most naturally gifted child in Zoldic family history. Mommy even said as much. And well, I think so too. But, as an assassin, he's a failure. He's too unpredictable. And let's not forget the fact that he actually made friends with some people! No one like that could ever become the head of this family. In conclusion, he's a wimp! Hmm. You may have a point there. Hey! If we're gonna talk about potential, let's talk about me! I can get any job done! Oh yeah! Where do you see my latest invention? It's a super tiny bomb! So tiny I can attach it to a mosquito and whoever it bites next... Kaboom! It blows up! Hmm. Pretty cool, huh? The explosion's only as big as a firecracker, and it's pretty much impossible to get a mosquito to target who you want. Mill, still, you're a sharp kid. And an one. idiot. Oh, kaboom! Look out, we're out!
Is that you, Kilowa? <gasps> Come on in. Kilua. Huh? How long are you planning to stand there? Come and sit down. Yeah, okay. So I hear you've made some friends. Yeah. What are these friends like? I don't know. They're fun to be around. I see. How was the exam? Mm -hmm. It was easy, I guess. When you left, you said you wanted to live your own life, that the future was yours to decide. Isn't that right? And is that why you took the hunter exam? Well, I never actually wanted to become a hunter. That's not what's bothering me. Your brother Illumi tells me that you don't want to kill people anymore. That you've had enough. Why is that? Of all my sons, I chose you to be my heir. And even after all that's happened, I still think I've made the right decision. Kilua, are you really saying you're not interested in being an assassin anymore? Well, I thought it was something I wanted to do. What do you mean? The training, the assignments, seemed like a lot of fun. I guess that's why I took the hunter exam. I thought it would be like a game. But... When I started spending more time with Gone, I realized I was having more fun than I'd ever have doing an assignment. So then, this Gone has become a friend of yours? <gasps> Don't worry, Kiel. I wouldn't do anything to hurt your friends. You know, when I told Gone I was from a family of assassins, it didn't seem to bother him one little bit. I've seen him do some of the most crazy things. He really is something. I never get bored around him. It's the first time I've met someone like him. It's been a long time since I've seen you smile like this. Come over here and sit with me. Huh? Tell me all about your journey. Tell me about the exam and where you went and who you met, what you learned. Tell me everything. Kill. Oh. Okay. Ah! What have you done to your brother? Ah! Wait, Kill, Kill, listen to me. I'm your brother. Kaluto. Ah! What are you doing? We have to hurry. Yes, Mother. What does Grandpa Zeno think he's doing anyway? He was supposed to consult with me first before making any decisions. What Kiel needs right now is the proper discipline. He can't go off thinking that he can make friends and act like a regular kid. Oh, Kiel! Don't you know how I feel? And now he's gone off to lark about with Dad! Oh, I won't forgive this! Kilua's mom is acting kind of weird. I sure hope everything's all right. Hmm. Whatever it was, it upset her enough to make her want to leave in a hurry. Maybe she had to go to the bathroom. Huh? Master Kilua? Please don't bother. I don't know what Goto told you, but you can't stop me. I'm leaving no matter what. Yes, I know. 
You mean, you're not here to stop me? I am. At, at least I'm supposed to. But I take my orders from you, first and foremost, Master Kilua. Tell me, what's your name? Of course, my name is Canary. Hmm, Canary, huh? Take care of yourself, Canary. Thank you, Master Kilua. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> and then you know what Gon said to Hanzo? He said, I don't want to have my legs chopped off, but I don't really want to give up either. Talk about stubborn. <laughs> he sort of sounds like a funny kid, this Gon friend of yours. Oh, yeah, he sure is. <laughs> Keel, do you want to see them? There's nothing for you to be afraid of. Just be honest with me. I'd like to, but I don't deserve to be their friend anymore. Why? We got along great, and then I just turned my back on them. Are you really going to let that stop you? Why do you suppose they've risked their lives to enter the Zoldic estate? I'd say they're still your friends. Uh. Instead of regretting what you've done in the past, why don't you be honest with yourself and face the future? Uh. Come to think of it, this is the first time you and I have ever spoken to each other as father and son. From the day I was born, my parents raised me to be an assassin, and I never knew any different, so that's how I've raised you. But you're not like me. It wasn't until you left home that I was able to see that. You may be my son, however, you have your own life to live. Follow your own path, and if that doesn't work out, you can always come back, all right? I'll ask you again. Do you want to see them? Mm-hmm. I understand. You're free to do as you please. But you must swear to do one thing. Swear that you'll never betray them, okay? I swear I won't betray them. I never will. friends just left. You should go back to your cell. Keel? No way. <gasps> I'm leaving. But you can't! Do you have any idea how we feel about you? I'm not just talking about me either. Your brothers, your father, grandfather, we all worry about you. Forget it. How dare you talk back to me! I'm your mother! <sighs> Step aside. <sighs> Keel, I am so proud of you. What a splendid icy glare you have. What were you thinking? I'm talking to you too, Grandpa. And after Illumi went to all that trouble to get him to come home. Just let him be for once. You can't be serious. Aren't you the least bit worried? <laughs> you know as well as I do that this is the time in his life when he needs our guidance. This is no way for the heir of the Zoldic family to behave. <laughs> Aren't you even listening to me? Just what is so amusing? I know what I'm doing. And if you quit babbling, I'll explain. Oh. Oh. There's nothing to worry about. You saw the look in his eyes just now. That boy of ours is developing in ways we've never even dreamt of. <laughs> One day he'll return. No matter where he goes, he'll never belong anywhere else but here. Because he is my son. There it is. 
You mean that's the butler's quarters? You'd think something that big would be the Zoldic Mansion. No, it's the butler's only. This is where all of them live. I guess that means Kilu is not in there. Right. He's in the main house, farther up. <sighs> this is definitely a different world from the one we live in. Looks like they were expecting us. Yeah, but I have a feeling we're not going to get a warm reception. Canary? Yes? You're dismissed. Yes. We're not gonna have to fight them, are we? I'm not exactly sure. There are five of them, and I'm guessing each of them outranks Zebro and Canary. In any case, we need to be very careful. Hmm? Hmm? We apologize for our previous discourtesy. Since then, the lady of the house has instructed us to receive the three of you as official guests and to extend to you every possible courtesy. He was the guy on the phone? Please, come inside and let us attend to your injuries. Sure. But first, could you tell me where Kilua is? I want to see him as soon as possible. I suppose that you're gone, am I correct? Hmm? The lady of the house has told me everything. So then, gentlemen, please come in. Yes, madam, they have just arrived. Yes. Yes. I understand. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening, madam. Come on. Butlers really live here? Indeed we do. Please make yourself at home. Yeah, we'd love to. But we didn't come all this way to kick back and relax, you know. The head butler Goto is making an inquiry on your behalf as we speak. It'll only be a few moments. Well then, I trust you're feeling somewhat better now, Gone. Yeah, much better. Thanks. Glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Goto, and I am the head butler here. If you need anything during your stay, please do not hesitate to ask. We appreciate your hospitality, but we're only here for one reason, and that's to see Kilua. The only thing we'd like you to do for us is to show us how to get to the mansion. I'm afraid that won't be necessary. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because at the moment, Master Kilua is on his way here. Is he really? You sure? Yes, he'll be here shortly. All right! Finally, we get to see Kilua! Yeah, I wonder what he's gonna do when he sees us. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> In the meantime, huh? you're our guests, and I wouldn't want you to get bored while you wait for him. So I have an idea. Why don't we play a little game? A little game? Sure, why not? Don't worry, it's very simple. You'll see. This game is a long-standing tradition amongst the butlers who live in these quarters. Please, consider it our way of welcoming you here. Yeah, okay. Good, let's begin. <gasps> huh? 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 <gasps> so, is everyone ready? Uh... Now then, which hand do you think the coin's in? Hmm. 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 It's, it's in, in your, your left hand. hand. You are correct. Let's try that again. Only faster this time. Uh. Mm. Which hand is it in now? Oh man, that was pretty fast. But I could still see it. Yeah. It's, it's in, in your, your left, left hand, hand again. again. What? Huh? Uh. 
Well, you're right again. Very impressive. <laughs> you are going to have to do better than that. All right. If you think you're up for it, I'll get serious. Serious? So what were you just doing? The first two rounds were just a little warm-up. So watch closely, and I think you'll see what I mean. Hmm. Well, which hand? Um, I think I know, but I'm not sure. Think very carefully before answering. This time the stakes are higher. What do you mean by that? This time, if you guess wrong, then you are out. Mm -hmm. Let me clarify. I've known Master Kilua since the day he was born. It's not really my place to say this, but I care about him as I would my own son. To be completely honest, the thought of you taking Master Kilua away from here infuriates me. So, which hand is it in? My right or my left? Choose now. Hmm. Um, right. Your left. Mm -hmm. When I spoke to the lady on the phone, I could hear the pain in her voice. She has decided to let her son go, even though it breaks her heart. That's unforgivable. Before Master Kilua arrives, there's something I need to decide, and we will make our own judgments in our own way. You have no choice in the matter. Oh, come on! <laughs> Don't move! If you do, I'll give him the order to chop off her head. Although it wouldn't be much of a loss. She can't even do what little we ask of her. She doesn't deserve to live. <clears throat> Gone. <clears throat> Listen to me. From now on, anyone who makes a mistake and guesses wrong is out. And if it just so happens that all three of you are out before Master Kilua arrives, I'll simply tell him that you've gone on ahead to a place from which you'll never return. Shall we begin? Where's Kilua? Silence! <sighs> At this moment, you're living on borrowed time. Now then, the only words out of your mouth should be left or right. We understand. Go ahead and flip the coin. Hmm. That's fast! His hands are moving way faster than before. Much too fast for anyone with ordinary sight. It's no use. I, I can't see anything. So tell me, which hand? Uh. I'm not sure. There is no time to waste. You only have to the count of three. One. Uh. Two. Three. Very well, chop off her head. Yes, sir. Hang on, it's in the left. And I say right. Yeah, me too. Huh. <sighs> that means you are now out. <sighs> well, that's it. It's up to you guys now. Once more. I can't see, he's too fast. So which is it? I think it's in your right hand. So? I'll choose your left hand. <laughs> it was pretty clever of you each to choose a different hand. Even if you are just guessing, one of you will get to stay. 
It was in my left hand. So, it looks like another one is out. And one remains. Gone. This is it, kid. You're our only hope. Here we go. Hey, just wait a minute! What now? If you're just trying to stall for time, I'll have her killed. No, that's not it. I was just wondering if I could borrow that knife for a second. Would you mind? You don't need to worry. <clears throat> I promise not to do anything stupid. Very well. Hmm? He lanced his eyelid to reduce the swelling. Why did you abandon your post? Well, Gon happens to be friends with Master Kilua, and he went through a lot to get this far. That's not what I asked you. What I want to know is why you led them here to us. They never would have made it through all the traps without you. Well, it's because they really are friends. What? You see, once I got to know Gon a little bit, I could tell he was a true friend of Master Kilua, and that's why I decided to bring them here. All right. I'm ready. I can see better now. Let's go. Hmm. Okay. Which hand? Your left. <sighs> I sure hope he's right. If he's wrong, we're all out. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Very good. But it's not over yet. Huh? Huh? Now then. Who has the coin? Do you know? standing behind me has it oh really are you sure hmm outstanding <laughs> 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 uh -huh. that was very well played yes truly amazing <laughs> well done kid hey goto <gasps> kilua I do hope this little game of mine didn't upset you, and if it did, I'm very sorry. But you have to admit, it did help us pass the time, didn't it? You implied that our lives were at risk to make the game more fun? Yes. Oh, you're right, the time just flew by. And I have to say, you gave an impressive performance. <sighs> I got tired just watching you. I sincerely apologize. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're too kind. <gasps> Kilua! Mm. Gone! <laughs> <laughs> wow, I still can't believe you're here. Yeah. What happened? Your face is a mess. <laughs> yeah, so is yours. You guys don't look so good either, especially you, Rayolio. <gasps> what was that? Let it go. Anyway, I think we should try to leave here as soon as we can. I don't even care where we go. How come? Because there's still a chance my parents might change their minds. Goto, do me a favor. Of course. No matter what my mom told you, I don't want you following me. As you wish, Master. Please be careful. Prepare for the departure of Master Kilua and his friends. Yes, yes sir. Come on, let's go already. Uh, hang on, just a minute. Canary? Huh? You don't need to worry about Kilua, okay? Huh? Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, whatever. Now, let's get out of here. Thank you. And Canary? Yes? Back to your post. Yes. Excuse me, Master Kilua. What do you want? I already told you I'm leaving. Don't try and stop me. Canary has something to say. Master Kilua, I brought this for you. 
Oh, thanks. But why don't you hang on to it for me, Canary? See ya. As you wish, Master. Hey, Mr. Goto! Did you forget something? I wanted to ask you, are you going to miss Kilua when he's gone? Oh, no. You see, I believe it is a butler's duty to serve his employer without any personal or emotional attachment whatsoever. Hm. You're lying. Mm. Hey, go. Huh? One more time. Which hand? It's in your left, isn't it? What? Yes, it was all a trick. Sometimes this world can be a very unfair place. Please, be careful. And look after Master Kilua for me. I know. He got me with that one, too. When he told me how he did it, I couldn't believe how simple it was. It probably works something like this. Which hand? Ah, uh, that's easy. It's in your left hand. What? No way! I don't get it. You see, Goto was actually using two coins the whole time. He cleverly concealed one coin in his hand while he flipped with the second coin. He lets you see which hand he catches it with. Here's where the trick comes in. When he asks you to guess which hand the coin is in, he raises his arm so that you can only see the backs of his hands. And the coin slips into his sleeve. <laughs> Using this technique, he can control the outcome of the game. That's how he does it, all right. Oh, that is so annoying! Well, to be fair, he probably only used that trick for the last round. Even though it's just a game, Goto doesn't like to cheat. I'm glad to hear that. Kilua? Goto's a nice guy, isn't he? What makes you say that? I don't know. I just feel it. I don't know what kind of person he is. All I know is that he's honest. That's what I thought. I wouldn't want to get him mad, though. No kidding. That look he gets in his eyes is enough to give you nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> now everything's fine. Huh? Well, we're together, aren't we? Oh, that. Yeah, right. For a while, I thought we'd never meet again. I know. I definitely didn't expect to see you on our property. That's for sure. But here we are. Just like before. Yeah. My dad even let me go this time. And after that warning I gave Goto, we have nothing to worry about. We can go wherever we want. Yeah. What are your plans, Gon? Are you going to look for your father, or are you going home first? Mm -mm. First I'm gonna go find Hisoka, punch him in the face, then give him back his ID badge. I can't even think about finding my dad or visiting Aunt Mito until I've dealt with that. Oh? Do you know where to find Hisoka? Uh, not really. Oh, man. Well, that figures. I think I might know where you can find him. Yeah? How do you know that? Well, because Hisoka told me himself. You mean during your match? No. It was after that. It was? Yeah. I wanted to know, so I asked him after the orientation was over. On September 1st, I'll be in York, New City. Maybe I'll see you there. He'll be in York, New City? So, all I need to do is show up? Yeah, you can count on him being there. But September 1st, that's still six months away. What's so special about September 1st? Huh. Hey, wait, there's an auction. Biggest in the world. That's right. It's being held from the 1st to the 10th. They're auctioning off a vast collection of the most rare and valuable artifacts from every country in the world. And because it's the largest concentration of wealth and power in any one place, it attracts not only seasoned collectors, but forgers, counterfeiters, and all sorts of greedy lowlifes. Think the Phantom Troop will be there? It's entirely possible. But I think it's safe to say I'll be able to find some of their associates there. Does that mean you're going? Yeah, I'm afraid this is where we part ways. I'm glad you found Kilua. I have to go make some money if I want to participate in the auction. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I think I'm gonna see if I can get a job as a hunter. Maybe someone will hire me. Sounds good. Hey, Kurapika! Why don't we meet up in York New City? I'll be there! Hmm. As soon as I run into Hisoka, I'll make sure to let you know where you can find it. 
great, thanks. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back home for a while. Huh? You're leaving too? Well, you know, Gon, I still haven't achieved my dream of becoming a doctor. And now with this, I won't have to pay the outrageous tuition fees. I just have to worry about passing the tests. So I guess I'm really going to have to hit those books. <laughs> okay. I'm sure going to miss you though, Leorio. Good luck! I know you can do it! I'll do my best. You know, we've been through a lot together over the last few months, and I have to say, I'm better for it. We'll meet up again, and I think I know when. September 1st, in York, New City. Yeah, something to look forward to. Well, I guess that leaves just the two of us. So, what do you want to do? Isn't it obvious? We've got to start training. Huh? What for? I thought we'd do something fun. What's with Ooh. you? You said you wanted to punch Hisoka in the face, but there's no way you could do that right now. Hmm. You'd need at least ten years of training to beat him, and we've only got six months. Here, maybe this will help you understand. This is Hisoka, and this is Hanzo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If the distance between them represents the difference in their fighting ability, then I would put you... Right around here, and that's being generous. It isn't that bad. Oh yeah? If I'm there, where are you? Let me see. Hmm. Well, I guess I'd probably be right around here somewhere. It should actually be even closer, but I don't want to look like I'm bragging. Oh! So Hanzo's stronger than you are. Hmm. Uh, so what? You're pretty amazing, you know that? What are you trying to say? Are you making fun of me? No, I'm serious. I have no idea how to measure people's abilities, and you do. It's no big deal. I was just trying to give you a general idea, that's all. Oh, so you were just guessing then? Of course I was, but you can still see what I'm getting at. When you've been up against as many opponents as I have, you'll get better at it too. But it's not always so simple. People with the most skill are often the best at hiding it. It's something to keep in mind when you're getting ready for a fight. Well, anyway, we already know that Hisoka's really tough. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see how you can take him on with only six months of training. Mm-hmm. Gone. have you got any money? Uh, I'm actually running a little low. I don't really have that much either. But maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Huh? Over there, see that? That airship will take us to a place where you can get a lot of training, and you can make money while you're at it. So, you want to go? I wonder how all those recently graduated hunters are doing right now. It's hard to say for sure. Some of them will be working. Some will be making their mark in history. And others will be failing miserably. <laughs> What happens each year is always different. But if there's one thing I know for certain, it's that sooner or later they will all face the same challenge. It could be in the next few months, or several years from now. It just depends. But it's inevitable. They cannot avoid it no matter what they do. And I don't suppose they're expecting it either. But it seems to me that this year, some of the applicants might have already known that. Hmm, you're right. We had an exceptional group, didn't we? We'll just have to wait and see who can face the challenges ahead and become a real hunter. I know it's the same every year, but couldn't you give them some kind of warning? Now, why would I do that? What kind of teacher lets the students have the answers before they even take the test? <laughs> you have a point. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, then. Are you leaving now, sir? No, more tea. We're here, Gone. That is Heaven's Arena. Whoa. It's 3,250 feet tall and has 251 floors. For every fight you win, you move higher and higher. You start at the bottom and try and work your way up to the penthouse. 
And the way it works here is, the higher you go, the bigger the prize money gets. So that's how it all works. While we're here, we can make money and improve our skills. <laughs> we can still make a lot of money, even if we don't get all the way to the top. Which is good, because we kind of spent the last of our cash on the tickets to get here. We'll have to start from nothing. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Everyone looks so tough. You really think so? You don't? Not really. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Heaven's Arena. Please fill out this registration form and bring it back to me. Oh, Sue! Huh? Who was that? Thanks! Hey, look at the little kid. Huh? The rules are very simple. You can use any fighting style you like. You just have to defeat your opponent. We know the rules, thank you. We're all set, Zushi. Yes, Master! Who is that guy anyway? Where it says fighting experience, put down 10 years. That'll get us to the higher floors faster. You can use any fighting style you like. All you have to do is defeat your opponent. Hang on. You mean you've been here before? Yeah, when I was six years old. My dad left me here without any money. He said I couldn't come home until I reached the 200th floor. Back then it took me two whole years. Huh? Two years? Hey, don't look so surprised. If you want to fight against someone like Hisoka here, you'll have to go even higher than that. Oh, okay. Contestants 1,973 and 2,055, please report to Ring E for your oh, match. That's me. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. Go. Back at my place. You got through the testing gate, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be just fine. All you gotta do is... What? Are you sure? Contestants, please step forward. Hey, who let the kid in here? He should start running now while he still has a chance. Go back to the playground. <laughs> yeah, what do you think you're doing? You're kidding me, right? Well, I'm not trying to. I don't think. It'll be your own fault if you get killed. <laughs> the big guy really lucked out. It shouldn't take any more than one good punch. The purpose of the first floor match is so we can evaluate each of your skill levels. You have a three-minute time limit to demonstrate just how strong you really are. I won't need three minutes. Maybe three seconds. <laughs> Contestants ready? Begin! One. Two. All I've got to do is push! Three! <laughs> Right! Whoa. I guess I've gotten quite a bit stronger. Where the hell did that kid come from? I don't know, but he can't be human. <clears throat> Number 2055. Uh, yeah? You advance to the 50th floor. Very best of luck, young man. <sighs> Thanks! Going to the 50th floor! Not bad! <sighs> Contestants 2054 and 2039 report to ring A. Yes! Well, good luck. This will be so easy. Hmm. Hey, you guys! Cheer for my friend Kilua too, all right? Oh, uh, sure. I'll cheer for anyone who's a friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome, Kilua. He sure is. Oh, I see you've been to the 200th floor once before. Your skills have obviously improved since then. I'm sending you to the 180th floor. That high after just one fight? Cool, but I'll be fine on the 50th floor. I want to take it easy. Look, there's another incredible kid! Oh, so what? It's that kid from before. Excellent form. You advance to the 50th floor. Oh, so
This building is separated into 22 floor divisions up to the 200th floor. You see, Hi if a contestant there, on the 50th Sush. floor wins, he advances to the 60th hey, floor division. However, yeah, if he loses, he has awesome. to move down to it's the nice 40th to floor. Too. Also, once you've worked your way up to the 100th floor, you're entitled to a private room. So, do all of you understand? Yes, ma'am. Also! Hmm. I bet those brats didn't hear a single word I said. Here we are, the 50th floor. I wish you all the very best of luck. I watched both of your matches earlier. You two guys are amazing. Yeah, look who's talking. You're strong too. That's right. We're all at the same level. Well, I don't know. I've still got a long way to go. By the way, which school of martial arts do you follow? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I practice Shin Gen Ryu Kung Fu. What do we do? Nothing really. Seriously? You mean you got this good without anyone teaching you? I have more to learn than I thought. Even with a teacher, I'm not that good. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Good match, Zushi. Master Wing! You obviously remembered what I taught you. Awesome. Thank you, Master. Huh? Master, your shirt. Oh, how embarrassing. We haven't met. Uh, this is Kilua, and that's Gong. It's a pleasure. My name is Wing. Awesome. Oh, that's great. I'm certainly glad to see that there are other kids competing here besides Zushi. You must be quite accomplished if you've managed to get this far. You should always remember to take care of yourself and respect your opponents. Awesome! Zushi, here's the prize money from your match. Oh, wow! Thank you very much, Master. In case you're wondering, the exchange counter over there is where you cash in your tickets. Awesome! Let's go, Kilua. Okay. <laughs> Wonder how much we're gonna get. You know, Zushi, you can go with them if you want. I'll be in the audience for your next match as usual. Also. Hey Gong, Kilua, I'm coming, wait up. Uh let's see. 152 Jenny. That's enough to buy a can of soda. <laughs> the prize money hasn't changed either. What? Seriously? Well, that's what you get on the first floor whether you win or lose. After that, it's all or nothing. But on the 50th floor, you'll get around 50,000, Jenny. 50,000? That's a lot of money, isn't it? After the 100th, it's a million, Jenny. And beyond the 150th, it's over 10 million. <gasps> But didn't you say you reached the 200th floor last time? Oh, you got that far? Uh-huh. Well, to be honest, I actually quit at the 190th floor. I guess I won 200 million. <laughs> you did? What did you do with all that money? What do you expect? That was almost four years ago now. I guess I spent most of it on snacks and stuff. He spent 200 million on snacks in four years. <laughs> what kind of snacks were they anyway? Hey, you little kids. What you doing talking like you're a bunch of big shots? Yeah, 200 million. You think that makes you tough? Hmm? Ah! Ah! It's the Yammery Brothers! Hey, the name's Amory, not Yammery! <sighs> Long time no see. So what you up to? So what are we gonna do now? Well, it was your idea to come over here and teach these kids a lesson. You should put your money where your mouth is! Hey, come on! Teach us a lesson? I'd like to see you try. <laughs> so who wants to start teaching first? I can hardly wait. Hey, Maria, I'll let you handle this. You teach them whatever you want. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? <laughs> wait for me, you guys. Oh, man, this place sure isn't what it used to be. Not if losers like that can get to this level. Getting off this floor shouldn't be too tough. We won't even have to try. Does he have to talk so loud? Your attention, please. Maita and Chibaba, make your way to Ring B on the 55th floor. The match between Kilua and Zushi will take huh? place in Ring A on the 57th floor. <laughs> Kilua, it's an honor to fight you. Yeah, I guess that's just the way it goes. It ought to be a good fight. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll see you later. Yeah, best of luck to both of you. I'll wait for you in the lobby on the 60th floor, okay? You don't have to say it right in Attention. front of them. Amory Brothers and Go? Huh? Please report hey, that's us! Kilua doesn't even consider me a threat. Okay, everyone, thanks for waiting. We're now ready for the next match. It will be a special match between two of our youngest contestants. I'd like to
to direct your attention to the screen. Even though our contestants are some of the youngest we've seen, don't take them lightly. They've proven themselves in earlier matches and have already advanced to the 50th floor. Kilua sure doesn't waste any time. With a single lightning fast shot, his opponent collapsed to the mat. Zushi, on the other hand, let loose with a flurry of martial arts attacks. He defeated an opponent more than 10 times his size without getting a single scratch. I'd say we're in for one heck of a match. Now that you know who's who, are you ready to choose your favorite? Here we go. Press your choice. Now! It looks as though the odds favor Zushi to win. I wonder if his formal training has something to do with that. That's just great. Now he's going to want to win even more. Three rounds, three minutes each. Winner determined by points or TKO. Begin! Not bad. He has a decent fighting stance. Not too many openings. He's obviously had good training, but he's still no match for a win. Kilua makes the first move, closing in on Zushi. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I think I'm just going to rely on this one move until I get up to the 150th floor. Boy! One for the hit and one for the knockdown. In case any of you aren't familiar with the scoring system, I'll break it down for you. One point is awarded for every direct hit. An additional point is awarded for every time a contestant knocks his opponent to the mat. In this case, the combination was worth two points for Kilua. Once he earns ten points, he'll win by TKO. Well, that's dumb. I just won by a KO, didn't I? Can you continue? Yeah, I'm okay. Hmm? Wait a sec. Sushi's back on his feet. It's not over yet. Guess I must have pulled back a little too much. Continue. Sushi's <laughs> <laughs> down. He got out of the way of most of that one. I guess he won't fall for the same attack twice. If he gets back on his feet before the referee checks, he won't lose a point. Man, he sure can take a beating. Even though that last shot just grazed him, it should have been enough to keep him down. He's incredible. Speed and power like nothing I've ever seen before. I can't take much more of this. And fight! I have no choice. I gotta use it. thousand Jenny and it seemed to take you a long time to finish you're right longer than I thought it would is Zushi that strong he is quite talented too and he'll be good someday but from what I can tell his technique is still full of holes he punches too slow but it was still pretty hard to take him down not only that <coughs> there was a moment when Zushi changed his stance I got this bad feeling, just like when my brother confronted me. I don't quite know what it is, but it sure is creepy. It's got to be some kind of technique I'm not aware of. Hmm. I overheard his master say something about Ren. Ren? I'm terribly sorry, master. I thought I was very clear. You're not ready to use Ren yet. But I had to. I was losing. Hmm. A strong desire to win is a good thing, 
But you must always keep in mind that you have a goal that is higher than this. You're trying to reach the top floor. And those who are blinded by their desire for a quick win inevitably defeat themselves. Oh, so While you are here, there is much you can learn from all of your losses. Oh, so So it's Ren, and reaching the top floor. Oh. Hey Gon, I think we need to have a change of plans. Huh? I'm going for one thing, the top floor. Mm-hmm. We'll go to a place where you can get a lot of training and make money while you're at it. Heaven's Arena. Remember, you got through the testing gate. All you gotta do is... All I've gotta do is PUSH! Whoa. I guess I've gotten quite a bit stronger. Osu, my name is Zushi! Master Wing! It's a pleasure to meet you. Osu! Congratulations, you guys! Both of you get to go to the hundredth floor. That's such an honor. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, we want to go all the way to the top. All those who reach the hundredth floor are entitled to their own private room. The prize money goes up by a lot. Yeah, we know. Private rooms, huh? Hmm. I guess that means no more pillow fights. Hey, go. Listen! If I were you, I wouldn't kid around. You'll be up against some pretty tough opponents now. As I was saying earlier, the amenities get a lot better once you've reached the hundredth floor. And that's exactly why all the people who make it there will do everything they can to stay. Some competitors will bend the rules with all kinds of nasty tricks! The longer they've been at this level, the tougher they get. You can't even compare them to those guys on the fiftieth floor. Kilua, is this true? Well, yeah. Good. That's what I was hoping for. I was starting to worry that we'd come all the way here for nothing. What is with these two kids? Could they be any more conceited? Don't they know Heaven's Arena is the proving ground for the world's best fighters? Who do they think they are anyways? It's no big deal. Last time I was here, I had no trouble winning at this level. The last time? Yeah, when I was six. When you were six? Hmm, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I look forward to serving you again soon. Whoa! So this is what a private room looks like. We're up so high. Look how far we can see. Yeah. What that woman said was true, you know. It's a big change once you go from the 90th floor to the 100th. Everything here is different. It's like we crossed a threshold. Some of these guys have been up here for a really long time and they're prepared to do anything to stay right where they are. I know I joked about it, but we need to be careful. We're on our way to the top and we're not gonna let anyone stop us. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I guess you must be pretty proud of yourself, huh, kid? But come on, aren't you a little young to be on the hundredth floor? Since I've been here, I've sent a hundred opponents to their graves. So I hope you already made funeral arrangements. The winner is gold! <laughs> I guess I was worried for nothing. Kilua, report to the ring for your next match. On my way. It took only three days for newcomers Gon and Kilua to reach the 150th floor. They're both undefeated after seven matches. What's even more remarkable is that so far none of their opponents have managed to score a single point against either of them. How long will this good luck last? <laughs> it's not about luck. We're just better than them. I can hardly believe the last time I was here, it took me almost two whole months just to get up to the 150th floor. Are you listening? Tens, hundreds, thousands, millions? What? How much is this anyway? I've never seen a number this big. I mean, a few days ago, I was pretty much broke. Gah? Let me borrow it, Kay. Hey, how come? Didn't you have the same amount deposited into your account? Yeah, but I spent it. You spent it? On what? Uh... Huh. I was wondering where all that came from. 
And what is it? They're chocolate robots. They were on sale, so I thought I'd stock up. So you do love candy, but do you have to spend all your money on it? I think you already bought enough chocolate for now, so I want more. Don't worry, I'll give it back later. Oh. Hey! I won't let you waste any more money, Kilua. Hey, don't call chocolate robots a waste of money! Take it back! Ah, ah, okay, I take it back! How do you expect to make it to the top floor in the shape you're in? <sighs> Hisoka's even stronger than me, you know. Yeah, I know that. But I'm not sure what kind of training I need. Kilua, what do you think Zushi's up to? I don't know. He's probably still trying to get off the 50th floor. From what I could tell, he still isn't ready to move up at the moment. Yeah, but didn't you say it was hard to take him down? Mm-hmm. During our match, no matter how many times I hit him, he kept getting back up. It was so annoying. Finally, I hit him as hard as I could. Take this! Ooh. Oh, man. I hit him too hard. Critical hit, 10 points total. Hilua wins by TKO. Somehow he has this power that makes him never back down. Maybe it has something to do with Ren. You know that thing Wing mentioned? I agree. Do you think it's some kind of new technique? I don't know. But as we move up to the higher floors, we'll face more people who can do stuff like this. We've got to find out more. Well, then why don't we just go and find Zushi and ask him? Okay. Ren is one of the four exercises. And the four exercises are fundamental to all martial arts to instill discipline and develop character. Learn Ten, no Zetsu, and through Ren attain Hatsu. That's how you train for Nen. Now you know. Nen? What's Nen? That doesn't make any sense! What? It doesn't? Then I'll try explaining it again. Listen carefully. Ren is one of the four exercises. And the four exercises... Zushi, that's enough. Only those who have mastered the training are qualified to teach it to others. Of course. I'm sorry, Master. Hello again, Gong. Kilua. There's an old cautionary proverb warning that a smattering of knowledge may leave you wallowing in greater ignorance. Have you heard it? I've heard that a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. But I want to know exactly what Nen is. I really want to learn. Even if you don't tell us, we're still going to try and find out. But I don't want to get stuck wallowing around in ignorance. So if you agree to teach me, I won't be forced to go and learn what it is by myself. And I want to know too. One of the reasons we came here is to learn more. Osu! <sighs> I understand. Follow me. Nen is a power that inflames our souls, and it's expressed by our strength of will. The training to attain Nen is comprised of four exercises. We call these exercises the Four Fundamentals, and they are Ten, Zetsu, Ren, and finally, Hatsu. Let me explain each of them in detail, starting with Ten, which focuses the mind and helps you concentrate on your inner self, defining your goal. Following that, Zetsu helps you put that goal into words. Ren intensifies your will, and Hatsu puts it into action. Zushi's Ren, or his will to win, was what intimidated you, Kilua. I think that explains it. Now, please, allow me to demonstrate. Kilua, will you please stand up? My mind will be filled with thoughts of killing you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just an exercise, so go ahead. I'll do it in the proper order. Ten. Now, Zetsu. You can say it loud or to yourself. It doesn't matter. I am going to... kill you. Uh. Uh. 
So that was Ren. With enough strength and focus, your will, or Ren, becomes action or Hatsu. This is how you can intimidate others. Sometimes it can make your opponent so scared that they'll surrender before the fight even begins. However, this can often lead to dangerous misconceptions about how powerful you actually are and cause you to lose focus. To be truly effective, Ren requires unwavering clarity of mind. All three of you are ready. I will now attempt to focus your minds and ignite your spirits. If you want to learn Nen, you must first dedicate yourselves to mastering Ten. Once you've managed to do that, you won't feel intimidated by others. Thanks a lot, Master Wing. Osu! Zushi, it's okay now. Osu! Now that they're gone, we can resume your training. Okay. As always, start with ten. I really like Master Wing. Zushi's so lucky. You know he was lying to us, right? He was? Everything he taught us today sounded right, and the demonstration of his power was very real. But it still doesn't explain why Zushi kept getting back up during our fight. They're hiding something. Did you see the look on Zushi's face when Wing was teaching us? He's in on it. You could be right. But I don't get it. Why do you think they'd lie to us? Because Nen must be something very powerful. <sighs> Before we leave Heaven's Arena, we're gonna have to figure it out. Is something wrong, Zushi? Your ten is agitated. Master... Why did you lie to Gon and Kilua? Lie? Do you mean the explanation I gave to them? Yes, that's right. The actual characters are Ten, Zetsu, Ren, and Hatsu, and you didn't explain the real meaning of each one. Did you lie to them because they aren't your students, Master? I wasn't lying. Nen is a genuine discipline, and it's needed to train your inner self. To know it is to use it. And you're right. I would never teach Nen to someone who wasn't one of my students. That's why I gave them a lesson suitable for anyone. This force is too powerful to put in the hands of those who might abuse it. Here, I'll show you. You can transform a simple piece of paper into a deadly blade. Or you can protect yourself by making your body as hard as steel. Anyone who disciplines themselves can master it. Now you understand. It's not something you teach to those you've just met. Uh, Master? That book's mine and I haven't read it yet. <gasps> and that was my can of juice. Oh, sorry! This is unbelievable! Goat and Kilua have both won their first matches on the 190th floor! They move up to the 200th floor undefeated and they've only been here a week! You know, this kind of bugs me. Huh? It took me two years to get to the 200th floor. And you've done it in a week. Come on, get real, Kilua. You were only six years old at the time, right? I know, but still. Finally. Anyone going up? <gasps> hey, hello. Gon and Kilua have made it to the 200th floor? Yeah, I told you, they're incredible. Master? <sighs> I have no choice. I wonder what the 200th floor is like. I don't know. When I got this far last time, I didn't bother to register. I just left and went back home. Excuse me, could you tell us what it's like? I don't know. What? I said I don't know! Come on, what kind of elevator operator are you anyway? Kilua? Mm -hmm. This place is really going downhill. They don't even bother training their employees anymore. Shh. That's enough. If they're not going to be smart, you'd think they'd at least be good looking. Kilua! Ah! I don't have to take this! <laughs> 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 Guess I should have kept my mouth shut, huh? Uh huh. Hmm? Do you feel that, Gone? Mm hmm. I can feel it. It's good that we made it to this floor. Someone down this hallway is using Nen. What now? I say we keep moving, because if Wing isn't going to tell us what Nen really is, then we'll just have to figure it out for ourselves. Let's do it. 
Come on. No, I can't move. I don't want to go any further. Hey, we know you're there. Why don't you come out and face us? You must be the newcomers, Gon and Kilua. In case you're wondering, the reception desk is over there. You have until the end of the day to register for your matches. Please be aware that once it's past midnight, you'll no longer be allowed to register. Oh, one more thing. From the 200th floor up, weapons are allowed in the matches. So if you have any, feel free. This energy, is it coming from her? I can't tell! You should also know that at this level, prize money is no longer awarded if you win. Here, you fight only for honor and reputation. I hope I've made myself sufficiently clear. <gasps> Hisoka! What are you doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? Is that really all you've got to say to me? <sighs> to tell you the truth, I came here because the cards told me to. Huh? They told me that our fates were intertwined. <gasps> of course, I'm only joking. Fate has absolutely nothing to do with it. You used the internet to purchase your airship tickets. So all I had to do was search for your names and ta-da, I knew exactly where you were going. And when I found out that you were coming here to Heaven's Arena, I just couldn't resist. I boarded my private airship and arrived here well ahead of you. So you're stalking us? Don't be silly, Willies. I'm a regular tenant here on the 200th floor. Have been for a long time now. So as someone who knows his way around here, let me give you a little piece of advice. Turn back now, because obviously the two of you aren't ready. As for when you'll be ready, it's really hard to say. Take my advice. Come back another time and try again. No way! We've come this far and we're not leaving! Can you get past me? He's right. It's useless. You don't have nearly enough training to overcome his Nen. It's like you've wandered naked into a snowstorm and you have no idea where you are or how to get back home. If you stay here much longer, you're not going to survive. Is this what Nen is? All he's got to do is hold up his hand and we can't move a muscle? I've decided to teach you the true Nen. But right now, we need to get you both out of here, quick. Yeah, but we have to register for our matches by midnight. What happens if we don't? Well, then you'd have to work your way back up from the first floor again. However... Yeah, what? Since Kilua didn't register the last time he was here on the 200th floor, if he fails to do so a second time, he will be considered as someone who lacks the necessary commitment, and he'll be banned from ever competing here again. No way! Hmm. If we leave here with you, right now, can we come back in time to register or not? That will depend on you. <laughs> this is Nen. Ugh! Tell me, why should we believe you now? What kind of master are you anyway? Lying to kids who just want to learn! Kilua, you're more passionate about learning Nen than any student I've ever had. Any particular reason? Yeah, because I think my older brother used it against me. Your brother uses Nen? Yeah, I'm sure he does. Okay, I'll teach you as long as you understand that there's a dark side to Nen as well. Nen is the ability to control at will the life energy, or what some people call aura, which flows through your body. We all emanate a limited amount of this aura. The average person is not even aware of it leaving their bodies. Ten is the technique that helps you retain that energy within your body, strengthening it and helping it maintain its youthful vitality. Zetsu is the technique for containing your aura. It's best for concealing your presence and recovering from injury or exhaustion. And finally, Ren is the technique for maximizing your aura. Mm. Tell me, can you feel that? Yeah, it's like pressure. But it's not scary or anything. It's letting you know that I'm not a threat. Their sensitivity is astounding. They haven't even mastered the technique yet and they're already picking up on my aura. Aura is life energy that is produced by our bodies, which is why it's most effective when used against other human beings. 
it can be used for good or for evil. If you attack someone who doesn't know how to defend themselves, you could easily kill them with your aura alone. There's only one way to protect yourself against an attack from a Nen user, and that is to become a Nen user yourself. I think I get it. It's like fighting fire with fire. Defend with Ten. Use your aura to block the aura of your enemy. Because if you don't... Your body will shatter into pieces. Just like that. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand three things. Really? What three things? One, the real Nen is more powerful than anything else. Two, we won't be able to win without it from here on out. And three, I still can't believe you lied to us the first time! Right. Not yet. It's still too soon. There's only one way to protect yourself against an attack from a Nen user, and that is to become a Nen user yourself. <sighs> this is Nen. It's a power that exists within everyone. There are only two ways to awaken it, slowly and methodically, or by force. I took the slow path with Zushi. He is an eager student and dedicated to his training, and he was able to master Ten in a relatively short period of time. It took him six months. But we don't have six months! We have to register by midnight! And without Nen, we won't be able to get past Hisoka! Then we'll have to awaken it by force. And then we can make it in time? That depends on how quickly you can learn to contain your aura. First, I'm going to attempt to transmit my aura into you. This is known as Hatsu, which is what I use to crack the wall. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you, but that doesn't mean it's going to be pleasant. By sending my aura through your bodies, I'll attempt to force open your nodes. Our nodes? Are those like pressure points? Yes. They're the network that aura passes through. There are many of them throughout your body. Right now they're closed, which prevents the free flow of aura. But by sending my Hatsu through you, those nodes will be forced open and then your aura will be awakened. Under normal circumstances, you'd learn to open your nodes through meditation over an extended period of time. Even Zushi, who is very talented, spent three months opening his. You two might have managed it in a week, maybe even less. It's really too bad we're in such a rush and forced to take these drastic measures. What's the problem? I mean, why waste our time doing it the long way when there's a way to do it fast? Because this risky method is a secret trick. If I was inexperienced or harbored any malice, you could both be killed. Yeah, but you're a master, and you're not evil, so we can trust you, right? I want to know, why did you change your mind and decide to teach us all of a sudden? Because on the 200th floor, everyone is a Nen user and they initiate anyone who isn't soon after they arrive. They'll attack you with Nen, which is similar to what I'm going to do, only they don't care if you live or die. Those few who do survive are considered the chosen ones and are welcome to live there. But that privilege comes at a price. When you get there, you'll understand why I didn't want you to learn Nen like that. Now that you've been warned of the dangers of being attacked by Nen, I will use this method to awaken it in you. I believe that you're both talented and capable enough to endure it. I was very impressed by your Ren. Now, please remove your jackets and turn your backs towards me. Whoa, it feels hot. He's not touching me, but still something's pushing against me. It kind of feels like my body's being surrounded by this thick, invisible skin. It's almost like the feeling I got from Illumi when he used his Nen on me, only that was a billion times worse. Here it comes. <laughs> Feel that? All the nodes in your bodies have been opened. You can see your auras, can't you? Amazing! It looks like steam coming out of a kettle. It's gushing out of my entire body. Is it supposed to be doing that? At this rate, your life's energy will soon be depleted. And when it's gone, you'll be too exhausted to even stand. I knew it! Listen to me! It's not that hard. Just focus and imagine you're containing your aura. Now close your eyes, stand comfortably, and try to relax. 
Feel the aura, not as energy, but as the very blood coursing through your veins. From the top of your head, down to your right shoulder and hand, down your leg, then back up your left side. Feel it? Now gradually try and take control of it. Visualize the energy orbiting around the core of your body. These boys are incredible. They instinctively assume the most natural position for achieving 10 and have mastered the flow with only minimal instruction. Now, slowly open your eyes. Tell me how you feel. It feels like I'm soaked in viscous fluid. It's like I'm wearing clothes that don't weigh anything. Good, now try and hold on to those first impressions. Once you internalize them, you'll be able to use 10 in your sleep. Ready? Now, this time I'm going to attack you with a malicious aura. Before, my very stance would have been enough to have driven you from this room. Yeah. Now I understand why you compared it to being naked in a snowstorm. If you can withstand this, you'll be ready to get past Hisoka. Here it comes. Welcome to the 200th floor. Looks like you won't need to be initiated. Let's see if I can guess why you decided to come to Heaven's Arena. You're here to train yourself to fight me, aren't you? Actually, I didn't know you were going to show up here, Hisoka. Guess that saves me time. You're up to speed on Ten, but don't get too cocky. Nen has many facets. You know, honestly, I don't plan on fighting you anytime soon. Although... I suppose if you can win one match on this floor, I'll reconsider. Let's go! Yeah! I never thought Nen could be learned so quickly. No, those two are just very talented. It's extraordinary. Hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. Some new blood? And it seems they know about it. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Welcome to the 200th floor. Please sign these registration forms. Sure. sure. Would you like to sign up for a match right now? Huh? At this level, you have up to 90 days to prepare for your first match. But you can book a fight for whichever day you want during that time period. You can also fight every day if you want, or you can wait until the very last minute. It's entirely up to you. After each match, you're allowed to have another 90 days to prepare before you have to fight in the next one. If you fail to participate in a match within the allotted time limit, you'll be disqualified and your registration will be revoked. So that's something you should keep in mind. You said there's a first match. That means we fight more than once at this level? Correct. In order to move up from this level, you'll need to win 10 fights. However, if you happen to lose four matches, you'll be disqualified. And after you've won your ten matches, you'll be qualified to challenge a floor master. What's, What's a, a floor, floor master? master? That's what our 21 highest ranked fighters are called. Each of them gets an entire floor to themselves between the 230th and 250th floors. So do you see what I'm getting at? When you challenge a floor master and win, you've reached the heights of Heaven's Arena! That floor becomes your floor, and you become the new floor master! Is, Is that, that it? it? No, of course that's not it. As a floor master in Heaven's Arena, you become eligible to advance to the very highest floor to participate in the Battle Olympia, the biennial festival of combat! Isn't that amazing? No reaction? We don't care about that. Don't we get anything else once we make it to the top floor? <gasps> you don't care? <clears throat> well, the champion of the Battle Olympia also gets to live in the Heavens Arena penthouse. They say living there is like living on top of the world. I mean, it's almost a thousand meters up in the sky. Isn't that amazing? Your house is higher than that, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's somewhere around 3,700 meters. <sighs> what now? If that's all there is to it, then I don't even care if we make it to the top anymore. Yeah, I know. All I really want to do is get even with Hisoka. Come on! What's wrong with you guys? Don't you want to be rich? 
I don't care about getting rich. I don't need the money either. Oh. Then why did you bother coming here in the first place? Well, you need to win at least one match up here. But you're not going to get into a fight right away, are you? Remember what that guy with the glasses said? I know, but still. I better see what kind of competition I'm up against as soon as I can. And the best way to do that is to sign up for a match right now. Then please fill out this form and sign it at the bottom. Huh? What do you want? Nothing. We're just standing in line to register for a fight, that's all. Gone. I think these guys are hoping to get into a match against you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for a match any time. Did you hear that? <laughs> You're just raring to go, aren't you? Here, these are your room keys. I guess those guys back there are from the 200th floor. I guess. They probably hang around hoping to get into an easy match against a rookie who doesn't know any better. Whoa, this is the nicest room I've ever seen. Man, this floor is way better than I expected. Hey, go. I've already got my first match. It's on March 11th at 3 o'clock p.m. No way, the 11th of March? But that's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, I know I probably won't win this one, but that's okay. I can't wait to try out my new power. And when I do, I'll see what I'm capable of. Hmm. Carefully. Even though you can protect yourself with the power of 10, you'll still feel pain and can still be injured. Your opponents will be experienced Nen users and will have no problem breaking through your 10 to land what could be a critical hit. Your lives may be in danger. So I don't want either of you to accept any matches for two months, and I'll teach you as much as possible during that time. Sorry, Master Wing, but I just can't wait. I've got to fight! Kick his butt! Begin! Hmm. Huh? You got lucky, kid. I'm not as strong as some of the guys up here, so you might even survive your first match. There they are! Edo's dancing tops! Tank spinning tops that he launches at his opponent! It's his own unique weapon! This is a little attack I call the Battle Waltz! Hit. I thought he said he wasn't that strong, but getting hit by that little spinning top felt like getting hit by a hammer. <laughs> These tops will spin for hours because they're powered by Nen, and they'll attack you from everywhere. Even I can't predict what they're gonna do. I gotta figure out their movements. There, I did it! Ah! A clean hit! Fight? Of course I can. There's too many of those things. I can't keep an eye on all of them. What am I gonna do? <laughs> With all those dancing tops, it's impossible. Master, how does he do it? With Nen? Well, it's actually a form of Hatsu. You see, he's transmitting his aura into those tops. By using the power of Nen, you can boost the power of an object, maximizing its intended function. So you mean it becomes a power source? Kind of like a battery or gas for a car? Yeah, but to keep those small tops spinning for hours like that is pretty easy for someone who knows how to use Nen even a little bit. 
but I believe that Guido has infused those tops with extra Nen, which lets him command them too. Extra Nen? If the only Nen he used was just to get those tops to spin, they probably wouldn't have enough power to launch all of these attacks. And the only reason he's able to make them do that is because he has a strong personal connection to them. You see, when an object functions in tandem with a person, it will respond much better and with greater force. It's no use. I can't follow all of them. I have to feel their presence. The tops have been charged with Nen. So that means I can sense their movement. I feel them! Oh no! My ten is fading! Ah! A direct hit! That was not to run out of the ring! This guy's too good for go! He has no defense against those spinning tops! Ido is way ahead by six points to nothing! Go will have to do something, and fast! That didn't work. I guess I can't focus on the tops and my ten at the same time. Top must have bounced out of the ring, but why isn't it attacking me? Look, kid, do you think you can continue fighting, or should I call the match? Hold on, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm gonna count to ten, and if you're not back in the ring, it's over. One. Weird. I'm not feeling anything negative from the Nen power in this top. Two. What about the others? They're just spinning around at random. Three. Once in a while, they crash into each other. Maybe they're not even targeting me at all! Four! Excuse me, but why are you staying outside the ring? Because if I was in the ring, I'd get hit by those things, that's why. And five! I was right! This is just like Sumo Tops! Master, what's the extra Nen he's using? Those spinning tops aren't like machines or living creatures. And you can't give complex commands to simple objects, so... The command he gave them was... Smash into any obstacle. Of course, the tops can't identify obstacles. They simply spin around the ring and deflect off of anything they bump into. So if they're not aiming for me... Eight! Then I don't have to be scared of them anymore! That's nine! I just have to ignore them and attack Guido! Ah! Nice try, kid! That three points! The referee has awarded Guido three points for that critical hit and knockdown, putting him nine points ahead! Go to down to his last chance! <laughs> I can defend myself by spinning like a top and leave the offensive attacks to my dancing tops! I know it's nothing fancy, but it hasn't failed me yet! Go! Don't even bother attacking! Just let him spin and he'll be too dizzy to fight! <laughs> Yeah, right, kid. Like, that's gonna work. You don't think he's trained himself to handle a little problem like dizziness? I mean, come on. Does a figure skater get dizzy? Why don't you shut up? I've got to come up with something. But what can I do? What should he do? There are several ways to tackle this problem. At least in theory. But unfortunately, Gon still hasn't learned Ren yet and he doesn't know how to generate enough aura either. If he did, he could channel it into an effective attack against his opponent. The only way to achieve that is gradually, over time, through endless training and combat experience. To beat Guido, he'd need five more years, and I bet he's starting to realize that now. What should I do to keep on fighting? If he scores one more point against me, this match is over! I don't want to lose this match! There must be something I can do, but what? Huh? Oh no! Oh! <gasps> he released his ten! That's insane! And he didn't just release it, that's... Master! Is it? Yes, Setsu. Yeah, but... 
That's so dangerous! He's trying to hide his presence. All his nodes are closed and his aura is contained. But he can't actually hide himself there in the ring! Worst of all, now he has absolutely no defense against Guido's men! Master, why did you teach Gon Zetsu? He's not ready! I haven't taught him Zetsu yet. Maybe he learned it from someone else. No, he must have picked it up by naturally honing his instincts, just like an animal learns to hunt its prey. If that's the kind of life he's had, it's no wonder he's so talented. But why do this now? You idiot! Remember what Wing taught us? If you get attacked by a Nen user without using it to defend yourself, you're as good as dead! Yeah, I remember. But to feel the movement of the tox, so I can avoid getting hit again, I gotta focus all of my senses on them. I can't afford to be distracted by maintaining my ten right now. I can't believe it. He never intended to win this match in the first place. He's risking his life just to further his training. <laughs> you got a death wish, kid? Well, allow me to make your wish come true! <laughs> I can feel them. I know where they're going. I've just got to keep doing this until I can find a way to counterattack. I'm still in this fight! Broken right radius and ulna. A cracked humerus. Three rib fractures and cracks in a dozen other bones. You're gonna need four months to heal now, you moron. Sorry. Apologizing to me isn't gonna do anything. What was going through that thick skull of yours when you were out there getting your butt kicked, huh? Did you think you could be one of those guys who gets initiated without knowing then? One wrong move and you could have ended up just like them! Come on, that glasses guy told us not to fight right away, but you completely ignored him. Uh, yeah, I know. But I really thought I was gonna be alright. Hey, did you see when I got hit by those tops a bunch of times? I had a feeling I wasn't gonna get killed, though. <laughs> oh yeah? How about now? Coming! Oh, hey, glasses guy. Uh? Master Wing, I... I just... Mm. I, uh... I'm sorry. What good is an apology gonna do now? What the hell were you thinking out there? I suppose you were trying to get ahead by being initiated by Nen. You should count yourself lucky you didn't get killed in the process. Jeez! He knows. I just told him. <sighs> Listen. I'm just glad it wasn't any worse. I really mean that. Master Wing, I... I'm really, really sorry. Forget it. That's not good enough. Hey, tell me, Kilua, how long do you think it'll take Gong to make a full recovery? The doctor said it'll take about two months. Good. Then for two months, I forbid you from fighting in any matches. You're not allowed to train for Nen or research it in any way. And if you fail to keep these conditions, then I'm no longer going to consider you a student. Understand? I do. You have my word. I promise. Left hand. This is your pledge. Whenever you see it, remember the promise you made. Mm hmm Can I speak to you, Kilua? So, what's up? What are your real goals here? Well, it's hard to say. Before we met you and Zushi, I was just here to make some extra money. I convinced Gon to come and train for his fight against a guy called Hisoka, and that's about it. Hisoka? He was the one we ran into on the 200th floor. So, it seems like most of these guys up here on the 200th floor are trying to make it all the way to the top. But that doesn't really interest me. 
Hmm, I'm not so sure about Gone, though. I mean, he keeps telling everyone that all he cares about is settling a score with Hisoka. But seeing him in the ring yesterday, I don't know. It looked to me like he was starting to enjoy himself. Oh, wow! This is incredible! How long can he keep this up? There must be almost 50 drops spinning around inside that ring! And Gold is managing to dodge every one of them! I've never seen anything like it! He dodges another one, and another, and another! better than this. All you don't need now is one point to win, but he just can't seem to get it, even with all those tops. Ah! No! Not that way! <laughs> this is it! Yon has nowhere left to go! So you mean Gon actually enjoyed that, even though he could have been killed? Yeah. But to be honest with you, I totally understand where he's coming from, because I've often felt the same way too. Well, I would have chosen my opponent and the time and place for the fight, but he doesn't think like that, especially when he's caught up in the moment. I guess he's kind of reckless that way. <laughs> but come on, he won't break two promises. He's not like that. So don't worry. What have I done? Forget it. Huh? It's too late now anyway. Because we already know. You don't have to regret what you've done or feel responsible for us learning about Nen. If you quit on us now, we'd just find someone else. Or we'd study it on our own somehow. My brother already knows it, and so does Hisoka. One way or another, we're gonna learn it, so it might as well be from you. That may well be true, but still. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, good morning. Do you have a minute? All right then, I'm not about to quit halfway through. To be honest, there are many more things I want to teach you. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't you continue your training with Zushi and I? No thanks. I don't want to leave Gon too far behind. When his two months are up, we'll pick up where we left off. Hmm. Hey, Kilua. You can tell Gon that he has my permission to work on Nen of the Flame. He can also practice focusing his ten. Of course, you can too. Hey! Guess what Wing told me! And what's that supposed to mean? Like I said, you're not qualified to sign a contract with us. I have to admit, you must be pretty smart since you managed to find this office all by yourself. But I'm afraid I simply can't recommend you to my clientele, and that's all there is to it. Look, I know I don't have any actual work experience, but I am qualified. No, it's not that. Huh? Honestly, I don't care about your lack of experience. Some of my clients are even willing to hire beginners. But... You're not even a beginner yet. What are you implying? Because I already have my hunter license. Here, see for yourself. Yeah, so you have a hunter license. You know, you still haven't passed the final exam yet. Huh? I can tell. What do you mean? <laughs> tell me what you see. What I see? Yeah, next to me.
Don't see anything, do ya? <sighs> Come back when you can see what I'm talking about. That's our minimum hiring standard here. What was that all about? I couldn't see anything. But I... I did sense that something was there. What could it have been? Master, I think... I think I may have awoken a terrible monster. I'm coming in! Huh? Hey, Kilua! What a coincidence! I was just gonna come and see ya! What the...? I guess you're feeling better, huh? Uh-huh! A hundred percent better! Pretty cool, huh? I don't believe it! He got over a four-month injury in just one month? But that doesn't make any sense! Unless you're some kind of mutant or something! I want to know how you did it! Huh? Oh, maybe it's because I've been eating these! Dried sardines? That still doesn't explain anything! So, uh, what'd you come here for anyway? Oh, yeah. Check them out. Tickets? Yeah, but I bet you can't guess what they're for. Hmm? Hisoka's oh. next match. Getting them wasn't easy. Hisoka's matches are really popular. The only reason I even got my hands on them was because I'm on the 200th floor. But still, I had to pay an arm and a leg for them. I also asked around about Hisoka a little bit. He's built up quite a reputation here. He's fought 11 matches with 8 wins, 3 losses, and 6 KOs. And the number of KOs equals the number of corpses. The 3 losses are all by default. I guess he registers for the matches when the deadline comes up, but then he doesn't show up for them. Man, that guy is so full of himself. Anyway, what this all means is, he's never actually lost a fight. Yeah? And not only that... What? There's more? In all of his 11 matches, he only lost a grand total of 4 points. That's one knockdown and three clean hits. The guys I was talking to say Hisoka is as good as any floor master. <sighs> that sucks. Yeah, right. Then how come it looks like you're smiling? Well, this time he's up against a guy named Castro. Three of the four points that Hisoka's given up were to this guy. They're like rivals or something. This match will give you a chance to analyze Hisoka's technique. He might actually fight for real this time. But you think it's okay? Huh? Well, you know, I kind of made a promise to Master Wang. What? <laughs> Look, that has nothing to do with this. All we're going to do is sit and watch the match, not fight in it. Forget it. <laughs> Watching a match counts as studying Nen. There's nothing stopping Kilua from going, but Gon, I want you to go back to your room and concentrate on healing your wounds. Uh, mm-hmm. I understand. All right, that's all I have to say. Is he stalking us? Kilua? No big deal. I'll just go to the match by myself and videotape it so you can watch it in your room later. I said, is mm -hmm. anyone going These up? These stupid tickets cost me 150,000 jenny each. I hey, could have bought a thousand chocolate up? robots with that. Uh, well, are you going up or not? This elevator going up. <laughs> okay, see you later. See ya. They've followed my instructions, and they've performed ten every day. The aura leaking out of them shows this clearly. It suggests a great but tranquil river. Huh? <sighs> I better take it easy. I can't be the one losing my composure here. Welcome to the battle!
Battle Hour. Have we got an exciting show lined up for you today, ladies and gentlemen? Our first match is between Castro and Hisoka. Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm reporting live from the match site. And just look at this crowd. It's a full house and the match is still an hour away. He's won eight and lost three, but only because he didn't bother showing up. He's Hisoka the Magician. Meanwhile, Castro's record is nine wins and one loss. Yes, he's won nine in a row since he lost to Hisoka, but now he's one away from challenging a floor master. He's already stated that he wants to avenge his earlier loss. Is today the day? Oh, what do you mean there's no more chocolate robots? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, sir. Oh, man, how does that happen? Well, you see, two days ago, someone came in here and bought up our entire stock. Hmm? Two days ago? Right, it was me. We should be getting more in about two weeks. <laughs> in that case, I'll have a Doki Dom and Juice. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now for our interview with Castro. I feel all right. I'm not letting the pressure of winning my 10th match get to me. I just want to bring my best. And here I thought he'd be a gorilla. Do you, think you have a chance of defeating Hisoka? If I didn't think I could win, I wouldn't fight. But I'm not the same opponent Hisoka faced two years ago. Right. Thanks for Ooh, taking the time big to talk talker, to us. Huh? Who knows? Maybe his confidence is well deserved. I'll go see for myself. Huh? Hmm. There he is. Hmm. Is there something huh? I can do <gasps> for you? What the? Oh, he's not there. But I saw him sitting in that chair. How'd he get behind me? Did he slip past me in the doorway without me noticing? Ugh, that's impossible! I was watching him through the door right until the second he spoke to me. There's no way I would have missed him. But then how'd he do it? Yeah, actually I came here to get your autograph, okay? <laughs> I'd be honored to do that for you, Kilua. Huh? I make sure I know who all my rivals are here on the 200th floor. You're friends with Gone, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, I'm impressed. You've really done your homework. Spying on the enemy? Not really. I just came to get a closer look at the guy who's fighting today. I see. So tell me, what's your first impression? Pretty impressive. Thank you. Your technique of hiding your presence from me was actually pretty impressive too. But if you want it to be effective, you have to start before you arrive on this floor. Huh? When someone of your caliber hides their aura so suddenly, it's a cause for alarm for a lot of people. Oh, really? Let me guess. You were keeping track of me as soon as I got off the elevator, right? Sort of. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, sure. One question. Mm hmm? How'd you get past me in the doorway like that before? I'm afraid I can't tell you. I might have to fight against you too someday. <laughs> you don't have to worry. I'm not actually going to be signing up for any matches. Oh, really? It seems that your aura is telling a very different story. <laughs> I'm only joking. Tell you what, I'll show you how I did it in the match. Oh, I almost forgot. The autograph. <laughs> nah, that's alright. I didn't even bring any paper with me. See ya. Kilua, I'll be at the Battle Olympia. I'll see you there. I told you, I'm not going to fight anymore. This is it! The moment you've all been waiting for! Hisoka versus Castro! It's going to be the battle of the century! From the moment they entered the ring, they've been staring each other down. And the match hasn't even started yet! Who will win this brutal grudge match? Will it be Hisoka, or will Castro have his vengeance? It's anybody's guess! I guess I should thank you. 
If I hadn't lost you two years ago, I never would have become as powerful as I am now. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear that. I'll say this, in the nine matches I've had since then, I never once fought my hardest. They were only a convenient way to warm up for my inevitable rematch with you. Hmm, you really shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. But I wonder if you even have what it takes to make this fight worth my while. Do you? You'll see. This is Hisoka versus Castro. At the bell, come out fighting. Begin! Hmm. Oh. Clean hit! Was that his right hand? That was just like when he got behind me in the doorway earlier. How does he do it? Castro opens the match with an impressive attack! He still got failed to avoid the lightning fast strike and gives up the first point! I warned you, Hisoka. I'm not who I was. It's time to get serious. <laughs> What's the big hurry? Whether or not it's time to get serious isn't for you to decide. It's entirely up to me. <laughs> Your insolence will cost you your right arm. Folks, you're about to witness Castro's signature tiger bite fist! Castro isn't taking any chances. And for some reason, Hisoka hasn't responded yet. If he doesn't do something soon, he's gonna lose this match. <gasps> you can have it. Huh. All right, if that's what you want. <laughs> then I'll take it from you. <gasps> Nice job. Now, let me see what I can do about those arms. I've always had my suspicions, but watching you in the ring today confirmed it for me. You really are an idiot, aren't you? What were you hoping to accomplish? Is this all just another performance to you? Some kind of magic trick? But what do I care? It means more money for me. Better stop the bleeding first. Close off the aura to your arm. Hold still. There. Done. Your blood vessels, bones, nerves, and muscles have all been reconnected. Excellent. Now for the other one. This time you can hold the arm yourself. Mm-hmm. I never get tired of watching you and your needlework. I sometimes think that maybe if I didn't enjoy it so much, I'd be more careful not to get injured so badly. Spare me the flattery. That's 20 million for your left and 50 for your right. Fork it over. Yeah, okay. You still take checks, right? By the way, if you're not doing anything later, would you like to have dinner with me? I'll take that as a no. Kilua and Gon, starting today, you will be training with Zushi. Awesome! And Gon, well done. You've honored our agreement these last two months. All thanks to this string around my finger. It kept reminding me not to break the promise, even though I was tempted to. I don't know why, but looking at it makes me feel calm inside. I infused it with Nen for just that purpose. What, really? Just kidding. Aww. Is that what he calls a joke? Okay, but what makes you so sure he didn't break the promise? I mean, he could have been training secretly behind your back. Because if he had done that, the thread would be broken. Now, Gong, it's been a while, so why don't you show me your ten? You mean it's okay? Yeah. So what do you think, Zushi? Amazing! 
It's so calm, but it's also really powerful. It's perfect. <sighs> I was afraid I'd forgotten how to do it. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. Once you've learned how to do it, you'll never forget. Yeah, but I haven't practiced, and it felt easier than before. Well, that's because you've been practicing your ten every day. Look at your finger now and tell me what you see. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it broke! It wouldn't break before, no matter how many times you washed your hands. That's because I tied that string in such a way that it would only break if you broke your promise to me and used Nen. It's a little Nen trick of mine. Oh. You know, there's something I've been wondering. You saw the match between Hisoka and Castro, right? Yes. Hisoka's magic is actually Nen, isn't it? But if it is, why couldn't I see his aura? Good question. Hisoka uses a technique which makes his aura almost invisible. It's a highly advanced form of Zetsu, which is called In. And the only way to recognize it is to master the advanced form of Ren, known as Gyo. So Gong, tell me, how many days do you have left to prepare for your next scheduled match? Well, let's see. Two months have passed, so I have almost a month left. And you, Kilua? I've got exactly 27 more days to go. If we work hard, that should be enough. But it never pays to rush your training. Take your time and awaken Ren at your own pace. In the end, that's actually the fastest way to learn it. Awesome! His aura is incredible. It's just as big as ours, but I can tell it's bursting with power. Now, focus it all on your eyes. Awesome. Okay, you should be able to see my aura now. Yeah. What color? It's yellow. That's right, very good. You should be <sighs> proud of yourself, Zushi. Awesome. <sighs> For the time being, you won't be able to attain Gyo unless you can summon all the power that's inside you. But if you continue to practice and push yourselves, one day you'll be able to fight with it as well. Gyo is a technique that's most often relied upon when you're up against an unknown opponent. But even then, if you don't know what your opponent is capable of, you can't expect to win. First thing tomorrow, we'll begin your Gyo training. Awesome! Uh, I'm so tired. Hmm? What's the matter? I'm not really sleepy yet. I think I'm gonna go for a walk. All right, see you later. Yeah, good night. Hmm, for a walk? Right. I have to contain my aura and absorb as much of that energy as possible. Then, at just the right moment, release it all at once. And then focus it into my eyes! Hi, Gon. It's me. <gasps> Hisoka. I saw you last night. Unless I'm mistaken, you've managed to master Ren already. I told you that I wouldn't agree to fight you until you had at least one victory on the 200th floor. But this changes everything. You pass. I think you're finally ready to fight against me now. Just name the time and place. I'll be waiting. See ya. <sighs> They've improved so fast! How do they do it? <sighs> Good work! You have both passed! Well, I certainly didn't expect this. I've never seen anyone progress this fast. You've mastered Gyo overnight. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> It's obvious to me that the two of you have been doing your homework, and you both want to start training for Hatsu, is that correct? Mm-hmm. All right, then. 
It seems I underestimated your ability to learn and apply these lessons. We will now move on to the next step and start training for Hatsu. Hatsu is your personal expression of Nen. It is greater than the sum of everything you've learned so far. Nen users fall into one of six broad categories. Emitter, Enhancer, Transmuter, Manipulator, Conjurer, and Specialist. Now, Nen abilities are highly personal, so it's important to find the one that feels right to you. Which one that is depends entirely on the type of aura you were born with. This chart illustrates the differences between all six. Read them carefully and try and get a sense of where you fit in, because the sooner you discover your natural ability, the easier your training will be. But avoid an ability that seems foreign to you. Training for it would be a pointless exercise. This is why it's so important to understand which ability corresponds with your aura from the beginning. Is there a way to find out what ability we have? Yes, there is. Water divination. This is a Shingen Ryu screening tool. It's also used in training Hatsu. Cup your hands around the glass and perform Ren. Your ability is revealed by what happens. Ah, oh, the water! It's pouring over! It shows that I have an Enhancer's Aura. As you can see, Enhancers change the volume of water. Now, why don't you three give it a try? Okay, I'll go first. Wasu! I guess you're an Enhancer too. Look! The leaf's moving! That means you're a manipulator. Oh. Alright, it's my turn. Huh? Nothing's happening. Looks that way. Hmm, so does that mean I have no Nen ability? No, no. Why don't you taste the water? It tastes kind of sweet. Yeah, you're right. But isn't this just plain tap water? Changing the taste of the water shows that you're a transmuter. Well, now that all of you know exactly what kind of auras you have, we can move on. For the next four weeks, I want you to give this your undivided attention. Continue practicing this exercise until you can make a more significant change in the water. Awesome! Is something wrong? I don't think we have a lesson scheduled for today. I know, but I wanted to show you how much I've learned since the last time I was here. All right, I'm ready when you are. Hmm, how was that? That was excellent. Well done, Gom. It didn't take you very long to master water divination. Well... That's not why... I think I can guess why you're here. Huh? You're thinking about your opponent in the upcoming match, aren't you? You want to fight Hisoka. Isn't that right? I know all about it. Hisoka is strong. You have no chance of defeating him as it stands right now. Yeah, I know, but... But you still want to fight him. Tell me, is this why you've been training for Nen so diligently? Hmm... I'm only your master when it comes to teaching you Nen. I have no intention of trying to tell you how to live your life. You're free to fight Hisoka if that's what you want. However, I have only one condition. Don't push yourself beyond your limits. Can you promise me that? <gasps> awesome. Hello? I've been waiting. Have you made a decision yet? Yeah. Our fight's gonna be on June 10th, and it'll be at the stadium in Heaven's Arena. Okay. I can't wait. See you then. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, well. You're up bright and early. It's weird. Last night I was so excited, I was wide awake. But then as soon as my head hit the pillow, I fell right to sleep. <laughs> you know me, my brain can turn off pretty quick. <laughs> that isn't something I would advertise. I'm gonna be watching the fight from the audience, so let me just tell you to be careful. <laughs> oh! And don't get yourself killed! That hurt! Hey, you know what, Kilua? No. What? I've got an idea of what we can do when we're done training. Huh? Never mind. I'll see you in the arena, okay? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. summons it from somewhere deep within. <sighs> Winner by points or KO. No time limit. One round match. I haven't forgotten what happened. Quite a surprise. Mwah. Consider them a gift. I know you'll return the favor someday. I don't want to owe you anything. Take this back. When you're capable of striking me in the face like that, I'll be happy to take my badge back. But until then, I'm just gonna let you hold on to it. I've trained as hard as I could, and now it's time to put myself to the test. This is it. My chance to return his favor. Begin! Point Hisoka. This is an amazing fight! So much is happening! I can't even describe it all! <laughs> well now, I suppose you may not have noticed, but I haven't even moved an inch from where I started. <gasps> Unbelievable! Just wait, I'm gonna show you! <gasps> Hisoka thinks he's in total control. In fact, he seems to be loving every minute of it. But it looks like Gon's having fun, too. I guess I shouldn't try to knock him out with every attack. Maybe if I start mixing it up a little bit, I'll catch him off guard. The difference in their abilities is obvious, but Gon's not letting fear get the best of him. He's holding his own, thinking, planning his attacks. 
He sure is an extraordinary kid. Hisoka has way more fighting experience than Gon. At this rate, Gon will be lucky if he even lands a single punch. The only thing he can do is take advantage of Hisoka's arrogance. He's so confident that he can beat Gon that he's been standing still the whole time. That's it, Gon. Use that against him. Here I come. I don't believe it! He's ripped up a floor tile! Critical hit! Two points! Go! Incredible! Gon has landed a critical hit on Isoka! Go now! He did it! Last one. week actually did it! Scores now! Go! Two! Isoka! One! Yeah! I did it! I hit Isoka! Hmm. All right! What's this? Hisoka has finally moved for the first time in this match. It even looks like he has a little smile on his face. Is the fight over, or is it just the beginning? Ah! Uh. Huh? Ah! Uh. Did you see it? Gon scored a critical hit. He's in the lead now. Yeah. But a crazy attack like that isn't going to work more than once. He's going to have to come up with something else. You're right about that. It isn't over yet. In fact, it's just begun. like Gon's last attack caused much damage to Hisoka, so I have to wonder if there's going to be a challenge to the referee's awarding of a critical hit. I don't think so. Why's that? Each referee has their own personal scoring style. Some place importance on the amount of damage dealt, while others like to reward strategy and technique. Oh, I had no idea. Attacking with the stone floor tile required a high level of technique, and that's why the referee awarded a critical hit. I get it now. Hey, who are you anyway? What's it to you? In your Nen training, how far did you get? Hmm? Uh, just the basics. Really? Hmm. You're an enhancer, aren't you? <gasps> how did you know that? <laughs> I didn't until just now. Oh. You're so naive. <clears throat> Come on, tell me, how did you know? It's simple. I've devised a method of profiling people by their aura. It's like using your blood type to tell what kind of a person you are. Profiling? By a person's aura? Master, have you ever heard of this? Yes. It's a proven fact that a person's Nen ability is directly related to their personality. Remember, Nen users are one of six types. Emitter, Enhancer, Transmuter, Manipulator, Conjurer, and Specialist. Let's take Gome, for instance. He was born with strong, flexible muscles, and he has exceptional vision and keen senses, all of which were developed by growing up in harmony with nature. The reason he could hone these talents so well probably has a lot to do with the fact that he's an enhancer. The primary characteristic of an enhancer is simple-mindedness. That's true. So true. By the way, I'm a transmuter. We're whimsical liars. That's true. That's true. That's true. 
Why doesn't he tell us what manipulators are like? You know, they say opposites attract. And you and I are as opposite as two people can get. Who knows? Maybe we'll be the best of friends one day. But until then, you should be very careful around me. Transmuters are whimsical liars, remember? And for us, what was once valuable can instantly turn to chaff. Hmm. So... Don't disappoint me, go. Bad. Critical hit, two points. The score is three, two. It looks like Hisoka's getting serious now. A string of consecutive attacks too fast to even see Heather and Hisoka a critical hit, and Gon seems powerless to stop them. Just like that, Hisoka's back in the lead. Hmm, you're an enhancer, all right. Your ten ability is actually quite good. You're still on your feet, even after the beating you just got. What's wrong? Why don't you come and attack me? I'm trying to think. <sighs> He's too fast. I can barely keep up with him. Right now, I'm nothing more than a punching bag. He looks faster now than he did against Castro. Yes, we're getting to see how quick Hisoka really is. But he still hasn't used his other power yet. Right. His special attack. Gong, Kilua, please listen carefully. This is a videotape of the fight between Hisoka and Castro. Every detail of their match has been recorded on it. Everything? So that must mean... The Nen user who recorded this happens to be a manipulator. That's why he could capture Hisoka's aura on tape. Hisoka's aura? Really? And how did you manage to get your hands on it? Challenging someone before discovering what they're capable of isn't very wise. It's important to understand your opponent's strengths and abilities. With in-depth research, you can strategize how best to approach the match and increase your chances of winning, particularly when the person you're about to fight is at the same level as a floor master. Now, use Gyo to discover Hisoka's Nen ability. Awesome! Did you see it? Yeah, I did. They were thin, like a bunch of threads. Fifteen of them. Yeah. They come from his left hand, but are connected to his arms, his cards, everything. That's exactly right. I wonder what kind of technique that is. The aura threads looked like they were stretching back and forth. Yeah, I know. I wonder if they work like a magnet, attracting each other, or if they're more like rubber bands. You're on the right track. Hisoka can transform his aura into a sticky elastic that he can attach to anything he wants. Yeah! That makes sense. That's how he could land a punch right on Castro's jaw. But how come Castro didn't know that Hisoka's aura was stuck to him during their match? That has something to do with Castro's unique fighting style. Kilua, hmm? did you figure out Castro's Nen ability? Yeah, he creates a double. That's right. He creates an actual duplicate of himself with the same strengths and abilities. That's how he got behind me without me noticing when I went to find him in his dressing room. Having seen his tiger bite fist, I'd say he's actually an enhancer, but he's obviously chosen doubling instead. Doubling is highly advanced. It belongs to the transmuter ability, but requires manipulation strengths as well. However, those two groups aren't compatible with enhancement. As a result, Castro has compromised his natural ability. Hisoka was using in to conceal his aura from Castro. Of course, a man of Castro's experience should have been able to use Gyo during the match. But Hisoka never gave him the chance. Hisoka used some bizarre techniques to distract Castro, on top of which he made everyone in the stadium believe that he wasn't taking the match seriously, which masked his real intentions. So you see, Castro stretched his abilities to the breaking point, while Hisoka used his to their full potential. 
which resulted in Castro paying the ultimate price, like so many of Hisoka's opponents. Not only is he powerful, but he's smart and talented as well. That, on top of his unpredictable use of Nen, makes him a most formidable opponent. Okay then, shall we watch it again? Osu! Yes, please! I've gotta try to avoid his aura. If he sticks it to me, I'll be in big trouble. I'll need to move fast and keep my distance to get as many points as I can. Well, have you decided what you're gonna do yet? I'm getting tired of standing around. If you won't come to me, I'll just have to bring you over myself. <laughs> Go! Use Gil! Too late for that. Uh, he's got me! <laughs> now then, what do you think is going to happen next? Have any idea, Go? No matter how hard you try, you can't escape me. Hisoka's decided to drop his in. There's no sense in concealing it anymore if he's going to use it. It proves to everyone here that he has absolute confidence in his Nen ability. What would you do if you were in this situation, Kilua? Well, there's no doubt. I'd rip that thing off before he beats me up. Here we go. Gold's making his move. Looks like he's preparing to attack. Now he's running again. His strategy must be to keep his opponent guessing. You can do it! How's Hisoka gonna respond to this? Oh! Whoa! Go jumps high into the air! He's being pulled in! Ooh. Wait, there's more! <laughs> A one two punch by Hisoka and Go is down! Critical hit! Two points and down! Hisoka! Six two! Backfired and he sustained a critical hit. Is Hisoka going to extend his winning streak even longer? Oh, go. Mm -hmm. On your feet. Now. Go looks injured. It could be serious. You have to wonder if he can keep going on like this. Can you continue? Mm. Of course! Yeah. Go's determined to continue! Alright, way to go! Oh boy, is he going to be the one who will break Hisoka's winning streak? One thing for sure, Go has won the hearts of this crowd! Look, this sure takes me back. It's just like what happened during the final exam. Everyone was on your side then too. You can see this, right? It's called bungee gum and I can stretch it or snap it back at will. And attach it or detach it too. Huh? Hey! You see, it didn't affect you that time. I have complete control over it and you. That's the power of my bungee gum. There's no way to escape it. Hisoka seems to have stopped fighting, and it appears as though he's explaining something to Go. Is this all part of some elaborate strategy? Actually, it has to do with the traumatic experience he had with chewing gum. What? When Hisoka was a boy, his favorite brand of gum was called bungee gum. Oh, but how is that traumatic? Well, you see, that type of gum is very sweet and fruity in the beginning, but it loses its flavor as you chew it. Isaka grew up in a poor family, so he couldn't exactly buy a new pack of bungee gum every day. So he was often stuck chewing the same old flavorless piece of gum for days on end. I'd like to apologize for that interruption. It had no place in a live broadcast. Now, let's get back to the action in the ring. Let me ask you one question, and if you get the answer right, I'll give you a free punch. You will? <sighs> At what point during the match did I attach my bungee gum to your cheek? Was it one, the elbow hit, two, during the clean hit, or three, during the critical hit? What's your answer? <sighs> Let's see. When was it? Hmm. It's three, when you hit me with both hands. Wrong. Huh? I'm sorry. The answer's four. I attached it while analyzing your personality. That's not fair! I told you, transmuters are whimsical liars. 
I guess I should have used Gyo from the beginning. I suppose you're probably thinking that if you've been using Gyo at the time, you might have been able to see my aura coming and avoided it. But what about all my other attacks? <gasps> Don't you get it? I can attach it whenever I want. I only hide the bungee gum when my opponents are being cautious. But if I'm punching them in the face, it doesn't really matter if they can see my aura or not. Yeah, there's no point in using Gyo to see Hisoka's hidden aura, not when I can't even stop him from hitting me. If he can attach it even when you're blocking his attacks, what are you supposed to do? By all indications, Gon is clearly at a disadvantage. But what's he going to do? How will he react to the situation? Now's the time to see what he's capable of. This is the moment of truth. Well, I guess I should stop chatting and get this over with. Hmm. If I can't get away, my only option is to attack! Oh, 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 oh. I'm scared, but if I back down now, I know I'll never be able to face another opponent ever again! Yes! Yes! Gon is going after Hisoka with all he's got! Hisoka doesn't seem to be able to defend himself! Yes! Gon! This is great! Those eyes! That spirit! I love it! I wish I could demolish you right now! Oh, oh. But not yet! I have to wait until the fruit is ripe! Until my prize is at its peak, I have to be patient! It'd be a waste to tear it down now! I must endure! 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 <laughs> One. I'm getting used to being yanked around. I'm not done yet. Critical hit. Gone. Critical and down. Isoka. Huh? But I got right back up. And I even blocked that last one. That last point brings the score up to 9-4. Hisoka needs one more to challenge a floor master. The crowd isn't pleased with the scoring. The referee seems biased against Gone. Fight! Only one more point. Any hit and I'm finished. You should pay more attention, Gon. Take a look to your right. Hmm? Ah! Oh, sorry, I meant my right. Down and hit! Match Hisoka! What? Final score, 11-4. Winner by TKO, Hisoka. The fight is over! Hisoka has won his tenth match! With this win, Hisoka can now challenge one of the mighty floor masters! Fight. I'm sure we haven't seen the last of him. That's it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And even after I warned you, what a shame. While you were busy complaining to the referee, I attached my bungee gum to that piece of stone. Then all I had to do was distract you and direct it right at your head. <sighs> you've actually improved a lot, Gon, but you've still got a long way to go. We might get a good contest if we fight, oh, ten more times. That is, if they all took place here in Heaven's Arena. But unfortunately, this is our last fight here. Huh? Next time we'll fight outside, where there are no rules. And it will be... to the death. <gasps> He's so far ahead of me. But I can get there too, someday. I'll learn more about Nen, and find an ability that will rival Hisoka's. I will beat him.
Let me guess. You've been waiting here for me. I'm delivering a message. Before, attendance wasn't mandatory, but now all members have to be in York New City by noon on August 30th. Can we expect to see the boss there? Most likely. This operation will be the biggest we've ever had. I should warn you. If you fail to show up again, the boss himself might be the one to reprimand you. Ooh, scary. Well, I'll tell them you got the message. The Phantom Troop. But I've got some new toys to play with. Maybe it's time I start hunting. <laughs> the decision was fair and I stand behind it. I felt it was in the best interest of both contestants to have a match that didn't run too long, even if that meant lowering the scoring criteria. This guy's obviously a technical judge. What do you mean? If they think the match is going to be extra violent, they award points fast to get it over with. Really? I'll have to remember that the next time I place a bet. Unfortunately, Hisoka hurried off before we could interview him, but it's a good thing we had the chance to hear You see it? Memory, yeah. That, that little rookie sure has come a long way since he first got here. He gave Hisoka a pretty good fight. You think so? From what I saw, he hasn't changed much. It seemed to me Hisoka wasn't all that into it. I mean, he hardly even tapped into his full Nen ability. You know how he is. He was just trying to put on a good show. That match shouldn't have lasted more than three seconds. I think the same thing. The only one of us who has actually fought against the kid is Guido. So I think he should know. Sadaso, please don't tell me you're scared of a little boy. <laughs> I'm just saying, be careful. That's how I've managed to survive as long as I have. It doesn't matter who my opponent is. Being careful is one thing, but you have to watch what you say or else people will think you're a coward. Don't forget that our goal is to become floor masters. Then all we'll have to do, besides living in the lap of luxury, is to give the occasional lecture on our fighting techniques. Or we could even start our own martial arts school if we feel like yeah. it. Yeah! We're almost there. Before you know it, we'll all be floor masters. Don't get soft now. And that's all I'm trying to say, that we only fight matches we know we can win using any means necessary, right? Any means necessary, yeah. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> this is Kilua's first match since arriving on the 200th floor. I can hardly wait to watch him in action. Who knows? Maybe this match will be as exciting as the last one. Here we go, folks. Ready, begin. of his spear by infusing it with Nen. Yes, Dorado possesses the Nen abilities of a transmuter and a conjurer. It's going to be hard for Kilua to get close enough to hit him. That's true. Kilua's in trouble here. What's he going to do? Huh. Whoa, what a move! Oh, man, a direct hit. It's OK. Kilua did the right thing by absorbing the attack. His ten is still strong. Dorado attacks, but Kilo is not even moving! What's he thinking? Here it comes! <laughs> Dorado's been KO'd. Matt Kilua. Uh, unbelievable! With what move Kilua takes the match? You need a stretcher. Actually, make that a body bag. 
going. He won. He actually won. It's amazing. He's got so much power. Both you guys are really strong. Well, I don't know about me, but Kilua sure is. I've never seen him lose. And now that he's mastered Nen, he's probably equal to the floor masters. You're a genius, Kilua. You were so great. It was no big deal. That last slashing chop attack was perfect. Even though I won in the end, the match was actually kind of disappointing. It was nothing compared to the fight between Gon and Hisoka. True. Gon's match was well fought and it left a lasting impression on everyone. Well, fighting against Hisoka made me realize that his incredible Nen abilities are only a small part of what makes him such a threat. A lot of it has to do with his crazy personality and unique fighting style. I still have to figure out which Nen ability goes with who I am, and it has to be something that no one else has but me. I have no idea what it might be, but still I went right ahead and challenged him to a fight anyway, which wasn't very smart. If Hisoka had fought as hard as he could, then I would have been... Huh? The fact that you learned something from all of this means that it was a worthwhile experience. Sometimes in life you learn a lot more by losing than you do by winning. Now Gon, I want you to forget about fighting and concentrate on recuperating for at least the next month. Instead of gaining experience in the ring, you can think of how you will develop your Nen ability. Mental conditioning is an integral part of your training. Awesome. Kilua, I think we need to discuss a few things. Why don't you join me for a walk? Uh, okay. Kilua, I was wondering if you would tell me... About the Nen I used at the end, right? To be honest, I didn't mean to do that. I see. The match today made me realize that I'm a lot different from Gon or Zushi. And from you too. It wasn't something that you taught me. It just happened. Maybe... Maybe this kind of training isn't meant for me. Shingen Ryu doesn't exclude people for who they are. You're not required to conform to our style, and there are no rules for how you apply it. You wanted to learn Nen to advance your training. When you asked me to teach you, I agreed to do so. And as long as you're still willing to learn, I'm willing to teach you. I would like to ask you for one thing in return. Discover your own path and live your life the way you want it to be lived. Don't try to be anything but yourself. Otherwise, it's no better than if you'd followed in your older brother's footsteps, and doing that would only limit your potential. Your life is what you make of it. Wing, just wait! I'm still not sure if this is the right place for me to be or not. But what I do know is that I really like training and learning about all this new stuff with Gon and Sushi. So if it's all right with you, I'm gonna stick around a little while longer. Okay. You're still aiming for the top floor, aren't you, Zushi? Also, at the rate you're going, it'll take you forever to get there. I don't care how long it takes, as long as my master believes in me. And hanging out with you guys makes me believe I can do anything I set my mind to. Yeah, sure. Instead of talking about it, let's go to my room and practice. Osu! Hmm. Kilua. Zushi. Osu. We've got company. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you guys anyway? You're really starting to get on my nerves. Oh, don't be like that. Just tell us when you guys want to fight, because we were hoping we could lock down some dates. Who are they? They're all fighters from the 200th floor, just like me and Kilua. But didn't you already have a match against the guy in the middle? Their whole strategy is to go after rookies. That's why they want to fight us. They think we'll be easy to beat. We're getting kind of tired of waiting for you. Our application deadline is coming up soon, you know. Could it be that you're scared of us? Or maybe you just need some extra incentive? <laughs> My teacher told me I should rest for a while and not do any fighting, and so... Who cares? My application deadline is June 15th. Why don't we fight then? Loser, we don't care about your deadlines. Come on, let's go. Hey, Gone, 
I am going to fight you. Wait and see. I think I'm getting used to doing this. Yeah, our timing for switching from Ren to Ten and Zetsu could still use a little work, though. A little work? These guys really are geniuses! It took me weeks and weeks to learn the timing for those changes! Yeah, and looking at Zushi's aura makes me think we still need to increase our power, too. Well, then maybe we should focus on that for a while. No way! That's enough training for one day! You both just had matches, and resting properly is part of your training, too, you know? Yeah, but we're not tired yet. Forget it! I can't let them know how tired I am. They've already beaten me at everything else. Guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, have a good night. Awesome. Here we go. <gasps> what? My feet. I can't move. I can't talk. Can't even breathe. What's happening? <clears throat> what do you think you're <gasps> doing? You guys are pathetic. You didn't have to resort to this. I'm more than willing to fight you. What was your deadline again? Okay, how about this? I'll even let you beat me. I haven't lost yet, so I could lose once to each of you. That what you want? Oh? Uh -huh. Gone was told to take a break for the next month by Wing, so he won't be registering for any new matches without his go-ahead. He already broke his promise to Wing once, and if he does it again, he may not be able to continue his training. But even if Wing agrees to let him fight, I wouldn't let him do it. So if you want a match with Gone, you're going to have to wait at least a month. After that, I'm sure he'd have no problem fighting you. <laughs> okay. Then why don't we make it official by going to the registration desk right now? Once we've signed up, you can have your little friend back. Yeah, all right, fine by me. But this is the first and last time we cut a deal. June the 15th, right? This okay? Yeah, you can take him back now. <sighs> Just remember, there are no more deals. If you mess with us and break this deal, then I'll... well, you'll see. What? You're not gonna tell us? Hello, Gum. Take a look outside your door. There's something I think you need to see. Come on, what'll happen if we break the deal? There's no point in telling you now. Just don't do it, that's all. Not a word of this to anyone. Just do what I say, and by tomorrow the three of you will be training together again. Do you understand? Zushi. Ugh, I didn't know it was going to be so hard to stop myself from killing people. Being normal sure isn't easy. What the? Did he leave already? Who needs tickets? We've got him right here! You don't want to miss this one! It's Gon versus Sadaso! Hey, I'll take one! Yeah, me too! Hey, give me one of those! No problem! Here you go! What can you tell me about Sadaso? He's got this creepy face, it's like he's wearing a mask! And he also calls himself a rookie hunter. <laughs> Damn that guy! Huh? What's wrong? It's Kiyuma. Huh? He's a fighter from the 200th floor. Right, I know him. He was supposed to fight Sadaso before Gon. What's his problem? Asking you for information on a fighter that he's supposed to be up against? Something tells me that kid's not gonna be doing any victory laps anytime soon. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I bet 50,000 he wins his match. Good morning. I heard that you helped Zushi out last night. It was nothing. How are you doing anyway? Is everything okay? I'm feeling just fine, thanks. I guess I was even more tired than I thought. You were the one who found him, right, Kilua? Yeah. Just after you guys left my room yesterday, I got a weird phone call. 
Someone told me that my friend was asleep on the sidewalk in front of the building, so I went out to see if it was true. That's when I found you and brought you back here. I'm sorry you had to do that. It won't happen again. Oh, Thank you both. I'm happy that Zushi has good friends like you two. I know you've been looking out for him since you met, and I really appreciate that. It means a lot. Well, it's our fault he was up so late training. It was the least I could do. What are all of you worried about? Why does everyone always treat me like a little kid? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Anyway, Master Wing... You've registered for your next match, huh? Gon was just asking me for permission to do the same. What date's yours? It's on June the 15th. That's my birthday. Fine by me. But until then, I want you to rest up and heal as much as possible so you'll be in peak physical condition for the match. Kilua? Mm hmm? Those guys used Zushi to blackmail you, didn't they? That makes me so mad. Yeah. If Wing hadn't given us permission to fight, then what would we have done? That was never gonna happen because he knows all about it. Huh? He does? Yeah. Really? Well, I don't want to lose on purpose, but I guess I can do it. <laughs> I can't. But if we don't, they're gonna go after Zushi again, and this time they might hurt him. Don't worry. Huh? Don't worry about a thing. Time to get to it. The match we're featuring today is between Kilua and Sadaso. Kilua won his first fight on the 200th floor five days ago. Meanwhile, Sadaso has a record of five wins and no losses. Even though Kilua's a rookie, he's already proven himself here at Heaven's Arena. However, Sadaso has a reputation for preying upon rookies just like him. <laughs> With Kilua and Gon lined up, I'll have my sixth and seventh victories in the bag. After this, all I have to do is beat three more chump rookies. <laughs> it's gonna be so great. As soon as I become a floor master, I'll be set for the rest of my life. <laughs> Don't move. If you do, I'll kill you. Use Nen and I'll kill you. Make a sound and I'll kill you. If you understand, close your eyes. Let me demonstrate what'll happen if you break the deal we made. <coughs> okay, slowly open your eyes. Look at me in the mirror. Listen carefully. You will never show your ugly face around here again. That's a promise. The match was supposed to have started already, but Kilua's opponent hasn't shown up yet. Mm. I've just received a note here. Apparently Sadaso isn't in his dressing room. Also, it appears as though his private residence has been cleared out, and his luggage and personal belongings are all gone. So I guess that means... Time violation! According to regulations, Sadaso has forfeit the match. The winner is Killua! Forfeit?! What an astonishing turn of events! Killua gets a second victory without even fighting! A forfeit? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Still a victory, just using a different strategy. Winning without fighting. Way to go, Kila! Yeah, all right! After his victory was announced, Kilua took off his cap and tossed it high into the air! Sadaso, what's going on? His eyes, they were cold and lifeless. When he looked at me, it was as if he was holding my life in his hands. I was his prey. You can't imagine what it felt like. I don't have a death wish, so I'm getting out of here. The three of us have only known each other a short time, but you always looked out for me, so I'll give you a piece of advice. Be careful. He's coming for you next. See ya. Now what? We do what we have to. We beat the kid and it doesn't matter how. 
We knew there were gonna be risks, but that's never stopped us. We're so close. Just a little bit more. Then we'll be floor masters and have everything we've wanted. But it takes a lot to scare Sadaso like that. Yeah, but he threatened Sadaso, not me. I bet he's scared of how strong I am. Wrong. Huh? It doesn't really matter to me how strong you guys are. I just thought that I would warn each of you when it was convenient. It could happen anytime, anywhere. Maybe it'll be when you're fast asleep, or when you're eating dinner, or even while you're sitting on the toilet. So just remember, don't break our deal. If you do, I'll pay you another visit, and next time it won't be so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like I was saying before. We'll beat him fair and square. Hey, Kilua! Hmm? Way to go! Hmm. Let's go celebrate my second win, your treat. Okay, let's go for ramen then. Are you kidding me? Okay, now that your next match is coming up, I would like to see how far you've advanced with your Hatsu. Sure, I'll go first. Very good. Now, your turn, Kilua. Yeah, sure. That's it. It's sweet! It's really sweet! Yeah, it almost tastes like honey. That was perfect, Kilua! I guess that means that you're ready, huh? Gon, Kilua, I'd say the two of you are now more than ready for your upcoming matches. Awesome! Gon, you faced your opponent once before, so you already know what to expect. Have you thought about what strategy you will use? Uh-huh. This time around, I'm thinking of using that. His fishing rod? After your matches are over, I'd like to discuss them with you, so please meet me back here, okay? All right then, best of luck. Awesome! In our next feature match, there's a score to be settled. It's between Goan, who recently gave the dreaded Hisoka a run for his money, and Nido, who sent Goan to the hospital after winning their first showdown. It's grudge match time! We're all anxious to see how Goan's gonna fight this one! He actually brought a fishing rod with him. Maybe he thinks it'll be effective against Gido's battle waltz. Last time, Gon gave us quite a show as he dodged Gido's blood tops. Does he have something special planned for us again today? We'll soon find out! Wouldn't it be better to watch this in the arena? Watching it on TV is fine. Get ready, oh. the match is about to start! Winner by points or KO, no time limit, one round match. Begin! Right off the bat, Gon takes off in a bad dash! Whoa, looks like Gido's ready for him! He counters with his signature technique, the Tornado Top. If Go charges, he'll only get knocked out of the ring like he did in their last fight. He's way ahead of me. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. It's virtually impossible to stop me once I start spinning. Naturally, everyone tries to attack me first. Uh, what's wrong? If you're just going to stand there doing nothing, I guess I might as well attack. Shotgun move! He can fire off the tops while spinning. Unlike Battle Balls, all the tops are aimed directly at you! <laughs> You'll never dodge them all! <gasps> what? <gasps> Whoa! He blocked out the top's head on! After which 
witnessing his magic and Sisuka and what we've just seen, I'd say Gon's come a long way. Wow, Gon is amazing. His Nen defenses have improved since our last fight. My tops aren't going to be enough to beat him this time. I'll have to think of something else. It would have been possible for Gon to swat all those tops down with his fishing rod. But what he did instead was a greater psychological blow to Guido. Hmm. He must be furious that they use Zushi to blackmail us. You had your turn. Now I'll have mine. Looks like Gon's ready to attack, but how's he gonna do it? So the kid wants to use a fishing rod against me? That can only mean one thing. He's gonna try and stop me from spinning by hooking onto my clothes. As if I'd ever let that happen. There it goes! He cast the fishing line straight at Guido! Nice try, kid! Ah, uh, too bad! You can't snag me with a little fishing lure! Not when I'm spinning this fast protected by my aura! Okay then, maybe this'll work. No way! This is incredible! He flipped the stone tile over and Kido along with it! Uh, 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 no, wait! Wait! Please! No! I I'm begging you, let's stop! If you're willing to do anything to win, then so am I. And if you ever lay a finger on Zushi again, I'll punch you so hard your head will spin! Okay. The winner of the match is gone! He did it! He actually oh, did it! First victory on the 200th floor! And what a victory it was! All right, it's my turn. Okay, on to the next match. <laughs> broadcast it live to you as it happens, and I'll be the one covering all the action. It's set to start in 10 minutes. All right, we're just moments away. The atmosphere is charged with anticipation. What kind of spectacle will we get to see? Remember, you're the one who decided to break our deal, so I'm not letting you win. So he makes his living in the underworld. I don't care if he is an assassin. The Heavens Arena is my stomping ground. I'll show him who rules the ranks of this squared circle. Ready? Begin! He's gone! Behind me. For a boost! Whoa! Riles up the by putting it into high gear! That was too close. Hmm. I didn't time my jump right. Wasting all his aura just to whip around on a scooter. Huh. I guess it's not a toilet on wheels after all. <laughs> Two-headed snake twin serpents! Huh? What's up with those things? You're the 
first opponent who's ever caught onto my whips. Lots of people have tried to grab them before. They all must have thought they were invincible. But boy, were they wrong. Dead wrong! I knew you tried to do the same thing as them, which is why I boosted the electrical current up to one million volts! Even a giant would collapse in an instant from all this raw power. No one can withstand it. My thunder serpents are too much for you stupid fools! Ah! <gasps> Electrocution won't work on you. I've gone through enough training to withstand torture. But all that really means is that I've gotten used to handling pain. I can still feel how much it hurts. And that doesn't make me happy. If you fall from that height, you're as good as dead. What do you want me to do? You've got to catch me. Please, you have to! Okay, I'll catch you. No problem. <laughs> A great catch by Kila! And the two Thunder Serpents fight back! Loser, now you know how much those things hurt. Rylevelt has lost consciousness and cannot continue the match. The winner by knockout is Kilua. It's all over! Kilua has done it! He appears falling even after receiving a million volts of electricity! Kilua is so incredible! He's like no one else! A million volts won't even stop him! Nice job, Kilua. You too. Let's get something to eat before our next match. Guido, you lost too? Ugh. You're up next, Go. You know, you're not going to beat Rylevelt the same way I just did. Because if you grab onto one of those electrified whips, even for just a second, you'd be knocked out cold. What are you going to do? It's okay, because I've got a plan. So you weren't watching for nothing. The battlefield is your classroom. How are you going to beat the guy that has all those spinning tops? How am I going to beat him? After his fight against you, he's got nothing left. He's not gonna fight me. Your attention, please, for an announcement. The first match of this afternoon, Kilua versus Guido, has been canceled. Guido has forfeit the match to Kilua. Told ya. Right. This is a critical match for Ryobelt. After losing to Kilua, his record now stands at five wins and three losses. He can't afford to lose this one. He already has his whips drawn and ready. Gon, on the other hand, hasn't brought any weapons at all. Winner by points or KO. No time limit. Begin! Well, that leads off with the signature song of defense. Looks like he wants to end this match as quickly as possible. What's this? Going to bend it down. Oh, wow! He ripped up the stone tile with his bare hands. He's thrown it. Quick, won't stop this one. Orbus! power button. Let's see. Turn the power up to the maximum of one million volts and switch them on! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Rylevelt has fainted. Winner by knockout, go! This is Rylevelt's fourth loss. He's been relegated. His fighting registration will be revoked immediately. Good riddance to Rylevelt and best of luck to go. Keep up the good work! You both did very well today. You've demonstrated a thorough knowledge of the four basic elements of Nen, and I have nothing more to teach you. All you have to do now is build on the skills you've learned, and through hard work and creativity, you'll discover more about your Nen abilities. Everyone's unique, so develop these abilities in ways that express your own individuality. Think about your hopes and your dreams, your joys and your sorrows, what you love and what you hate, what you want, where you'll go and who you'll meet. Don't take any of these experiences lightly, because not only will they shape your future, they will also direct you to the Nen type that's best suited to your personal nature. Make it a part of who you are. If you can manage that, then you'll be heading in the right direction, and I'm confident there will be no stopping either one of you. Now go. You have passed the Secret Hunter exam. Congratulations. Hmm? Secret? The Hunter exam that the general public knows about is just the beginning. Learning to master Nen is considered the secret exam, and only those few who have passed both exams can be called true hunters. You see, Nen happens to be a fundamental requirement, and as a professional hunter, it is essential to have a full understanding of it. 
The primary job of a hunter is to capture the most dangerous criminals, poachers, and thieves in the world. And in order to do that, you have to have exceptional powers. But if Nen is used for evil, it can become a destructive force. Revealing it to the public is too great a risk, so it isn't part of the main hunter exam. Only those who pass that part of the exam can take the secret test. But there are those few who become aware of the existence of Nen and acquire it without ever taking the secret test. Like Hisoka and my brother. So, Master Wing, does this mean you were going to teach us Nen right from the very beginning? And you acted like it was a big deal. What a joke. But how did you know we would be coming here in the first place? Are you a stalker? There is no predetermined path for the secret exam. Anyone with a hunter license will be exposed to the existence of Nen whether they're looking for it or not. It just so happens that the two of you met me by coming here to Heaven's Arena. Really? Both of you know I've been teaching you in the ways of Shingen Ryu, but did you know the Grand Master of that school is Chairman Netero? He told me about you before we even met. Kilua? Please retake the hunter exam. I am certain that you can pass it. You are more than eligible for a license right now, but I guarantee if you do become a hunter, you'll find there are many different roads available for you to take. Yeah, maybe someday. Hey, Master Wing, do you know how the others are doing right now? Yes. Hanzo and Karapika have managed to learn Nen already while studying under different masters. Really? Leorio is planning to start his training after he takes the entrance exam for medical school. And last I heard, Pockel was having a difficult time mastering Ren. Everyone's been working hard, huh? Guess so. Listen to me, both of you. Remember this. There's still more for you to do. Your potential has no limits. It's very important that you try to expand your potential as much as you can. That is the goal of your training now. Stay focused and pour your heart into everything that you do. Also, the last thing that I can teach you is to make sure you enjoy your lives to the fullest and balance your training with having fun. So congratulations. The two of you have graduated today. <sighs> Over the past four months, you've both been very attentive students. You've listened to my instructions and were never afraid to face your fears in order to increase your strengths and abilities. Nen training is above all else a struggle within ourselves. All I've really done is guide you. I must say, the two of you were exceptional students, and you never bragged about the natural talent you have. It's been an honor teaching you. Well, all right, take care of yourselves. I hope we meet again one day. Awesome! 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 Hey, Sushi! See you around, okay? Sushi? I want you to continue training for another four weeks. Us! Don't be discouraged, okay? Just believe in yourself. Your training is progressing better than expected, and your talent is that of one in a hundred thousand. Awesome! But the talent those two boys possess is more like one out of every ten million people. Awesome! Is he trying to make me feel better? But I just know that someday I'm going to catch up to them. That's the spirit. Now you're sounding like my favorite student. Awesome! Well, we've learned Nen, you paid back Hisoka, and we've earned a ton of money. There's no point in sticking around. <laughs> Guess not. We've got about a month and a half before September 1st. What do you want to do until then? Kilua. Hmm? I thought maybe... Huh? You want to come home with me? Your home on Whale Island? Mm-hmm. My house isn't nearly as big as yours, and we're kind of poor, but... That's a great idea. I'll go to your house, and I also want to meet your Aunt Mito. Let's do it! Really? Yeah, why not? Well, now that we know where we're going, there's no point in waiting. Let's go right away. Wow. I haven't been home in over half a year. Hey, what are you doing? I'll leave without you. You actually know where Whale Island is? No, of course not. Thanks for everything. Later. Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> this elevator going down. We're leaving today and I just wanted to thank you for all your help. It was nice meeting you. If we get short on money, we might be back. 
I hope you'll still be here working those buttons. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe by then you'll have become floor master of the 200th floor. Kilua. <laughs> Your name in the ring could be Redhead Yeti or Gorilla Girl. Kilua. Yeah, I guess she's way too old to be called a girl. <laughs> Did you forget what happened last time? Don't worry about it. We've become Nen users since then, and now that we have Ten, we don't have to be scared of her, no matter how mad she gets. Besides, isn't it our responsibility to tame a wild and violent gorilla like her? Did you hear that? She's a Nen user? She can't! Elevator girl's atomic bomb attack! It's been a pleasure serving you. Hmm. I think she's stronger than Husoka. How come I got hit? Well, that's it. Goodbye, Heaven's Arena. I need more strength. Enough strength to capture the demons who bring suffering to this world, and lock their souls in hell. Chains? Honestly, I don't really care about your lack of experience. Some of my clients are even willing to hire beginners. But you're not even a beginner yet. I can tell just by looking at you. What do you mean? Well, what do you see? Right beside me. Can't see it, can you? Come back when you can see what I'm talking about. That's our minimum hiring standard here. Back then I was a beginner, like a traveler who had just received his passport, but didn't know how to buy a ticket to where he was going. But there was a reason for that. I hadn't yet discovered the unseen secret of this world. I hadn't yet discovered Ned. Hmm. Looks as though you're a conjurer. You have the ability to materialize an object out of your aura. A conjurer? What's wrong? You seem disappointed. I was hoping that I was an enhancer. Unfortunately, you can't choose what men type you are. No, it's something you're born with. What you're going to have to do is embrace your true nature and develop your abilities through more training. All right. Spend the next month working on your hot suit. Very good. I'm impressed with what you've been able to accomplish in only one month. It's obvious you're talented, and your abilities as a conjurer have almost reached their maximum level. It's only a matter of time. I don't think there's anything more that I can teach you. Kurapika, the Secret Hunter exam is now over. Secret Hunter exam? Yes. To be a true hunter, you have to first master a Nen ability. You've done that now, so you've passed. Now you can go anywhere. No, not yet. Having the strength of a hunter isn't good enough. I need the strength to fight on my own. You want more strength? Yes, I want to become stronger. And the only way I can do that is by you teaching me how to master enhancer abilities. Impossible. It'll never happen. You can't become an enhancer.
Let's say you have the aptitude to achieve 100% mastery of your conjuration abilities. The maximum level of mastery you could achieve for other abilities looks like this. You can't fully master other abilities no matter how much you study them. The further it is from your own type, the less you acquire. Why is Specialist 0%? Specialists are different from the others. It isn't something you can learn, even if you try your hardest. The trait is usually inherited. Growing up under special circumstances can have an effect on it as well. It's placed here because it's more likely for conjurers and manipulators to become specialists later in life. So you still have a chance, in a way. Earlier, you told me that you wanted the strength to fight all by yourself. If that happens to be your one and only purpose, then you're correct in thinking that mastering enhancer abilities should be your highest priority. They are the most efficient at reinforcing offense, defense, and healing. But as a conjurer, you'll only be able to master half the enhancement abilities at half their potency. That's just how it is. There are no exceptions. For example, say you were in a battle, and both you and your enemy's physical strengths have a value of 100. The enemy is an enhancer with 100% mastery. And he reinforces his fist with 100% of his nen, and punches you with everything he's got. I'll write down the equation. There. Now with your nen abilities, you can only reinforce the body with 60% efficiency. As a result, you get damage worth 40%, even if you block the attack. So if you get in a fist fight with a master enhancer, you won't stand much of a chance. Of course, this is overly simplified. Nobody's exactly equal in strength. How you feel that day will affect you, as well as where you're fighting and the circumstances. Nen is even more complex. Joy, sadness, fear, hatred, carelessness, devotion, excitement, doubt, pleasure, shame, determination. All the emotions you have factor into Nen. It might enable something beyond 100%. But there really isn't much of an advantage to this, especially during combat. Using powers beyond your normal capacity will cause incredible stress to your body. It will make you weaker. In fact, it might even kill you. You need consistent power. That's how you'll come out on top. So that means maintaining consistent power as a conjurer could be enough to defeat an opponent who has mastered the enhancing ability to its maximum level. Question. Is it possible to conjure a sword that can cut through any material? No. Do you know why that is? Because it's beyond human capacity to do so. Mm-hmm. Even if you had your conjuration ability at a full 100%, there are still things you cannot create. You can easily conjure a sword with a durable, sharp blade, but you might as well buy yourself one and not waste your energy. It's pointless to conjure an object that already exists, but you can't conjure something overly supernatural either. Trying to strike the right balance is what makes combat so difficult for conjurers. But on the other hand, at the right moment, it can produce an incredible amount of power. So the correct answer is both yes as well as no. I suggest you give it some careful consideration and decide what's best for you. Karapika, what object are you going to conjure? Hmm? Excuse me. Sorry to disturb you. Thank you for that. Don't mention it. Where are you headed tonight? Sorry, do you mind if I don't answer that? Not at all, but they say no journey is too far when you share it with a companion. And here we are, sharing the same compartment. Do you think it's fate that our paths have crossed? No. I don't need companions right now. What I need is to focus on developing the power to reach my goal. Nothing else. A chain? Yes. A chain. It was the first thing that came to mind after I found out that I was a conjurer. That's interesting. 
I wonder why that happened. I'm sure it's because of my enemies. They're roaming free in this world, but instead they should be chained up in the depths of hell. Really? It seems to me, the one who's bound up in chains is standing right here in front of me. You don't know what you're talking about. <coughs> hey, wait a minute. Don't turn your back on me. Show a little respect. I'm the master here. Kurapika! No one understands. How could they? I'm talking to you. That's why I have to do this alone. May I see your tickets, please? Of course. Come in. Thank you. I believe that as a hunter, I'm able to use my license card as a form of identification. Isn't that right? Uh, yes. May I? It's authentic. Thank you very much, sir. Sorry to have bothered you. Enjoy the rest of your journey. You're seeking revenge, aren't you? Hmm. You're thinking, how did he know that? Well, it's obvious. I'm not your master for nothing, you know. It's not worth it. Revenge won't get you anywhere. Listen, right now, you're a butterfly that's only getting tangled up even more by struggling in the spider web of vengeance. sad tune. It's the tune that your chain makes. It conceals strong feelings, almost pulling you down. I apologize. I hear things most people don't. It can be useful, but not everyone appreciates it. Conjuring ability is not as simple as learning a magic trick. Only through the power of your thoughts can you concentrate the energy of your aura into a single space. It's a physical process. You have to remember that all physical objects are comprised of energy on a subatomic level. Energy can be converted into matter. When a near infinite amount of it forms together, it stabilizes and becomes an object. To make that happen with the power of your thoughts, you have to possess almost supernatural concentration. Also, it is extremely difficult to conjure anything that is a type of complex material such as steel. But I have a feeling you're not going to let that stop you, right? Well, keep working on it. I'll be around if you need me for anything. As your master, it is my duty. It's starting to rain. Rainfall at night has a melancholy feeling. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm glad to see you're back up on your feet again. I know sometimes you have to take risks, but you should know your own limitations. Push yourself too far and you won't last long enough to get that revenge. You wouldn't understand. Let me guess. You decided to become a blacklist hunter in order to avenge your people. At least that's what I heard from the Hunter Association. So I suppose it's the mission of the sole survivor, huh? Well, even I know there are things that can't be explained by rational thinking. <sighs> Nobody can create an unbreakable chain. But there is a way you can create one that's very close to it. Really? There is? Tell me, Master, what do I have to do? Oh, sure. He only calls me Master when he needs my help. Master? Yeah, all right. Now, listen carefully. Make a contract with self-imposed limitations. Decide on a condition and swear you'll abide by it. The stricter the limitation, the more power your ability will gain. This is one of the basic principles of Nen. The strength of your resolve will be increased by how difficult the limitations set against you are. You understand what I mean by that, right? It's like getting a boost of adrenaline when you're trying to escape a fire, or when a mouse suddenly attacks after it's been cornered by a cat. Make a condition for your chain. Something you can keep. But first, I have to warn you that this method has its own dangers. It's like a double-edged sword. You shouldn't rush into it, because if you break your contract, you risk obliterating your Nen abilities entirely. for you. They must have been hired to steal your hunter license card. There are six of them. Their heartbeats are calm and steady, which would mean that they're experienced at this. So there are six of them. Thanks. I appreciate your help. I couldn't tell the exact number. Don't worry. You'll be all right. This will only take a second. My goal is to reclaim the eyes of my people and capture the spiders. I want chains that will hold a spider and never allow it to escape. I only need to use it on the spiders. So you won't use it on anyone but your target. That's a bit weak. Don't get ahead of me. That's only the beginning. Okay, then what else have you got? Only this. My life! <laughs> well, you were right, huh? They moved methodically and knew how to fight in close quarters. They were experienced. Thanks to you, I was able to scare them off with minimal threat to the train or its passengers. You're very welcome. You passed, huh? That's really good. To be able to master Nen in only half a year is no small feat. You remember me? Of course I do. I don't get many visitors. I've only had one other person come by since you were here last. This agency isn't exactly the easiest place to find. So, what kind of employer are you looking for? I'd like to work for someone who's directly involved with the auction that will be taking place in York New City. It doesn't matter what the job entails. Well, you know, a high-profile client like that usually has extremely high standards. I can't imagine they'd want someone who has no experience. Okay, here we go. Three people who match your criteria will interview anyone without experience. Not only that, all three of them are looking to hire bodyguards. So, who will it be? Here you are. Thanks a lot. <sighs> I must say that trip was more eventful than I expected thanks to you. 
I guess it's true. A journey is better when shared with others. A journey shared with others. Well, I should be going. I have a feeling we'll meet again someday. The song on the wind tells me so. I have to keep on fighting. I can't rely on anyone else to help me. I have to do this by myself. It's the only way. There is no fire in you, only darkness. Think about your hopes and your dreams, your joys and your sorrows, what you love and what you hate, what you want, where you'll go and who you'll meet. Don't take any of these experiences lightly, because not only will they shape your future, they will also direct you to the Nen type that's best suited to your personal nature. Hey kid, time to get ready. Oh. We almost there? Yeah, why don't you come up here and take a look? Sure. Wow, so that's it. Huh? Where's Go? Where he always is. Right, thanks. You look happy. There it is! Whale Island, straight ahead! You can tell, right? Well, yeah. It looks like it's about half the size of my family's estate, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but your place is way too big anyway. I guess. <laughs> hey, you guys! Hmm? That sail needs to be lowered. Wanna do it? Okay. okay. You ready? Yep. Let's go! Wow, it's been such a long time since I stood on my home ground. Huh? Ah, the air smells good. Huh? <sighs> <sighs> hey guys, take care of yourselves. Thanks for everything, Captain! Yeah, thanks! It's been fun sailing with you! Okay, let's go. Where do we get your ride around here? Hmm? You know, the bus. We gotta take one to your house, right? Well, there aren't any buses that go to my house. Then exactly how are we supposed to get there? With these. What? Whale Island isn't a tourist spot like Kukuru Mountain is. We'll have to walk home along the river. Are you serious? We have to walk all the way there? Yeah, and if we start now, we should get there just before lunchtime tomorrow. Ah, uh, tomorrow? What are we gonna eat till then? Mm -hmm. What, uh, just this? We're gonna starve. Hey, wait up. You're not supposed to take off without your guests. Funny, huh? That big old tree is growing right out of it. <laughs> but I guess it doesn't look like all that much compared to your house, does it? <laughs> <sighs> what a weird place to live. Uh... 
This is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's so good to have you back. You must have grown a foot since we last saw you. <laughs> Something like that. We haven't heard from you since your letter telling us you passed the exam. We were starting to get worried, you know. Sorry. Guess I forgot. What? How could you forget to write us a letter? Come on. Huh? Uh, uh... Is this a friend of yours? Hmm? Yeah. We met during the hunter exam. His name's Kilua. Uh, hello. All oh, right. The one you wrote about in your letter. Well, hello there. It's nice of you to travel here all this way. Gon, this is the first time you've ever brought a friend home to visit. Kilua, right? I'm Gon's Aunt Mito. I hope you'll feel right at home here. <laughs> I really wish you would have let me know beforehand that you were coming home. I could have prepared something. Whatever you've got is fine. Well, you know, it's not every day we have guests in the house. No, really, it's fine. Now that you mention it, we are kind of hungry. We've been walking since last night. So, yeah. Well, I guess that explains why you're so dirty. Mm -hmm. Why don't you two go and take a bath while I make you something to eat? What, right now? Of course. Just leave me your clothes, okay? I'll wash them later. You'd better get going now. Uh, I've never had a bath before lunch. And aren't we going to be going into the forest later? Mm-hmm. Stop dawdling. You've got ten seconds. Mm -hmm. Let's One. go, Kilua. Uh, okay. Two. Three. Is your Aunt Mito always like this? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wow. What a cool tub. Uh, yeah. You like it? Totally. Yeah. Ah, just what I needed. You sound like an old man. Huh? What? That was something Leorio would say. I told you Aunt Mito's cooking was the best in the whole world. <laughs> you two boys eat as much as you like. There's plenty more. Here, try these. Ah, thank you. <gasps> Ugh, red pepper! Okay, that's a no. Kilua, uh. you really shouldn't pick at your food like that. Don't you know that red peppers are good for you? You should at least try it. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a big fan of these. Sorry. Oh, good. At least you're not allergic to them. Uh, they are delicious. Go ahead, take a bite. You'll see what I mean. She's right, Kilua. What's the worst that could happen? Uh. It was even harder than I expected. When I got to the exam site, there were just over 400 people there. But in the end, only seven of us passed the final. Hmm. I don't know. I thought the whole thing was kind of boring. Hold on. You have to see this. Hmm? So what do you think? It's my very own hunter license. Oh. Hmm. Doesn't look like much. Hmm. Ha! Ah! You trying to break it or something? <laughs> I was only joking, as if I would ever do something like that. <laughs> Be careful, boys. She was totally gonna break it. Mm hmm I met Kite here. Oh, yeah. He's the hunter who told you about your dad. You met Konta here too, right? Yeah, but I don't think we're gonna get a chance to see him. Huh? Well, female fox bears hate the smell of humans, so if Konta has any contact with me, then his mate would recognize my scent, and he'd get in trouble. Besides, if the ruler of the forest was seen hanging around with us, he'd lose the respect of all the other animals, and his leadership would be challenged. Hmm. Me and Konta used to swim here all the time. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. You got a welcome back present!
Hey, take it easy with that stuff. Sorry, sir. Snake Beach Forest. I can hardly wait. Hm. This one? Yeah. Uh, uh. Once you've got that cable hooked up, we should be able to access the internet. Right. Gone! Hmm? Yeah, what? I'm going out for a little while. Could you watch the place? Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. See, See you, you later! later. <laughs> huh? Well, this isn't so bad. A grocery store and a bar. Huh? That must be Gon's dad. Wonder if he's ever gonna find him. Sleep on the job. Come on, hold still. Uh, Gone. Are you getting your hair cut? Yeah, it was getting kind of long. Huh. There, all done. Okay, now how about you? Do you want a haircut? Looks like you could use a trim. Uh. Did you know that your hair is really nice and soft? Really? I had no idea. It sure is. Unlike Gones, which is thick and wiry and hard to cut. Hmm. This is nice. We're off to the forest. See ya! Oh, you want me to pack you a lunch? Nah, it's alright. We'll find something to eat. Hey, Gone. Hmm? What do you plan on doing next? Hmm. I was thinking of staying here until the end of August so I can try to find out about my dad. And then in September, I'll go to York New City and start looking for him. Oh, really? I wonder what I should do. Uh, if you stayed here, we could go to York New City together. Yeah, but that's not what I was talking about. What I meant was, what should I do with my life? Hmm? I still haven't thought of anything that I really want to do, you know? There are lots of things I know I don't want to do, like live in that big house up on the mountain and taking over the family business. That's why I kind of envy you, Gon. You know what you want to do, and I don't. Kilua, hmm? I like hanging out with you. Hey, would you cut it out? Whale Island is an outpost for fishermen far from their mainland homes. Not many people live here year-round, and the only other kid was a girl called Noko. I've always been homeschooled, you're the first friend I've had who's around my age. It's kind of the same for me. I did get to leave my estate lots of times, but it was always because I was being sent off to get more training on how to be a better assassin. I feel like I never really got to be a kid. You're my first friend, ever. Do you like hanging out with me, Kilua? Yeah, sure, I guess. Okay, then let's just stay together. We could go and see the world. It'll be one big adventure. I'll search for my dad, and you can look for what you want to do. It'll be fun! You know what? That does sound good. Doesn't it? All right, I'll go with you while you search for your father until I figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you never told me about your mother. Well, I never knew her. She died when I was just a baby. Aunt Mito raised me like her own, so I didn't really talk about my mom. My dad, too. If I hadn't met Kite, I wouldn't have tried to find out about him. The only reason Aunt Mito hid the truth about my dad from me was because she wanted to avoid talking about him. Yeah, but I don't think it really matters what happened. You would have become a hunter anyway. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? You get connected to a person by fate, and it's like this invisible bond between you. Oh, well then maybe my Aunt Mito and my mom are connected together like that. Aunt Mito's the only mother I'll ever know. Because whenever I try to think of my mom, I can't imagine anybody except her. There is no one else. I see. 
You know, to tell you the truth, I wish I had a mom like Aunt Mito. Yeah, she's pretty nice, but she nags a little too much, though. <laughs> she sure does. <laughs> Hey, wait! What's going on? There's poachers, even though they're not allowed to hunt here. And I heard Kota! Not bad. A male fox bear and its cub. They're worth a lot, dead or alive. It'll all be over soon. You can die first. <laughs> time like this. That cub is dying, so I just want to put an end to its suffering. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? It's not going to survive, so it's stupid to try and save it. Would you listen to yourself? How can it be stupid to try and save a life? She's right, Kilua. Mm -hmm. ah, uh, let go! Uh, there is no life this close to death. <gasps> if there's no hope, then there's no point in living. So I must do this. Kilua! Uh, He has life, and you don't have the right to take it away. This little cub hasn't given up hope. He's fighting to stay alive. You can see that, can't you? Unfortunately for some people, the will to live isn't always enough. Don't be so eager to end it. Hasn't anyone ever taught you how precious life is? The only thing I've been taught is how to kill. Huh? Wait, we do know a way, Kilua. Huh? Our Nan! We can use our Nan to save the cub! Like when Wing transmitted his aura into us. Remember? He taught us that every living thing has its own aura. Kilua! You're right. Uh. If we can enhance the aura of that cub, maybe he'll make it. It's worth a try. Hmm. Watch this, Aunt Nito. It's something we learned during the hunter exam. Let's take it slow at first. We don't want to risk hurting him. Mm -hmm. He'll be okay. Yeah. That was a very important thing you did, Kilua. Uh, uh, thanks. You know, I'm sorry. Oh, you mean this? Don't worry. It's only a scratch. Yeah, but still. Okay, they're gone. Let's go home. All right, then. After all that hard work, you must be starving. I'm proud of you.
What is it, Mother? Something wrong? Not really. It's just those two. Huh? They've been doing this every single day, just standing there like that. What are they doing? I don't understand what they're doing either, but I don't think we need to worry. When he first came back, I thought he hadn't changed since he left the island. But he really has grown up. Hmm. <laughs> okay, come on, Mother. It's almost time to open the shop. We'd better get ready. Oh, that's right. Come on, you two. It's dinner time. Be right there. Ugh, sure, I've heard that before. Gone, Kilua, your dinner is getting cold. What the? What is all this stuff? What are you boys doing? We're going to be doing some research. Huh? He's trying to find out about his dad. <gasps> it was Gone's idea to do it while we're here. I'm just trying to help. You know, this will be my first job as a hunter. There, is that good? Can we try connecting to the internet now? Huh? Weren't you listening, Aunt Mito? Uh, not really. What? You weren't paying attention, huh? No, don't be silly. Of course I was. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. By the way, Aunt Mito. Huh? What, what did, did you, you want? want? Ah! Ah! So you weren't paying attention to me, is that it? Ooh. You didn't hear me calling you to dinner? Yeah. Well, I've had enough. I'm going to drag you there. Now let's eat. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for, for dinner. dinner. I'm glad you liked it. All right, then. I'm going to go pick up where we left off. Sure, I'll be right there. Can't it wait till tomorrow? I think you've done enough work for today. What? Well, you won't be able to concentrate if you don't get your rest. And it's better to start fresh in the morning rather than staying up late at night. It's not like the Internet's going to run off anywhere, right? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, getting enough sleep's important. And I wouldn't want Aunt Mito to get more wrinkles by staying up late worrying. Ugh. When women get to an old age, they need all the help they can get, you know? <laughs> that? I'm gonna get ready for bed. <laughs> How old do you think I am? Um, you must be around. <gasps> Don't you dare! <sighs> Here we go. Kilo is interesting. He sure is. But I wonder. Aren't his parents worried about him? Probably not, because this isn't the first time that Kilo has been away from his home. It seems his family trusts him a lot. I see. Hey, Gong. Yeah? What? How long are you going to be staying here? Hmm. About a month, I guess. Hmm. And then you're going to go look for Jean. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Mm -hmm. What's this? Jing left this box with me. He told me that I had to give it to you when you became a hunter. My dad left this for me? I think you're ready. I'll tell you everything I know about Jing. Thanks for everything. Good night. Good night. See you next time. My earliest memory is of Jing's back. I was running behind him, trying to keep up. I think I was three years old. It feels like all I ever did was try to keep up with him. When he went off to take the hunter exam, he was 12, the same age as you. It was fall. A hunter? Yeah. You mean you're leaving? Yeah. But why? <clears throat> Hey, wait! Tell me why! There's something I have to go and get. You have to get something? Yeah. What is it you want to go and get? Wait! Hey! Jing! Tell me! There's something I have to go and get. Aunt Mito, did you ever find out what Jing was looking for? I tried to. I asked him several times, but he never told me. Hmm. Huh. Actually, we had a big argument about it. Well, the way I remember it, the only one who was arguing was you. 
so you finally decided to talk to him about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He left right after that, before I had a chance to say sorry. He didn't come back until ten years later. That's when the photo above the bar was taken. It's also when he married my sister. At that time, he didn't have any plans to settle down, though. One day he left without saying anything and didn't return for several months. We haven't seen Jing for a very long time now. The last time he was here was for the funeral. Funeral? The one for your mother. That's when we met you for the first time. Jing returned holding you in his arms. The first thing he asked me was if I could take care of you for a while. He didn't want to explain the reason why. And then, right when I was about to say I would take care of you... What's wrong with you? Your Aunt Mito let him have it. Mother? She hollered so loud I thought she'd wake up the whole island. Jing left without saying another word. Your Aunt Mito screamed at him as he walked away, telling him never to come back. She made quite a spectacle of herself. Ah! Oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't it? Well, this happened right after she died, remember? What he did was wrong. Yes, but still. The kettle's boiling, you know. Okay, okay. <clears throat> anyway, I felt that he wasn't going to be able to raise a child by himself. So I got custody of you, and I've told you this part, haven't I? Yeah. But you know... The only thing that really matters to him is getting what he wants. He doesn't care about anyone or anything or anyone else. He's selfish, if you ask me. He always has been. Do you really think so? Of course. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe Jing is out there doing something no one else can do? At least that's how it seems to me. Hmm. There's something I have to go and get. Oh. Is there something that you want to get to? Huh? Hmm. So what, you're not going to tell us either? No, it's not like that. It's just that I don't know yet. But that's why Kilua and I are going to travel all over the world together. Maybe while we're away, we'll both be able to find something we want. If it wasn't for the hunter exam, I never would have met Kilua or experienced any of the things I have in the last six months. And now all I want to do is find out what else is out there waiting for me. Well, Gon. There's no doubt about it. You truly are Jing's son. <sighs> anyway, this is all that Jing left behind. Oh, that old box. Who knows how many times you threw it away. <gasps> yeah, well, that's only because a certain someone kept rescuing it from the garbage. <laughs> if you really wanted to get rid of it, you would have put it where I couldn't find it so easily. <laughs> <sighs> That's pretty much all I can tell you. I realize now that I don't know much about him. There's no trace of him around here anymore. Well, except for that box and you. Hmm. Hmm. Jing. Huh? huh? Jing. Okay. That works. I like the sound of that. That's what I'll call him. Aunt Mito, tell me everything. What was Jing like when he was a kid? <laughs> Does it sound weird for me to call him by his first name? It feels a little more natural than calling him dad. Uh-uh. That's not what I was thinking. You want me to tell you what Jing was like as a boy? Uh-huh. Let me see. I remember wanting Jing to play with me, but he'd always be off somewhere by himself. Well, that must be why you ended up getting lost all those times. <sighs> why do you always remember those things? She'd go off running into the mountains, trying to keep up with Jing, then forget how to get home. We didn't even know she'd gotten herself lost, until Jing would come back all by himself. The whole island would go on a search, but no matter where she ended up, it was always Jing who found her. It happened so often that after a while, most of the people on the island thought they were just playing a prank. What? I never heard anyone say that. It's not like I got lost on purpose. Yes, but people thought that because you always ended up in the most out-of-the-way places. It always seemed like you didn't want to be found. Oh, really? There was one other incident. It was when Jing and Mito went sailing together one day. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
He didn't want to go because he didn't think the weather was going to hold. But of course, she wasn't one to listen to reason. Was I really like that? So not much has changed since then. What do you mean? <laughs> All right, what happened next? Well, it didn't take long, and a big storm came up. <sighs> Me too. I really was like that, wasn't I? Hmm. Jing. That's strange. Your Aunt Mito told you the truth about your dad, but there were no clues about where he might be. I know. The only thing you have to go on is that weird box. But you know what? I'm really glad that she told me. It's the first time that she's ever talked about Jing. Jing, huh? What are you going to do with it? With what? The box, man. Oh, that. Well, I wanted to bring it back to my room, but Aunt Mito said it was time for me to go to sleep, and she put it somewhere. Wow. She's really making a big deal about that thing. That box was left for you, right? So that means it belongs to you. Hmm. I guess so. You know what? Hmm? After I saw Aunt Mita with that box last night, I kind of got the feeling that it's important to her, and she doesn't want to let it go. So I think it'd be best if I just wait and let her give it to me when she's ready. Come on, let's go get breakfast. Now I really wish I stayed up to hear what Aunt Mito was like when she was a kid. It was pretty funny. <gasps> hmm? What's up? There, on the table. It's the box. No? Hey! Stop! Ah! Found you. Meet him. Yeah. Found you. Come on, let's go home. So this is it. Doesn't look like much. What the hell? How are we supposed to open this thing anyway? Huh? There's no lid. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Hey, do you mind if I give it a try? Sure, okay. I can't do it. This is no ordinary box, that's for sure. If it was, I could break it open no problem. Yeah, you opened the level 3 testing gate. We don't know what's inside, so we can't just smash it. It doesn't make a sound, hmm. and it's yours once you become a hunter. <gasps> Maybe that's a clue. I can think of something we haven't tried yet. Huh? What do you have now that you didn't have before you became a hunter? Hey, I know. A hunter license card! What? It doesn't have a slot? Not that. I meant Nen. <laughs> it's a box inside a box. Another one? 
It's nothing but ordinary metal, and it doesn't look like it was welded together. Huh? Check it out. <laughs> look familiar? These markings. Oh, yeah. These are just like the ones that were on the string that Wing tied around my finger that time. Yeah. And remember, he said that using your Nen was the only thing that could break it. It seems to me that these markings have some Nen power of their own. Right. So how do we open this one? Let's see. Hey, I found a slot! <laughs> Bingo! <gasps> a ring, a cassette tape, and a memory card. Look, the same pattern inside the band, but you'd better not risk putting it on just yet. Why? Do you actually think Jing would want to hurt me or something? Hey, just trying to be safe. Hmm. Okay, then why don't we listen to the tape first? Sure, go ahead. Let's make a copy while we're at it. Huh? You know, just in case. Hey, Gon. So, you've become a hunter too. There's one question I want to ask. Do you want to see me? What? If you do, keep listening. If you don't, just press the stop button. So that's a yes then. I'll ask one more time. Are you sure? Stop the tape here if you just think it would be nice to see me. I'll give you a minute to think it over. Now what? Or do I even need to ask? <laughs> oh well, looks like I'm going to have to wash this again. <laughs> Alright, so you want to see me that much? Well... I don't want to see you. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how I could face you. I neglected you for selfish reasons, but that's just the way I am. Hunters are selfish people. We have to abandon our responsibilities in order to get what we want. Even if that means ignoring the feelings of others. <sighs> At least ten years will have passed before you have a chance to listen to this tape. During that time, there's one thing that hasn't changed. I will always be the guy I am. Hmm. Go! Listening to this, I'm probably off doing something crazy. If you still want to see me, then come find me. But like I said, I don't want to see you. So if I hear you getting close, I'm gonna take off. Try and catch me. You're a hunter now, aren't you? Oh man, I'll say this about your dad. He sure is one tough customer. Mm-hmm. Hey, hold on. Hmm? I don't think he's quite finished yet. Oh yeah, one more thing, about your mom. I recorded her voice on this tape too. It's the only thing we have left of her. If you want to hear her, keep the tape running. And if you don't... You sure? Yeah. But you've never even heard her voice before. No, but that's okay. It's like I said before, Aunt Nito's the only mom I know. Well done.
You passed, huh? That's really good. To be able to master Nen in only half a year is no small feat. You remember me? Of course I do. I don't get many visitors. So, what kind of employer are you looking for? I'd like to work for someone who's directly involved with the auction that will be taking place in York New City. It doesn't matter what the job entails. Well, you know, a high-profile client like that usually has extremely high standards. I can't imagine they'd want someone who has no experience. Okay, here we go. Three people who match your criteria will interview anyone without experience. Not only that, all three of them are looking to hire bodyguards. So, who will it be? This is Karapika. I was sent here by Senjikai. We've been expecting you. Would you please follow me? Please wait inside this room. Well, here you are. Don't you wanna... kiss me? Mm. <laughs> What's the matter? That's just how we say hello where I come from. It's a greeting we call instant lovers. I do not come from the same place as you. That much is obvious. It's very nice to see you again. You too. I had a feeling that you might be a hunter. Oh, the colors changed. That's unfortunate. I liked how they were before. Mind if I play another song? Not at all. Although I have to say, your heartbeat still has its beautiful melody. Did you know that everyone has their own unique heartbeat? And it never lies. I can tell a lot more about a person by listening to their heart than by talking to them. Hmm? It won't be much longer now. Thank you for your patience. Man, only a first-timer would show up at the last minute. Yeah, check out the blonde kid. He's a rookie if I've ever seen one. But you know, everyone has to start somewhere. So we might as well be here. This is their first chance to see what being a hunter's like. It's a trial by fire for them. You never know. They might even live through it. Hey, Big Mouth. Hmm? No offense, but shut your trap. Huh? I agree. <sighs> a real hunter knows when to keep his mouth shut.
Sorry to have kept you waiting. If I could have your attention, I'll explain the details of this contract. You sure? Yeah. But you've never even heard her voice before. No, but that's okay. It's like I said before. Aunt Mito's the only mom I know. Come on, let's go have some lunch and then finish hooking up the internet. Go! Look at this! Something's happening with the tape recorder! What? Do you think it's on some kind of timer? It's Gyo! Mm -hmm. <gasps> the stereo has aura? Ned, that's what's making the tape rewind! Yeah, but where's it coming from? Ten years ago, your dad must have transmitted Ned into the tape so it would rewind when you stopped it, like a timer. But why? Who knows? Wait! Now it's starting to record! He's trying to erase his own voice! It won't stop! Hey, that didn't work either! Sorry, Gon. I gotta smash it! It's no use. It's protected by Ned. There's only one thing left to do. We have to use our Ned. Wait! Now it's starting to record! He's trying to erase his own voice! <laughs> Ugh, it's no use. It's protected by Ned. Ugh, even our backup tape was erased. I don't get it. Why would he want to do that? My guess is that he was trying to cover his tracks. You can learn a lot about a person by analyzing their voice. Yeah, like what? You can figure out their gender, age, height, weight, facial features, their physical fitness. You can even come up with a psychological profile. Not only that, background noise can give clues to where the recording was done. But I have a feeling that he set it up this way as a precaution against something else. Nen abilities. Nen abilities? You never know. Maybe there's someone out there whose Nen ability allows them to analyze electronic data like this. They might even be able to tell what your power is just by hearing your voice. I see. Hmm. <laughs> your dad's good. Mm-hmm. One down, two to go. We can deal with the ring later. First, let's check out the memory card. It sure is a lot smaller than the ones I've seen. So how are we going to read what's on it? Huh? Uh, what's wrong? You've never seen a joy station. Joy station? <sighs> <sighs> this is a memory card for a game console called Joy Station. Joy Station. We'll go to an online database of toy stores. All you gotta do is enter what you're looking for, and it'll give you a list of all the stores in your area that have it in stock. It'll also tell you where to find the best price, or if you're willing to buy something used, what condition it's in and who's selling it. Uh -huh. We want one joy station and memory card for same day delivery. Oh, good, they got one. But even if we get a gaming console, all we have is this memory card. We'll still need the game to play what's on here, right? Plus we don't even know what the game is yet because there's no name or anything else written on it. <laughs> wow, you're pretty weird, you know that? Haven't you ever played games before? Of course I have. Remember Trick Tower? I mean games from this century. I guess that's what happens when you grow up in the boonies. Good evening, everyone. Let me get straight to the point. It isn't important to us whether you're licensed hunters or not. All that really matters is if you can collect the items that we want. I want to tell you that the job we're hiring you for is not entirely legal, but you will be well compensated for your work. Sounds good to me. Pay me enough and I'll do anything. I am willing to hire as many of you as I can for this assignment. The more qualified people we have, the better. So please keep in mind you're not competing against each other. 
I'll start things off by letting you know that I've arranged a little test to determine what you are capable of. As you know, the auction in York New City is only a month away. Before then, I'd like each of you to bring me one of the items from this list. I wish you all the best of luck. The items are listed on these data cards. Here you are. Hmm. One for you. And you. And you. <laughs> I'll read them out to you and you can decide. First, a handgun collector, seeking the Masset Limited Edition Bullsnake Model 555 number 001. The second option is an antiques collector, seeking Roto Memorial Plates from the years 1665 and 1657 exclusively. And the third is a collector of body parts. They're looking for a mint condition hide with a rising dragon tattoo, a DNA certified hair sample from Sarah, the famous actress, the right arm of an Egyptian mummy, the scarlet eyes of a Kurta tribesman, etc., etc. Quite a nasty hobby, huh? So, which one do you want? I'd like to choose the third one. That was fast. A rather interesting choice, too. I'll contact the employer and send him your info. The interviews are going to be held at noon, four days from now, at the Nostrad Mansion. When you arrive, mention the name Senjikai. I understand. Thanks for your help. I appreciate it. Wait a sec. Hmm? Let me give you a piece of advice. And this is coming from me personally and not as an employment agent. For those of us who know how to use the power of men, time isn't a factor. There's no reason to go rushing into anything. You will get to seize your opportunity someday. Until then, the best way for you to become a professional hunter is to build your reputation and gain people's trust. But just keep that in mind and I'm sure you'll be all right. Trust me, I really do know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's plenty of time. So much time, we forget how we started. The eyes of a Kurta tribesman. Must be scarlet. A pair with head preferred. Difficulty level, A. What's wrong? You're not looking so good. You getting queasy already? This list is only the beginning, you know. You should be happy that everything they're asking us to get is legit. Once you're officially hired, the things you'll be asked to collect are gonna get a lot worse than this. Like how about the preserved corpse of an endangered species carrying the most deadly pathogen known to man? This one crazy client I worked for actually wanted me to find him a newborn- Be quiet. You don't have to talk to me. Hmm. Didn't you say a real hunter doesn't have to talk too much? Oh yeah, that is what I said. If you complete this assignment, you'll be offered a contract to handle our security and acquisitions at the auction. I look forward to working with you. I will ingratiate myself and gain their trust. I suspect the man on the screen isn't even our actual client. I'm still far away from my goal, though. I must get as close as possible, until they let down their guard and share their secrets. There are two things collectors want. One is rare and valuable items. The other is friends to whom they can brag about their collection. There must be social ties between other flesh collectors. A network of scum who make a contest of their depraved appetites. And the closer I get to them, the closer I'll be to the spiders. I'm going to catch them. Every last one of them. Hey, the door won't open. I almost forgot. There's one more thing that needs mentioning. I've taken the liberty of preparing a welcoming ceremony for you. In exactly six minutes from now. 
In that room you're in, you will be participating in a simulation which will measure your fighting skills. It may be a simulation, but without real-world conditions, it would have no merit. And I'm sure you wouldn't want to be insulted by a test that was too easy. So, you could say this is our way of permanently removing the weaker candidates. If you fail to make it through this simulation, then there's no place for you here, and our business with you will be concluded immediately. The minimum requirement for employment is to be tough, at least tough enough to get out of that room alive. That's it. Good luck to all of you. If you please excuse me, I'll be taking my leave now. It was a pleasure, and I wish you well. That door doesn't look very strong. Don't you think we could just break it down and get out of here? Don't even bother trying. Even if we all worked on it together, we'd never get it open in six minutes. It's sealed with Nen. We're birds trapped inside a Nen cage. There's no point in struggling. This concrete wall is three feet thick, and they've got us up on the second floor. It would take a wrecking ball an hour to break through. Don't you think we should be doing something? Nah. There's only four minutes left. Are you just gonna sit there and wait for the time to run out? That's a good point. Why don't we divvy up the items on the list they gave us so we're not all fighting over the same thing? I've already decided what I'm going after. The right arm of the mummy. Okay then, I think I'll try and find the unicorn skull. Hey, why don't we worry about who's gonna find what after we get out of here? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. For now, let's just focus on working together to deal with this situation. Let me see. I think I'll take the DNA certified hair sample from Sarah, the famous actress. Oh. Ha! Are you trying to stay calm? Is that it, rookie? It's not that I'm trying to remain calm. I just don't think it's wise to do anything at the present time. Oh, really? Is that what you think? Why don't you give us a reason why we should be doing nothing? Only a fool would tell you what time a sneak attack is going to happen. If all they wanted to do was assess our physical abilities, they could have ambushed us the moment we arrived. Right. And I believe the most treacherous part of this whole simulation is the six-minute countdown. It does seem like a long time to wait, but it's not long enough to come to a consensus and cooperate with people you've just met. There's no way we could learn to fight as a team before the time expires. We haven't even been together long enough to decide whether or not we can trust each other yet. And when there's mistrust within a group, an individual can't fight at their best. We'd all be doomed. That's why, for this particular simulation, I recommend that instead of teaming up as a group, we all simply fend for ourselves and use our personal strengths and abilities as best we can. At least that's what I think. Then why go through the trouble of setting up this whole simulation? If that's what they want, why not test each of us individually? I don't know. Maybe they only want to hire real professionals who are capable of critical thinking and sound judgment under any circumstance. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. You know, for a rookie, you're not bad. Now, if only you weren't so long-winded. If there was a spy among us, he could use that to his advantage. <clears throat> and I have a feeling that may be the case. Where are you going? I gotta pee. Luckily, the door to the bathroom isn't locked. I've got time. There's still two minutes to go. Two minutes left. Something's not right here. What is it? What's this feeling? It may be a simulation, but without real-world conditions, it would have no merit. <gasps>
come. Three gunmen, six swordsmen, and another two with swords upstairs. Hmm, I've gotta say, you guys did a good job of sneaking up on us, but your fighting skills are weak. I don't even have to use my Nen to take you down! Interesting. So that's what's going on here. Call them off. I'll give you three seconds. One, two... Okay, just take it easy. So it was Nen. I could tell when I punched one of them. They were actually masses of aura shaped into human form. But what I didn't know was who was controlling them. So how could you tell? You hit it well by keeping close to the others. But from above, it was obvious. You were the only one not getting attacked. When those two upstairs attacked me, I knew something wasn't right. Even after I jumped out of their reach onto the chandelier, they kept swinging their swords as if I was still next to them. They were probably given an order to attack anyone who was close by. It was obvious they could only respond to simple commands. And not only that, their fighting style was quite basic. But still, it would take a significant amount of Nen to control 11 masses of aura the size of a man, even from a close distance. All of which leads me to believe that you're most likely an emitter. The amount of aura required to do that would limit the effective range to around 20 feet or so. That's how I concluded that it would have to be someone in this room. Heh! <laughs> you're correct! My name is Shachmono Tochino. In addition to being a hunter, I also work here at the mansion. Just remember that I'm senior to all of you. Now if you wouldn't mind, please put that thing away. I hope you won't take it personally. I was only acting under orders. I was told to test you with real threats. I never expected to be found out so quickly. With the amount of talent I've just witnessed, you four should be able to escape without too much trouble. So go for it. Hmm. Is he saying there's another one? Uh. Ugh. You meant to make us second-guess ourselves, but it didn't work. I'll find out whether there are other infiltrators. It's you. You're the other infiltrator in this room. Y Come on! So what if your chain jiggled a bit? How does that prove I'm an infiltrator? It's a technique called dowsing. Ha! Huh. I've never heard of it. And besides, that doesn't prove anything. The chain is probably accurate. Your heart was already pounding heavily before Kurapika singled you out. If you really felt you had nothing to hide, it would have built up to that level of intensity gradually. But that's not what happened, and you know it, don't you? It was exactly the opposite. It beat loudest at first, and then slowly even out. And that's the typical melody of a liar's heart. There's no reason to believe that you were lying to us earlier. The melody of your heartbeat was calm and consistent. Well, there you have it. Two accusations have been made against you, and that's all I need. Wait a second! Let's not jump to conclusions here. How can we be sure there are only two infiltrators? What if there are three? It wouldn't be that difficult for a Nen user to make a chain move when he wants to. And who knows if she heard my heartbeat or not. 
Maybe you two are the infiltrators, trying to get us to turn on each other. Well, I'm not sure if they're the infiltrators or not. But when we arrived here, they already seemed to know each other. Hmm. Very interesting. Looks like the tables have turned. What do you have to say about that? We did share the same compartment on the train here. Which, if you think about the fact that we were both coming for the same interview, it really isn't all that much of a coincidence. Besides, if we really were infiltrators, do you think we would have been so careless as to mention that we'd met before? But unfortunately, I have to admit your suspicion is warranted, and I can't think of any way that we can prove our innocence to you. Guess it's up to me then. I'll put an end to this. Hmm? My hand makes a punch, and whatever I hit will burst in flames a bunch. The Wandering Haiku Poet! Aw oh man, pathetic! Hardly any flames! This poem was no good. It's called a haiku. It's a form of poetry in my native country. Whatever I compose becomes real. End of story. Now for the one that counts. If you are a liar, your painful death will be swift in a trial by fire. In other words, all liars will burn in hell. Now, are you an infiltrator? I'm not. I'm not either. I'm not. Are you an infiltrator? I am. Okay, that leaves you. Think of the consequences before you answer. <laughs> Are you an infiltrator? Answer me! <sighs> All right then. My answer's yes. You got me. So I'm gonna let you in on a little something. My name's Squala, and even though I don't actually have a license, I am a manipulator. And I've already given out my orders. To who? What are you talking about? Huh, <laughs> if I told you that, it wouldn't be much of a test, would it? I'm a professional. You couldn't even beat it out of me. Huh? Oh. Instant lover. I also happen to be a manipulator, and I have the nan ability to turn anyone I kiss into my personal love slave for 180 minutes. Come on, don't you want to say something? Oh yes, please, walk all over me. Look at you, if your parents could only see you now. Maybe we should capture this moment on video to show them later. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm getting this all on video. Come on! Open up your legs wider. Now tell me how you used your men. If you don't tell me, I'm going to stop. No, don't stop. I'll tell you anything. All I am is a lowly dog handler. That's some I've power she's got. Since it certainly kid. is. I'm, so attached to those dogs I'm glad I didn't let her kiss me. I asked them to. There are dogs under my control all over this property. One of them is a cute puppy who will come up to you and then clamp its jaws on you. And there's a Doberman and a Pitbull who team up when they attack. But I'll cancel those men orders right away. After all, I'm your humble servant. Hey, I've got a great idea. Why don't you treat me like a dog? Oh. Hey, over here! That's it! Right here! Right here! <sighs> Can't beat same-day delivery. Thank you! Thank you so, so I hope you much. don't mind, Gon, but I put that on your account. So this is a joy station. It's three generations old and still on the market. I guess it's probably because some games can only be played on this console. Oh. Right here is where you're supposed to insert the game disc. Hmm. But we don't have one to put in, so insert the memory card here and push the power button. At least it can show us what's on the card. And we'll finally be able to see what games were saved on it. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. What kind of cool stuff is on here? Huh?
There's only one game saved on this thing. Just one? Mm-hmm. But it's using up all the memory. It's taking up all 30 slots. Hmm. That's a lot of memory. This probably won't work, but I'm going to try to make a copy of it. Hmm. Copying Greed Island. So that must mean the game's called Greed Island. Heard of it? Uh-uh. But now that we know what it's called, all we have to do is go online and order from a game website. <clears throat> That's one copy of Greed Island. And we're going to want same-day delivery, of course. One moment, please. No items match your request. Huh? No stores are selling the game? That's impossible. Maybe it's because of the same-day delivery. Well, this time I'll just do a search for everyone that carries it. No items match your request. Really? What's going on? It's weird. None of the online stores have it in stock anymore. I guess it's sold out. Or it could be that this game was never even on the market. What do you mean by that? Who knows? It might have been designed for private use. Maybe it was never available to the public, or its sale was banned for some reason. Then it must be really important. Something tells me that this game might have clues that will help me find Jing. This is starting to get interesting. I'm gonna search the game almanac. They have a database of every video game that's ever been made. There. Hey, look, it says here that Greed Island actually was out on the market exclusively for hunters it's a hunter's game look at the price 5.8 billion that's insane and only a hundred units were ever sold how is that a release that's not very many not very many that's almost nothing <sighs> that's why we couldn't find a copy it sold out a long time ago. Maybe the company that made it still has some left in stock, like ones that didn't work and were returned or something. Yeah, it's probably worth a try, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Greed Island, one moment while I check. I'm sorry, that game has been discontinued and there are no plans to put it back into production. Unfortunately, it was created by a third-party developer that has since gone out of business. This sucks! There isn't a used copy for sale anywhere. What we need to do is find someone who owns it. Yeah, I guess that's the only way. Maybe we could try posting an ad on an auction site, and then just wait and see if there's anyone who's willing to sell us their copy. Yeah, but how are we going to pay for it? Hmm. The prize money we got from Heaven's Arena is over 800 million. Five billion short. I'm not too sure about that. Hmm? Since we'd be buying it online, it would all depend on who we're dealing with. Some people try to get way more than the original retail price. You never know. It might be going for twice that much. Mm. That'd be 10 billion? <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Well, we might as well give it a shot. What have we got to lose? All right. But I'd be surprised if our posting got any replies. Wanted. The Game Greed Island. Name your price. There. Uh, <gasps> we've already got 10,000 hits. What's going on? I thought they only made 100 copies of it. That's right. Which means that most, if not all, of these people are trying to scam us. And with that much money at stake, you can't blame them for trying. I guess we have to try and see if any of them are selling one that's real. Forget it. Even just to respond to 10,000 postings is going to take us forever. And there's no way to verify that they have an authentic copy of the game. Oh well, what are you going to do? Hmm. We have to do something. Hmm, gotta think. Hmm. Huh? What's up? I think I know someone who might have a copy of Greed Island. Huh? You do? Really? Who? I don't really want to call him, but I guess we don't have much choice.
Hey, Goto, it's me, Kilua. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. So listen, think you could get Piggy for me? You're lying. I know he hasn't left the house in years. Tell him if he doesn't get on the phone in 10 seconds, I'll smash all his figurines. What do you want? I'm busy, you know. <sighs> I'm warning you. Lay one figure on my figurines and I'll kill you. <sighs> I was only kidding, you know. Don't get so mad. You're scaring me. Anyway, I wanted to ask you something. Greed Island, huh? Yeah, I've heard of it. But I never knew you were into vintage video games. Do you have it? No, I don't. But I've always wanted it. I was only five when it first came out. I couldn't afford it. They only made a hundred copies, and apparently there were over 20,000 pre-orders at the time. On top of which, it cost 5.8 billion jenny, payable only in cash. I did everything I could to get one for myself, but there wasn't a single person who was selling it. It's a legendary game in many ways. But you can forget it! Even I had to chalk it up as a lost cause! That doesn't really surprise me. You're always the first to surrender. That was a long time ago! In fact, I got some new leads. <laughs> but considering the cost and the time and effort involved in getting it, I'm not sure it's even worth it anymore. Really? Then why don't you give me your leads? I'll look into it. <laughs> it's gonna cost you. What if I give you a memory card of Greed Island for your information? <laughs> I got one recently through a friend of mine. That is, if you're interested. With your skills, I bet you could analyze the data and then reverse engineer the game itself. Seriously? You're not lying to me, are you? I'm not so stupid that I'd lie when I'm making a deal. Okay, listen, I've got two leads here. Hold on, a cell phone's too risky. Don't worry, even if someone is listening in, there's nothing they can do about it. The first lead is the Hunter's website. It's top of the line in info, content, and reliability. Lots of precious loot you'd never find on any other website moves through there on a regular basis. That's probably your best bet. But to access it, you need a hunter's license and a URL. I'll give you the URL once you send me the memory card. All right, it's a deal. And what's the other lead? Have you ever heard of the York New Auction? <laughs> yeah. I've heard rumors that as many as several dozen Greed Island discs will be up for auction this year. Apparently, a collector's been buying up all available copies for years. But it's just a rumor, so who knows if it's true. All right, I got it. I'll go ahead and send you the card the usual way. Sorry, I promised him the memory card, but I couldn't think of any other way to get him to talk. <clears throat> yeah, that's okay. At least now we've got two solid leads that we can follow. And the first one is a website that's exclusively for hunters. All right! We can use my license! No way! We can't log on from here! Do you know what'll happen if you use your home computer and your IP address gets out there? Thieves looking for a hunter license will zero in on this island. Is that what you want? Uh, no. For stuff like this, you should always use public computers. Like at a cafe or the library. Either way, we won't be able to get onto the website until my brother sends us the URL. Oh, uh, what's the other lead? The other lead is the auction at York New City. What? Well, my brother did say it was only a rumor, but apparently someone's planning to auction off several Greed Island discs this year. <gasps> really? He said one collector has been hoarding all available copies for years. Then that collector just might be Jane. Maybe. Who knows? Anything's possible, but one thing's for sure. If we're gonna bid on Greed Island, we'll need a lot more money. Jing Freaks and the York New City Auction. That's it. Kilua! Yeah, we have to go, don't we? To York New, New City! Following that, Greed Island disappeared from the market. It is now only a topic of various rumors flying about the net, which have added to its mystique. In 1988, a reward was offered by a Mr. Batera, 17 billion jenny for the game itself, and 50 billion for a memory card with endgame data. Nobody has stepped forward, a fact that has spawned further urban legends. This reward still remains in effect. <laughs> this is good.
I'll bring this legend to an end myself. Well, Grandma, Aunt Mito, it's time for us to go. I can't believe you're leaving already. It seems like you just got back. All right, then. Are you boys sure you didn't forget anything? How many times are you going to ask us that? We're not kids, you know. Oh, really? Then the next time you visit, I won't have to cook or do your laundry. Uh. <laughs> Goon, don't forget to write. We'd love to hear from you, okay? Sure. Forget writing letters. Just send an email instead. It would be a lot faster. But it means so much more to get a handwritten letter. You should write us too, Kilua. What? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I wrote a letter once, when I was demanding a ransom. <clears throat> but that's about it. <gasps> I'm not sure what I'm supposed to write. Ah, uh, he's only kidding! It's his idea of a joke! <laughs> oh, wait. There was one more letter that I wrote. A death threat, Zoldic style. <laughs> Uh, Kilua's got a really what? twisted sense of humor. Come uh, on, tell them. Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I don't understand your big city jokes. Anyway, just don't forget to write us. We won't. And one more thing, Kilua. Hmm? I want you to know that you are always welcome in our home. So don't let this be the last time you come and see us, okay? <laughs> Will you promise? Mm-hmm. Well, see ya, Aunt Mito! See ya, Grandma! Have a safe trip! Be careful out there! Don't worry. We'll be back soon to mooch off you again. Sure, anytime! He hardly seems like the same boy who left here for that hunter exam. He really has grown up, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That certainly is true. Off we go! We got one! From my brother. <sighs> That's a pretty cool way to send a message. Okay, we have the URL. So now we're going to be able to access the Hunter's website. And then we can learn more about Greed Island, right? That's right. I can't wait to see what this website looks like. Come on, let's go find a computer. Yeah. Huh. This is it. A website for hunters only. Uh -huh. Okay, type in your license number and then swipe your card. Right. Huh. So this is what it looks like. All these different characters have to be here for some sort of reason. Try clicking on one and see what happens. Yeah, okay. Looking for someone? I can help you. So he helps you look people up. I'll put the word out for you. He's a message board. Hey, there's a bartender. Try clicking on him. What info do you want? There you go. Whoa, lots of stuff. Okay, try clicking on games. Okay. That's it! G G G G G G G G G R. There! Greed Island. Show me something good. Greed Island. I'll take 20 million. Uh. 
20 million Jenny is required for the information requested. Pay him? Yes? No. Looks like you can't get anything for free anymore. Oh well, at least it's not too expensive. I guess not, compared to the game. <sighs> anyway, what's another 20 million Jenny, right? Okay, listen up. Greed Island is a game made by Nen users. <sighs> their real motives are unclear. It could be their specialists, and it's likely there are multiple creators. Whoever did make it infused all 100 discs with Nen. The Nen activates when the game is started. The players are sucked into the game. They vanish. Gone. As long as the player stays alive in the game, the console will stay on, even when unplugged. It will stop when the player dies. They can return if they find a save point, but the problem is no one knows where they are. One owner of the game gave testimony on condition of anonymity. The only people who can play this game are NAN users. To try and clear the game, I decided to hire 50 hunters. Three of them were licensed professionals, and out of all of them, none have come back. Not a single one. You think that's true? It is on the Hunter's website, so it's gotta be true. As of August 14th, seven units of Greed Island have been registered for the auction at York New City. Minimum bid, 8.9 billion Jenny. 8.9 billion? It's gone up 3 billion Jenny! I knew this would happen! <sighs> now what do we do? Hmm? Even though Greed Island is considered a legendary game, the general public isn't really aware of it. Uh, Since it started hey, showing up on, in public listen. auctions, the difficulty huh? level for finding a copy was lowered to H, or easiest. But if you factor in its high price, the difficulty level should be upgraded to G. That's all the information at my disposal. Good luck, fellow hunters. Uh, all right then. We've got to get our hands on a copy somehow. What if we went to York New City and entered the auction? Huh? You heard him. It's starting at 8.9 billion. There's no way we could bid on it. Seriously. No. I don't mean go as a buyer. Go as a seller. I see. We find something valuable and then auction it off ourselves. That might work. We still have 800 million left over from Heaven's Arena. Yeah. Let's invest it and see how much more money we can make. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <sighs> All right, let's go digging for treasure. To start off, we should hit all the internet flea markets and auction sites. Let me know if you find anything. Okay. Difficulty level G. That means if I can't get a hold of this, I have no hope of finding you, Jing. Go, I think I found something good. I'm gonna send it to you. Okay. And if you find anything we can double our money on, send it to me. All right. Oh. Such a lovely melody. Right at this moment, your heart is beating in perfect harmony with the birds chirping in the trees and the water of the trickling stream. Oh wait, the rhythm just changed. This is the same melody as when I first met you. Although it's still lovely, it's lonely and sorrowful. I had no idea you were this talkative. Really? I don't mean to give you advice, but talking too much is a bad thing. Speech tends to give away information beyond what's actually being said. I suppose, but I believe that whatever information we do gain through speech should be the last thing we trust. After all, the words we say can deceive not only others, but also ourselves. What's true and what's a lie can be hard to separate, while a person's heartbeat is always close to the truth. It's that way with mine and yours. But there are times when talking is necessary, especially when you're carrying a burden that's too much for you to bear alone. Of course, it all depends on who you choose to share it with. Hmm. All right. Why don't you guys go ahead and show me what items you managed to bring back? Hmm. Look who's barking the orders now. <laughs> Forget the show and tell. Let me give you another kiss. Ah, uh, no thanks. I'm good.
Here's what I found, a DNA-certified hair belonging to the world-famous actress Sarah. My, my, aren't you a real go-getter. All right. Come on, who's next? I found a piece of brain tissue from the assassinated dictator General Sharman. Check this out, the right arm of a mummy that was entombed in Egyptia. I just happened to find a unicorn skull. Nice. They're all authentic. Very well done. Okay, good. Now I'd like to see them for myself. Come up here and join me. All of you. The items you requested. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The least he could do is tell us what he thinks of this stuff. <laughs> Come on, what's taking this guy so long? All right, take these to the boss now. Pause. Basho, Melody, Karapika, from the simulation and the items you retrieved, I am satisfied that all of you are qualified to be employed here. Okay? Consider yourselves hired. My name's Delzaline, and I'm the head bodyguard. Welcome aboard. Now, about the assignments you've been hired for, you'll be escorting the boss to York New City. From the time we leave until we're safely checked into the hotel. Hmm. I'll brief you on all the details. Follow me. We'll travel by private blimp to Lingen Airport in the suburbs of York New City. This leg of the trip will take 35 hours. From there, we'll take a limo to the hotel, a 90-minute drive. You newbies will be assigned to the outer formation. Any questions? Can you tell us who we're protecting the boss from? <laughs> well, there's the first stupid question. Let's just say there are too many to keep track of. The boss is a VIP in the underside of society. Lots of people have grudges. Perhaps you misunderstood my question. I'm interested in knowing who you think might actually attack the boss during this trip. If we can narrow them down and determine their motives, we could more effectively plan countermeasures. And that way, we would keep the boss safer. I'm afraid you're the one who doesn't understand. It doesn't matter who attacks the boss from where or how. Our job is to protect the boss at all times. That's the only thing you need to remember. Don't assume who the enemy might be. Everyone who approaches is an enemy. How much is left? Between you and me, 10.84 million. Ugh. That geezer tricked us. What a fraud. He turned around and sold that vase for double. He was scamming us right from the very beginning. He let us get chump change so we would trust him. Then he swindled us. We lost around 3.9 billion. That's what you get for trusting people. That's why I told you we should stick with auction sites that people trust. It took eight hours to make a measly 985 Jenny. How many centuries is it going to take to make eight billion? You lost our money. Hey, come on. I didn't hear you say it was a bad idea before. That's because you weren't listening. Remember, buying an item by only looking at its picture can be a risky business. Especially something that's expensive. Caveat emptor! Wanna fight? Sure! Whenever you're ready. Anytime. There's still two weeks before the auction, so let's see which one of us can make more money. You're on! We'll split the money we've got left, and whoever makes the most by 9 p.m. on August 31st will be the winner. Fine by me. What if you lose? The loser has to do one thing. The winner asks. It's a deal. I'm gonna bury you in gold. Are you ready, Kilua? Ready. Go! Go!
I wonder if those two are getting along. There's no need for you to worry, Mother. They're very grown up for their age. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, how about another round? Sure. I've got 4.92 million to spend, and my goal is 5 billion. Hey, why make 5 billion when I can make 10? And here's the place to do it. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I know this place is only for adults. I get told that all the time because of how young I look. But you don't have to worry about it. I'm actually 20 years old. It's a common mistake. I won't take it personally. <laughs> Here, check my ID. I'm not lying. You satisfied? Stupid Miluki had to pay him 500,000 for that fake ID. Good, this'll work. Now all I have to do is sell it on another site. What? Ah, uh, that sucks. Item 89 goes to Mr. Alulu. If I don't want to lose to another bidder, I'm going to have to place my bids at the very last second. Well, I won't let it happen again. All right, let's see what's next. This sucks! I just don't get it. I copied every single line of code perfectly. So why doesn't it run on any of my computers? How can that NPC walk through walls? I didn't make any mistakes. Um, did Kiel trick me? No, he doesn't have the skills to forge a game. And he's not stupid enough to double-cross me. Maybe he was tricked when he got this. Or maybe it is real. But if it is real, why doesn't it work? Do you have to be a hunter to play it? Maybe I should try hacking into the Hunter website! No, I can't! It's just too risky. I wish Ilumi was here. He'd know exactly what to do. I wanna know! I wanna know! I wanna know! I don't care how much it costs me! I got 12.7 billion in savings. I'd rather have twice that to make sure I can outbid others. Dad, let's make a deal. I'll kill 15 people, so loan me 15 billion. Autopilot activated. Destination, Lingen Airport. <sighs> I'll get there three days before the auction. When was the last time I left the house? Must have been when I was 10. I wonder if he'll actually come to York New City. It wouldn't surprise me. When I mentioned the word spider, his entire demeanor changed. And those eyes. Just thinking about them gets me excited. I would like to have him on my side for what lies ahead. For all those spiders. <laughs> Finally, I get to meet the boss and travel to York New City. Hey. Over there. Huh? Whoa. Is it real? Sure is, as human as you are. In fact, he used to work here alongside us. But he ignored what I warned him about. He presumed to know who the enemy was after being led astray by a piece of false information. He acted on his own, which put the team and the boss in danger. This was his punishment. The four of you were brought in as his replacement. Yes? I have the new hires. Please come in. The boss is expecting you. This way. May I introduce your boss, who you'll be protecting, Miss Neon. She's 
just a young girl. There it is. So that's York New City? The annual York New Auction. Held once a year, it's the biggest auction in the world. An item bought for 10,000 Jenny one day could be sold for 100 million the next. This is the place to strike it rich. Yes, but I've also heard that various underground auctions take place here. And these deal exclusively in black market items. Well, there you have it. We get hired to guard the boss while she conducts a little business under the table. By the way, where did that blonde-haired kid wander off to? Huh? He was here a moment ago. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Hmm. Really? That's good to know. I was worried about that very thing. I'll call you again soon, when I have some more time. Yeah, bye. Oh, there, you're back now. The call of nature, whether it's large or it's small, has to be answered. Another great haiku by me. Oh, yeah. Hmm. How crude. The spiders will show up here. I know it. And he'll be with them. We're set to meet tomorrow, September 1st. Here is the batch for September. What the? Isn't this a little much? Well, Mr. Rod Ferry and Mr. Trink wanted to have their fortunes read, too. Ah, <sighs> I told you. If you keep adding more names to the list, I'm gonna quit. Yes, I'm sorry, Miss Neon. But please understand, these men are close associates of your father. Where is Daddy? There was an important meeting that he couldn't miss. Oh, please. He's on vacation with some woman. Daddy, it's me. I just got the list and... Huh? Forget it! I'm not doing it! Ah, uh, no way! You're not fooling me anymore! No, no, no! Huh? Huh, <sighs> I'll think about it. Hmm, well okay, but this is it! If you break your promise again, I'll quit for sure. Alright! He's gonna buy me something! <laughs> I'm very happy for you. That's settled, so I might as well get this over with. Lovely ghost writer, angelic auto writing. <laughs> I hear she's an amazing fortune teller. It's only through her dad's connections that she's been able to get clients in the upper ranks of the Mafia. On the contrary, it's more like he's become a powerful member of the Mafia because of her skills. That's why he's paranoid of losing her, and of retaliation from the people he supplanted along the way. Remember, don't assume you know the enemy. Everyone who approaches should be considered a threat. Fair. Well done, Miss Neon. Hmm. You know, the auction doesn't start till tomorrow. So there's time to go shopping before then, right? I understand. We'd be happy to escort you. All right! So, how many years has it been since the last time all 13 of us got together? Three years, two months. But two people different this time. Number four and eight, replaced. Machi, what about number four? Is he gonna show up? Who knows? Don't ask me. It was your job, wasn't it? Hey, I told him to come. I know, like Hisoka. Why Krolo let him do as he want? Because he's good. 
No one can deny his bungee gum is an excellent weapon. There's hardly any way to defend against it. Are you saying Krolo afraid of Hisoka? Apologize. I didn't say that. I think you give him too much credit. He isn't that tough to beat. Really? Well, anyone can talk big, I guess. I wonder what Krolo's got planned for us. We are thieves. We here to steal. What do you think he's after this time? I bet it'll be some more old books. He loves them the best. No. Must be game. A game? They have several most expensive game in world here. Most dangerous, too. Makes me curious. But if it's a game, how dangerous could it be? Well, he'll tell us when we get there. basement where prices rise, your bed shall be made with your brothers. Do not descend stairs you never climbed. In numbers, do not compete with others. Those are the first four lines. Three other poems begin this way, so four clients have the same fortune. The common element between them is... They'll be at the underground auction, so their lives will be in danger. In the past, words related to sleep suggest illness or death. All right, send those fortunes to the clients at once. Remember to warn them. Yes, sir. And one more thing. Bearing in mind that Miss Neon is unaware of what she has written and isn't capable of predicting her own future, do you think it's safe to let her go to the auction? No. Bring her home at once. She's been looking forward to this auction for a long time. I'm not sure we'll be able to convince her that it's not in her best interest to go. And if she gets upset, we may lose control of the situation. All right. Buy her whatever she wants. Spare no expense. Just don't take her there. You'll have to put in the winning bid for the items yourselves. Yes, I understand. We're on our own. As you all know, the underground auction begins tomorrow. Our objective is... everything. We're going to make off with all the loot. This isn't a joke, is it, Krolo? You do know that gangsters from all over the world run that auction, don't you? If we take it down, we'll make ourselves enemies of the most powerful criminals alive. Are you scared? <laughs> I'm ecstatic! Give us the order, right now! I give you permission to kill them all. <laughs> yeah! In the basement where prices rise, your bed shall be made with your brothers. Oh, wow! Look at all the people on their way to work! Uh, Would you keep it down? Uh, you're embarrassing me. <gasps> hey, come on! Let's go see what's in there! I bet they got a lot of cool stuff! Oh, uh, dude, we've got more important things to do. Like earning eight billion Jenny before the auction starts, remember? Hey, if you think you're so smart and know what to do, then how come you're broke? Uh, you were the one who tried to get rich by gambling at a casino. Shut up! You only earned 15000 in two weeks. You could have made more than that by begging for change on the street. At one point, I was up to over 200 million Jenny. Now you've got nothing. <sighs> Even though I didn't make much, I still managed to beat you. But you know, now I know how to negotiate better. And I have lots of inside information. Most people get ripped off just when they think they've gotten the hang of it. Anyway, I won our little bet, which means that I get to order you to do one thing, and you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look! A cell phone? Yeah. 
Kurapika was planning on getting here yesterday, and Leorio is going to be arriving this afternoon, so a cell phone might come in handy, right? Yeah, you should have one already. You are a hunter now, remember? <laughs> it sure will be good to see them again. Kurapika said he has an assignment, so he might not have time to see us. An assignment? Mm-hmm. He said if he has free time, he'll call. And who knows when that's going to be, so that's why I want a cell phone. You want a deal? Here you go. This phone is the latest thing. It's small, thin, and light, and it comes with a GPS system to help you find your way around. What do you think? Well, the price is right, and it would fit in my pocket. Yeah, I think I'll take it. You don't want that one. <gasps> you can't roam with it, and it's not even waterproof. I'd go with this one over here if I were you. Leorio! Yo! <laughs> you guys look the same since I last saw you. You too, Riolio. Leorio! How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> anyway, if a cell phone is what you're in the market for, then I suggest the Beetle 07. It's a little heavier and more expensive than other models, but it works anywhere in the world. It translates 200 different languages, you can watch TV on it, and record your own movies. Seriously? Go, get this one, and I'll get one too! Okay, I'll talk to the salesman. Hey, how much for two? 400,000. That's way too much. I'll give you 80. For two? Are you kidding? Oh, okay, okay, make it 95. Get out of here. 102, that's my final offer. I can't give him away. I'll throw in an extra 500. Are you crazy or something? Okay. Incredible. I've never seen anyone haggle over 10 Jenny before. Wow. Whoa, look at all the people watching. Get out of here. Oh, okay, man. Now he's going up one Jenny at a time. All right, I'll take it. Oh, he did good. 110,580 Jenny each. I'd say that's a pretty good deal for a brand new Beetle. Yeah, but did you have to put on such a show? I mean, I've never seen anyone get applause for buying a cell phone. But you know, thanks to him, we saved ourselves a whole lot of money. <laughs> I'm a natural at it. What you saw was nothing compared to what I've done in the past. You know the beetle I got? It only cost me 80,029 Jenny. You know you're wearing them down when they ask you to get out of their store. <laughs> I doubt he'd last long in a real auction. Man, I'm good. That's for sure. So, you guys learn then, right? Yeah, we sure did. You're gonna have to learn it after you're done studying at medical school. No, cuz... I already did. You did your job well today. For our next assignment, you'll attend the underground auction at the cemetery building and bid on the following items. Money is no object. You will get them. The mummy of Princess Corkle. DNA verified tissues used by the actor Sonny LaMarche. <gasps> Kurta eyeballs, also known as Scarlet Eyes. That is all. Princess Corko's mummy will open the auction tonight at 9 o'clock. We'll split into three groups, bidders, surveillance, and protection. However, we got a tip that someone might attack tonight. Take all necessary precautions. That is why Miss Neon cannot attend, so listen up, Ivlenkov, Baze, Tocino. The three of you are in charge of bidding. Be sure to remain flexible and react to whatever transpires. Your main objective is to acquire the items. Wait a minute. You sure three is enough? Maybe all of us should go together. They only allow buyers to attend in groups of three. Weapons and communication and recording devices are not allowed inside. The Mafia community is responsible for the building's security. That's why there have been very few incidents in the past. Once inside the main auction hall, everything is based on the honor system. It's an unspoken rule to leave all grievances at the door. Don't even cause so much as a minor disturbance and refrain from talking to anybody else. Good luck, now get to work. The minimum bid is 8.9 billion and all you have is 5 million? Listen, you two. In case you haven't heard, Southern Bees is the most prestigious auction house in the world. You guys can't even afford to pay the entrance fee. Okay, so maybe this game holds some clue as to where your dad is going. But seriously, getting a copy of one will be impossible. But on the Hunter website, it said the difficulty level of getting one was easy. 
Easy? Yeah, that's because all you need is money to get one. Ha! Huh, the world is all about money! Yeah, but if all it takes is enough money to buy something, then it isn't really a treasure, is it? You guys are professional hunters, so let's figure out a way to get a copy of this game, alright? Let's see what we can find on here. There are plenty of stories of dreams coming true in York News. Search for personal experiences. Okay, I bet there's Simple lots Simple and of stupid. He must be here an enhancer go. too. Hmm, huh. what's this? Oh, try clicking on that. Okay. Let's see. Swap meet. A gathering for the auction and barter of objects. The buyer exhibits various items. And the seller picks the one he likes and offers an exchange with his own item. Look, there's also winner-take-all and conditional auctions. There's a lot of different types. Winner-take-all is a normal auction. I wonder what this is. I should have kept my mouth shut. Conditional auction, where the seller specifies a non-monetary condition and hands over his item to the first buyer who satisfies that condition. A condition? Mm. What's that all about? I get it. This gives me a good idea. Huh? Gone, Chilua. Let's go. I've just thought of a foolproof way for us to make some money. Come on, Chilua. That's a pretty lame joke, you know. You're the one who started it. Oh, yeah. Come on, step right up over here. You don't want to miss this. A conditional auction is about to get underway. The prize, a diamond ring worth three million. It was bought today and comes with a certificate of authenticity. And the game is arm wrestling. The first one to beat this boy gets the ring. Only 10,000 Jenny to participate. Look at that scrawny kid. We couldn't beat him. All right then, who's first? I'll take him on. Calm down, calm down, one at a time. I'm first. Thank you. Okay, let's <laughs> Sorry, kid. The first thing I gotta do is hold back and match their strength. The second thing, pretend to struggle so it looks like they can beat me. Are you ready? Go! Whoa, he's strong! Can he do it? Oh, this is it! This is it! Oh, better luck next time. All right, who's up next? I'll show you how it's done. Another loser. Is there anyone else? Hey, guys, form a line. So this is Leorio's version of an auction. But at 10,000 Jenny per person, it'll take another 889,999 wins to make the 8.9 oh, billion we need. Sorry. Next, please. He's beaten 150 guys? What's with this kid? He must be close to his limit. He's starting to sweat. Must be getting tired. I hope he doesn't lose until my turn. So close. Maybe next time. I almost had him. I feel bad for these people. They're getting scammed. I hope this doesn't come back to haunt me. Anyone else? Who? Hello! Our first female challenger! Hey kid, go easy on her, will ya? Tell me, what's a girl like you doing in a place like hey, this? Hey, she doesn't want to hear your cheesy pickup lines. Mm. I will do my best. Uh, okay, me too. Okay, right arms up, please. All right. Ready, go! And they're evenly matched so far. Yeah, this is gonna be a close one, folks. That was close, but no cigar! Thank you very much for your time. No problem. You're welcome. See you later. Thanks for coming. Too bad. Hey, what happened to my 10,000 Jenny? You were really trying, weren't you? Uh-huh. I wonder who that girl was. Maybe she's the women's world champion of arm wrestling. I really wanted that diamond. But that boy was too strong. No, Shizuku. You too weak. You should have used your left hand. Oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, 
Why didn't you use strong arm? He put up his right hand, so I did the same. I want to go back there and try again. No time. We have job to do. Besides, buying and bidding are against our ways. We're a band of thieves. We take what we want. Can you hear that? It's not going well. All right, everyone. We're taking a break. We'll be back in a moment. Come on, guys, let's eat. I thought we'd better grab a bite now since we've got enough customers to last all night. But in five minutes, let's get back to work. Mm hmm. Oh. 250 means we've made 2.5 million jenny so far. Well, that's not too bad. But our goal is 8.9 billion, so that's another 800,000 matches. We have a long way to go. And Gone's up for it! Don't you know? Nothing's impossible for him! Yeah, but the problem is time. At this rate, the auction will be long over by the time we make enough money. Hmm? Is the Mafia meeting tonight? Yeah, I think an underground auction is about to begin. It's something that us normal folk can't get into. I heard that the Mafia is running this one, so it makes sense that they'd all be in York New City tonight. I never knew you were such a fountain of knowledge. Well, unlike you guys, I did my homework before coming here. And let me tell you, the streets of this town will be a dangerous place tonight with all those criminal types crawling around. Hey, what's taking so long? Yeah, let's go already. You better give the customers what they want. So, you guys are ready, huh? Okay then, this conditional auction is open! Right now she's fast asleep. Her tantrum must have worn her out. But I'm sure that she'll still be upset when she wakes up. There's no need to be concerned though. We're going to get everything she was planning to bid on. But it was her goal to win the items herself on this trip. Mm. So when she finds out mm. she missed the auction, I can't imagine how disappointed she'll be. All right. I'll cut my plan short and make my way there. I'll leave it up to you to get the first item, the mummy. That should cheer her up a bit. Yes, sir. <sighs> It's me. How's it going over there? Nothing unusual. So far, everything appears normal. Yes, of course. We'll let you know if anything changes. They're certainly not taking any chances. Nobody but the Mafia community's own security personnel can get within 500 meters of this building. It's like a fortress. It's necessary. Without it, this city would turn into a war zone. This underground auction attracts criminal elements from all over the world. I guess so. May I ask you a question? Sure. It's about the Scarlet Eyes. What exactly do they mean to you? And why would you ask me that? I don't have an ulterior motive. I'm only curious. It's just that when Dalzaline showed us the photo of them, your heartbeat became very erratic. It's a rhythm that contains strong feelings. Wrath and vengeance. It seems there's no point in lying to you. I belong to the Kurta clan. Under normal circumstances, our eyes are blue, but they turn red when agitated. That's why I wear black contact lenses to escape detection. I'm searching for the eyes of my brethren. That's the reason I became a hunter and took this job. I have to reclaim them, no matter what the cost. Are you going to tell Dalzaline? I won't, because I don't want to be killed. Hmm. You're very perceptive, Melody. The heartbeat tells the truth. Just now, as you spoke, yours was calm, yet it was also very cold. It's the melody of someone who's willing to sacrifice his own life to get what he wants. The rhythm suggests that while you bear me no ill will, you'd kill me if you had to. Why did you apply for this job? Why do you ask? No reason. 
Just curious. <laughs> I'll tell you, but how will you know if I'm lying? I'll be able to tell by your eyes. I'm a pro hunter, like you. I guess you could call me a music hunter. I'm looking for a particular piece of sheet music. Even though your eyes say you're not lying, your eyes show that you're not telling me the whole truth. <laughs> well, I guess the eyes don't lie either. What I'm looking for is unique. The Sonata of Darkness. Supposedly, it was composed by Satan himself. It has four solo parts, for the piano, violin, flute, and the harp. They say anyone who performs or listens to it will be horribly cursed. That sounds like it could be an urban myth. It's hard to believe that such a thing could really exist. <gasps> that was the price I paid for listening to the flute solo. Just one movement was that powerful. You should have seen how I looked before I heard it. My friend who played it died. His whole body was like my arm. His friend had taught him the solo on the condition that he never play it. It was a careless thing to do, but we were drunk. With this deformity, I also got the ability to hear people's heartbeats. But I'd exchange it all to be how I was before. I don't want anyone else to suffer like we did. And that's why I have to find it. And destroy it. I chose this job because I thought the quickest way to find the devil was to be among evil people. Not so different from you, is it? It's time. The underground auction is about to begin. This crowd is pretty impressive. A lot of them are Mafia capos, but most of the bosses are here as well. Wonder why? What? I mean, it's only an auction, right? Why don't they just send someone to represent them? This is more than just bidding on lot numbers. It's a chance for the families to flaunt their wealth, and the community receives 5% of the proceeds as commission. That comes from the long-standing tradition of paying tribute. The underground auction gives them an opportunity to demonstrate their power. Reputations are made and lost on what they bid on and how high they're willing to go. I've even heard that some families have bankrupted themselves by getting into bidding wars that drove the prices so high they couldn't afford to pay up. That doesn't surprise me. Sounds like our boss might be one of them. Didn't Dalzolin say money's no object? What the hell's going on? Ivlenkov, what's the problem? I was just noticing that Rotberry, Trink, Remy, and Echigo haven't showed up yet. Neither has anyone from their families. Really? Don't those guys attend this auction every year? None of them have ever missed it before. The only thing they have in common is that they all had their fortunes read by Miss Neon yesterday. Now I get it. That must be why Dalzolin didn't want Miss Neon to be here. Things could get pretty ugly tonight. But nothing changes as far as we're concerned because it doesn't really matter who attacks from where or how. We just do the job we were hired for, remember? In the basement where prices rise. Your bed shall be made with your brothers. Do not descend stairs you never climbed. In numbers, do not compete with others. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you join us here tonight. But if you don't mind, we skip the formality and introductions and kill you as fast as possible! What's up? <laughs> Behind me! Protect us! 
Eleven assistants, thankless heroes! Gah! Nan bullets! He's an emitter, too! They blew through my Nan, but kept enough kinetic energy to inflict fatal wounds! Tuccino! Get out of here! You've got to warn them! Looks like Miss Neon's prediction was right on the money. Ah! Bozzy, run! Warn Dozeline and the others! That's the end of that, then. There's really no point in me even be here. Okay, Blinky? <laughs> Suck up all the corpses and the blood and the personal belongings from this room. Plus the chairs. This guy's still breathing. What the? Who are you guys? Not that it matters, because after what you've done here tonight, you're all as good as dead. The Mafia will track you and your families down. Every one of you will suffer the pain of hell. Family? What is that? Something's happened. A bunch of cars just pulled up to the front entrance. Their guns are drawn. I'd better call Dalzaline. All right. You two should head over there immediately. I'll contact the others and tell them what happened myself. Let's go. Right. What's going on? Where is everyone? Find anything? Nothing. No one's here. It seems as though everyone who was in the auction hall has gone missing. Mafia security has just arrived. It's pretty chaotic over here. Tocino and Ivlenkov would have tried to leave some kind of clue behind. Have a look around. All right, we'll try. Let me know. Find anything? Nothing. There's nobody there, but just gone. Look at this. That's Bazé's. I see. Bazé, Tocino, and Ivlenkov wouldn't have allowed themselves to be captured. It's safe to assume that all three of them have been killed. You and Melody wait there until we find out how the families will react. You'll get further instructions soon. It's empty. Everything's gone. How the hell did they get it all out of here? There's only one way, and that's off the roof. Yeah, I understand. All right. Spread the news to all the families who are here in York now. Be on the lookout for any suspicious airships. And take their leader alive. A reward will be offered from the community to the family that catches them. Really? So it's exactly as Neon predicted. Security has obviously been compromised, but we've got to do our part just like the rest of the families. And we still got to get that mummy. Do all that you can with the men you've got, but remember, keep a strict watch over Neon. Yes, sir. Karapika, I'll stay here with Linson and prepare for the boss's arrival. You and Melody rendezvous with Squala and the others at the Central Square overpass and start searching for the thieves. <sighs> Do you think Bazé's really dead? I hope not, but we don't have time to think about that now. Of course, you're right. Even though we were warned of a security breach, we still couldn't prevent this. Anyone capable of orchestrating a robbery of this magnitude would have to have incredible Nen abilities. There's only one organization who could pull this off. The Spiders. They're here. <laughs> Come on, get in! There's no time to waste! 
Hurry! There was nothing there? Yeah, the vault was completely empty. According to the auctioneer, who was the only person who knew anything, all the items are relocated somewhere else a few hours ago. It was as if... they expected this would happen all along. Huh. Their timing was too perfect. Maybe there's a Judas among us. No, there isn't. Besides, I don't consider Judas to be a traitor. The story goes that Judas betrayed Jesus to the Romans for 30 silver coins. It's hard to imagine how much the Mafia would have to offer one of us to betray our own. What would that person have to gain? What could any of us be offered that we don't already have? Money? Fame? Status? If you really think about it, is there anyone among us who would actually be seduced by any of those things? No. Nobody's like that. Right. And not only that, there's something else that doesn't add up. If there was an informant, then the Mafia's response was pitifully inadequate. We're Class A bounties. If they had really known we were coming, shouldn't these security have been on higher alert? From what you tell me, the Mafia didn't go out of their way to put in extra safeguards. They just decided to be a little more cautious than usual. Another thing has got me wondering. When they moved the items to another location, it seems they didn't inform the security personnel or the guests. So here's my theory. Even though there was a person who did provide some sort of information, it probably wasn't all that specific. But despite that fact, someone high up in the Mafia community trusted that information enough to act upon it. Well, I still don't get it. I mean, who was passing what information to who, I'm not sure. Anyway, what do you want us to do now? Did you find out where the goods have been transported to? Unfortunately not. Even with his dying breath, the auctioneer guy said he didn't know. And Phaetan worked him over pretty good, so I gotta believe it's true. I feel most sorry for him. But before he died, he did mention who was in charge of moving it. A shadow beast. One of the elite guard of the Ten Dawns. Apparently each Dawn had their best man oversee security at the auction this year. I've never heard of the Ten Dawns. Who are they? Do you know them? They're the family heads of the Mafia community which runs the underground auction. They have territories in ten regions across six continents. Since there are ten of them, most people call them the Ten Dawns. This is the one time of the year that they all gather in one place to discuss their plans and issue orders. Really? And the ones who carry out those orders are the Shadow Beasts? Okay. So if they were the ones in charge of security, they didn't do a very thorough job. After all, they didn't try and stop us from carrying out our plans. Yeah, you're right. In fact, the auction security was so bad it was almost funny. So, the only question is, how did they transport the items from the vault? That's the thing. The auctioneer told us that one of those shadow beasts showed up all by himself. Now that vault must be 25 square meters, and it was loaded top to bottom. He stepped into it carrying nothing, and he walked out carrying nothing. But sure enough, the vault was cleaned out. It was a tall guy who called himself Owl. I guess he must have a nan ability that's similar to Shizuku's. Hmm, <laughs> probably. The Mafia should have realized by now that since 500 guests vanished, they must be dealing with Nen. Oh, too bad. Who's next? <sighs> the elite guard of the Ten Dawns, the Shadow Beasts. I can't wait to get my hands on them. Just give me the word and I'll take them down. Sure. All you have to do is create a big enough disturbance, and then they'll come to you. It's a hot air balloon! That must be what they used to escape! Looks like they're headed toward the Gordo Desert! Alert all the families immediately! They're heading to Gordo Desert. Got it. We're on our way. We'll be there soon. Ah, uh, there it is. 
just floating over the city while we're scrambling around down here trying to figure out what happened. Hot air balloon? Are you sure it's not an airship? All right, whatever you do, don't let it out of your sight. If they escaped in a hot air balloon, then where'd all the guests disappear to? It seems these guys we're dealing with aren't an ordinary bunch of thieves. Exactly what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting we take this situation seriously, otherwise we're gonna get burned. And the Ten Dawns must have drawn the same conclusion, or they wouldn't be sending in the Shadow Beasts. The Shadow Beasts are coming? Must be worse than I thought. I'm only gonna say this once. You can either be buried or drop to the bottom of the ocean. It's your choice. The longer you drag this out and make us wait, the more we're gonna make you suffer. Is it just me? Or do all these Mafia guys sound the same? Not only that, they all dress the same. I'm not gonna have to clean up your mess again, am I? That's not necessary. After tonight, our job over anyway. Okay, good. All right, don't worry guys, I've got this one. I don't want you getting in my way. Yeah, okay, but it's not gonna be any fun for us. Guess we watch fighting. Well, this is kind of a letdown. Don't worry. Huh? huh? Look what I brought. Why you bring cards here? I just grabbed them before we left, that's all. Hmm. <laughs> Hold it. You the ones responsible for what happened at the auction. We sure are. You must be a genius. Any more questions? <laughs> you sure you want to keep acting tough with all this firepower against you? Tell me, who's pulling your strings? Huh. You ready? Here I go. One. Two. Three. Uh, let's see. Four. Huh? <laughs> Well, nothing's gonna stop them now. The mightiest of all. These are the moments he lives for. <laughs> Seven. It's Gorilla versus Ants. Their guns are useless. Bullets won't scratch him. His body is most strong, Spider. Here come the reinforcements. They'll only get themselves killed like the rest. Nine. Damn, the road's blocked! We're gonna have to go on foot. Looks bad down there. We'd better hurry. Not yet. Why not? Something doesn't look right. Oh, come on. This won't even get me warmed up before the Shadow Beasts get here. I thought the Mafia was supposed to be tough. This the best you can do? Okay, I've got the target. Prepare to fire on my mark. Three, two, one, fire! <laughs> that stung a little bit, stupid rifles. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Two direct hits and the target is still standing. Impossible. We're using high caliber armor piercing cartridges. Snipers are so annoying. Always sneaking around ready to shoot you in the back. What a bunch of sissy. <laughs> oh, and down they go. You ugly monster over here. Hmm? You want to mess with the Mafia? Then take a look at this. It's a super bazooka. It trashes tanks. I'm going to blow you to bits. You've hurt my feelings. Comparing me to a mere tank? What an insult. Go to hell! Direct hit! He's dead meat! Huh. Let me see. I called out. What? Okay, not bad. I actually felt that one. Yeah, you can run, but you can't hide. What's that guy? 
made of? That big explosion just now, what was that? He blocked a bazooka shell with his hand. He's a Nen user, probably an enhancer. He's incredibly powerful. Almost everyone who arrived here ahead of us is already dead. All their firepower has no effect on him. You mean that bazooka shell didn't slow him down at all? Take a look for yourself. You'll see the enormity of his aura. And the piles of corpses. Who is he? And where did he come from? He's tearing those mafia guys apart with his bare hands! What are we supposed to do against that? You couldn't pay me enough to go down there. No, me neither. We'd have zero chance of survival. Maybe, but I won't go back until I carry out the mission I was hired for. Are you insane? Under the circumstances, I'm sure the boss would understand. Maybe we should try and contact <gasps> Alzaline. You hear something? A heartbeat. There's an extra heartbeat here. It's getting closer. <sighs> oh, what the hell is this? Shadow Beasts. Shadow Beasts? Yeah. The Tendons, the leaders of the Mafia community, bring in the Shadow Beasts whenever they have something that needs to get done. This is the first time I've ever seen one of them. What an unconventional rhythm. It's hard to tell if it's even human. Tell me, which family do you belong to? Well, we're bodyguards who are hired to protect Mr. Nostrad, who is part of the Ritz family. Nostrad? You're working for him, huh? It appears you have Nen abilities, but I suggest you stay out of this. Yeah, because these are no ordinary thugs you're up against. They're professional assassins. To them, killing is a part of their daily routine, like waking up and eating breakfast. So I guess you could say they're not much different from us. I can't believe it. The community is called in the Shadow Beasts. These are the ones who attacked the auction. He looks like an interesting adversary, from what I can tell. <laughs> All I see over there is a dead man. He has no idea what he's up against. All right, proceed according to plan. Eight, I'm out. I called doubt! Let's see the cards. Oh. <laughs> you guys up for another round? Hold on. How can you be so confident you just lost another hand? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> they hear. Hmm? Ah. Shadow beasts. Should we go down there? We should not. Uvogan told us not interfere. Fine by me. The shadow beasts. What did you do with the stuff from the auction? What did you do with the people from the auction? We killed them. Where's the stuff? Tell me or I'll... Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Now it's my turn. I called out. Uh, no way! You didn't even look at the cards! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're in a bind. How about I give you a choice? You can either be killed by me here underground, or you can be killed by my associates up above. Game over for ya! It's no use. When I'm underground, my power increases exponentially. Struggle all you want, there's no way you'll escape me. If you got any last words, you better say them quick. What are you doing down there anyway? You look like you're about to take a nap or something. Well, we shouldn't let Earthworm have all the fun. Let's go! Lie there like a dog all you want! This is the end for you! No mercy! No mercy! I don't think so! He's serious now. There'll be no mercy for you! As 
spider tattoo. He's one of them. I, I don't believe it. I didn't know an ability like that existed. A spider. Uh, you're not going to find any trace of that worm. One shadow beast less. Once again, that Big Bang impact of his lives up to its name. Yeah, but doesn't he just infuse his right hand with Nen as he makes a regular punch? Well, I suppose it's just a regular punch, but that's one of the reasons it's so effective. If you ask me, there's no better attack for someone who's mastered the Enhancer abilities to the maximum level. But I shouldn't say maximum level too loud, because if he heard me, he'd probably be offended. After all, his ultimate goal is to build up the Big Bang impact to the point where it's as destructive as a nuclear warhead. I know that's what he's trying for, but really, can he do it? Absolutely. That's what makes Enhancers scary. They never know when to quit. Well, who knows? Maybe Uvogan can do it. Yeah, maybe. All right, who's gonna be the next to die? So you're in the Phantom Troop. Pugh. He's cocky. Hmm. I think someone needs to teach him a lesson. You're in for it now, fathead! All right, I'm starting to like you guys. So reckless, it'll kill ya! <laughs> I can manipulate my body here and turn it into sharp needles. That's why they call me Porcupine. You have a very powerful punch, but it won't do you any good if it never connects, right? And if you don't do something quick, my quills will puncture your face too. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Uvogan's skin is thick as steel, but they can actually break through it. It's obvious that these guys are powerful Nen users. I'm really quite impressed by them. Hey, Uvogan, you need a hand down there? You just mind your own business. All I gotta do is shake this little hairball loose, and then I'll bust his head wide open. Go ahead and try, but I've got a thousand quills buried in your flesh, and you'll never get them out. Have it your way. You can be my own personal boxing glove. Like this! Huh? That didn't work either, did it? Like I said, I can manipulate my body hair, which means I can also turn it into soft, flowing locks. <laughs> you little twerp! Wow, you really don't know when to give up. <laughs> Your right hand is useless. You're finished. You're making this too easy, you muscle head. I'm gonna chew you right down to the bone. Let's see you try. Oh! oh. All bra, no brains. Oh, so it's starting to work. There's a neurotoxin in my fangs. Right now, you're paralyzed from the neck down, which means your brain function, what little there is, will be unaffected. You'll still feel the pain we're gonna inflict upon you. Have fun. Why he not use lethal toxin? He would be winner now. He must be one of those guys who gets his kicks from torture. I got lots and lots of leeches living inside my body. Some can be used for medicinal purposes, while others carry contagious diseases. But I got a very special type picked out just for you. These leeches are like no other. They enter your body through a wound, and then burrow their way through your veins, and end up in your bladder where they lay their eggs. My favorite part is when millions of baby leeches burst out into the world as you urinate. Except most people don't get to enjoy it because they die from the sheer agony of it all. Leeches crawling inside you all through the night and you just get to sit there till you're dead! Oh. Uh. No, no, no. Need some salt. Guess I shouldn't have expected much. He didn't look very appetizing. But you're not the only one who can bite. I only need to move from my neck up to kill you. A bullet! No! A piece of leech's skull! Will he shoot a piece at me too? Well, he can't hurt me. My quills will deflect any bullet. Hmm. No! Oh, can't deflect sound with those quills, can you? Yeah, that's right! 
That's what I'm telling you! All the guys who went in first have been wiped out! Yeah, even the Shadow Beasts. <gasps> hey, Karapika, where do you think you're going? The answer's obvious, isn't it? I'm going to capture him. Hang on a second! I've got Dalzaline on the line. It makes no difference. Oh yeah, that's right. It looks like Karapika's gonna go in on his own. What a terrifying melody of anger and hatred. It's overpowering him. He can't even think clearly. Karapika, are you sure you want to do this? It's suicide! Just wait until we can come up with a plan and we'll go in together. Karapika! It almost seems like he wants to die. I have to think of something. Field in spring. It's a melody that never fails to relax me. I hope it has the same effect on all of you. Uh, yeah, it did. And now that we've had a chance to calm down, we can work together to come up with a plan. Yeah, that's a good idea, Melody. Hang Melody, on I'll ask Dalzali you don't need to worry. My mind is clear, and for that, I thank you. But I'm still going to capture them. Squala, tell Dalzaline. Huh? I know what I'm doing, so let me go in. You moron! You should have warned us! Yeah, what are you trying to do, make us all deaf? Sorry, guys. But if I'd stopped to warn you, these guys would have figured it out. Besides, you should all be fast enough to cover your ears before the sound reaches you anyway. That may be true, but still. See, I told you, it ain't my fault. Shizuku, huh? come down here and suck the poison and leeches out of my body. Your vacuum cleaner can handle it, right? Well, Blinky should be able to suck out the poison, no problem, but not the leeches, because they're living creatures. Really? Then what the hell am I supposed to do? Oh, this ain't good. Hey, why don't I take a look at them? Uh -huh. This right here is a spotted leech. You definitely don't want any of these inside you. It takes about 24 hours for them to reach your bladder, and once they get there, they lay their eggs and die. The eggs hatch pretty quickly, and then the baby leeches are excreted through your urine. The pain will be enough to kill you. But don't worry, it's fairly painless to pass on hatched eggs, and they need a high alkaline environment to hatch. So all we have to do is keep your body's pH level as low as possible. In my opinion, from now until tomorrow, you should drink plenty of fluids and pee as often as you can. And once you notice that your urine is turning from black to clear, you'll know you're okay. So what you're saying is I gotta drink all night. That's right. Hurry up, Shizuku. I need to get this poison sucked out because I got some drinking to do. Coming. Hey, guys. He needs to get started. Does anyone have anything to drink? I almost forgot. I promised to meet someone in the city later tonight. Is it alright if I leave? Go ahead. Just make sure you're back here by 6 o'clock tomorrow. Sure. Hisoka. Stay out of trouble. Of course. Come on! We've caught a member of the Phantom Troop. Yes, I'm positive. Of course, I know the place. We'll be there soon. You saw it? Yeah, I did. The chain came out of nowhere and wrapped around his body. Must have been a shadow beast. They only succeeded because Uvo had the poison and leeches in his body. So what do we do? Should we try and rescue him? We can find out where he's going. My inn makes the thread I attach to Uvogan invisible. Unless they see the needle stuck in his leg or use Gyo, they'll never know it's there. 
This Nen thread will lead us right to him, no matter where they go. Hey, did I hear you right? Did you just say you caught me? Because if you think these chains can hold me, you're wrong. Kill me now, or you'll regret it later. Be quiet. What are you, stupid? This is your once-in-a-lifetime chance, so drop the attitude and get it over with. <clears throat> I said be quiet. What power? The poison might have paralyzed me, but that has nothing to do with it. This chronic kid is tough. He's got to be a manipulator, but he's infused his chain with so much power. He has to have a lot of enhancing ability, too. I'm not beaten yet. This is far from over. My chain jail can only be used on you and the rest of the Phantom Troop to deprive you of your liberty. That's its only purpose. Don't kill him yet. We gotta interrogate him first, remember? If I use this ability on anyone else, I will lose my life instantly. This is my vow. A self-imposed restriction and proof of my resolve. This contract with my Nen carries a risk, but its reward is great power. Hey, is he gonna be all right? He's fine. You sure about that? Someone's following. Seriously? Look, they're catching up fast. Where'd they come from? There was no one following us when we left the city. I don't think anyone saw us leave. So how did they find us? <gasps> there, some kind of Nen thread. What the hell? Look, there's something in his calf. What is it? <clears throat> Got it. Damn. They found it. That's okay, we've already caught up. Damn it, Basho! Drive faster! <laughs> what happened? They just disappeared. I caught a glimpse of something in the rearview mirror. It looked like someone jumped onto the hood of their car. It was probably another shadow beast. All right, Dalzaline wants us back in the city. On our way. Let me out of here! I'm impressed. You're no average Joes. You were able to react fast enough to get out of that car. I better stay on my guard. Hey, come on. What about me? Nobunaga had bad position. What an ability. I've never seen anything like it. Anything wrapped in that cloth gets shrunken down. Yeah. He could carry auction items in his pocket and then return them to their original size. So I guess that must mean he was the transporter. Uh, hmm? huh? Who are these guys? Are they really members of the notorious Phantom Troop? They don't look like much. Hey, aren't there supposed to be a total of 10 Shadow Beasts? Then this must be the rest of them. That's odd. Guy with chain took Uvo, and they still in car. So wouldn't that mean he's not one of the Shadow Beasts? Easy. Ask them, and we find out. Hey, wake up! <laughs> well now, you probably know why you're here. You're going to tell us what you did with the items from the auction. First tell me what time it is. I want to know how long I was out for. You don't seem to understand the situation you're in. I'm the one who asks the questions, not you. The only time you're going to speak is when you're telling me what I want to know. 
Go ahead, give it your best shot. And if you can make even a scratch on my body, I'll answer any question you want. My colleagues tell me you're a pretty tough customer. That firearms and even a bazooka won't have any effect on you. Which is why I've prepared something special just for you. Huh. This sword is one of the finest weapons in all the world. I can channel the power of my aura through it. You might say this is my secret Nen ability. I know it's not really fair to take advantage of your current condition, but from what I've heard, you don't care what's fair and what isn't. Oh, I'll start here, where your ten has been ruptured. Oh, unbelievable. This guy's not even flinching. And his aura isn't blocking out the pain, his mind is. His unbreakable willpower is the source of his strength, and that's what makes his body so tough. He's on a whole other level. I still can't move. It'll take some time. I ate dinner around 8 p.m. My stomach tells me it's around midnight. You say that sword's one of the finest weapons in the world? It feels kind of dull to me. I mean, you've only been able to dig it in about five millimeters so far. But I'll consider that a scratch, so I'll answer any question you want. But how about I make you a little deal first? If you release me right now, I'll spare your lives. You insolent! I'm under orders to recover the items stolen from the underground auction. Since you don't seem to have them, there's no reason for me to stick around here. Huh? Wait a minute. Weren't you the ones that stole the items? The vault was empty by the time we got there. The Shadow Beast had cleaned it out sometime earlier. I guess word hasn't gotten down to you guys at the bottom of the pecking order. I don't believe he's lying to us. So he was serious? That deal he offered us wasn't just a bluff? This could get ugly. Everyone screws up once in a while. Even though we wanted to, we haven't stolen anything yet. <laughs> so now it's time for you to live up to your end of the deal and let me go. You don't have to worry about what we might do next. Hmm? What happened to the guests? What? Our colleagues were among them. Oh, sorry to hear that, but it couldn't be helped. Why did you kill them? All part of the plan. Tell me, how many people have died because of your selfish plans? <laughs> That's enough, okay? We have no use for this prisoner since the items that we were trying to recover are in good hands. I'll turn them over to the community. We have other work. The safety of our boss and obtaining the auction items he's looking for remain our top priority. Your revenge will have to wait. I'll contact the community. No, oh, too bad. I guess that means our deal is off. I don't remember making a deal. All I remember is some muscle-bound idiot shooting his mouth off all on his own. This is Dalzaline of the Nostrad family. We've captured a member of the crew responsible. I'd like to hand him over to your custody. I'm surprised. How is it possible when even the Shadow Beasts failed? I'll explain later. Send someone over right away. Did you say the Shadow Beasts failed? That's right. They're dead. All of them. There! Check it out! Uh, sorry, Leorio, but what you're doing is called Ten. What? If this is Ten, what's Nen? Oh man, why am I not surprised? <laughs> oh, seriously, you guys actually mastered this stuff? Yeah, it was a piece of cake, wasn't it, Gone? Doing good, Leorio. You'll master it in no time. That's wishful thinking. That's it, I quit. Knowing ten's good enough for me. I'm taking off. What? Where are you going? I'm just gonna go for a walk. This late? York New is a city that never sleeps. Things are getting started for me, but you kids should be in your PJs. Leorio. What? If you bump into Karapika, tell him to stop by our hotel. 
He's probably busy working, but Gon's going to be disappointed if he doesn't get a chance to see him. You know, a kid who still can't tie his own shoes shouldn't be bossing me around. You should say, hey, Leoria, would you consider doing us a big favor? You're the one who acts like a kid, and you barely know how to handle tents, so don't give me any lectures. Yes, that's unbecoming of a gentleman like me. Now, if you'll excuse me. Good night, kids. Don't stay up too late. While he's out there, I hope he runs into Karapika. Yeah, right. York News bigger than Whale Island, you know. Still, you never know. Anything's possible. I guess they'll call sooner or later. That is why you decided to buy a cell phone and made sure he had your number, right? But anyway, now that old man Leorio is gone, why don't we check if there's an R-rated movie on cable? There could be something good. It's one of the things that makes staying in hotels like this fun. Let's make the most of it! Hmm. Tonight's the night. Meet you at the rendezvous. The community's sending over some men as soon as possible. I'll take over until they get here. Why don't all of you take a break? But just to be on the safe side, let's give him a triple dose of nerve gas before you go. Dalzaline? What is it? I have an appointment that I need to keep. I won't be gone for more than two hours. All right, you can go, but only for that length of time. Thank you. You're early. Oh, you're looking a little pale. In fact, you look like a completely different person. Been having a tough time with training. Kilua? Huh? Hey, Kilua! Huh? Did you want to tell me something? You know, you really should check this out, Gone. It's awesome. No, that's okay. Seriously, you won't believe what you're missing. <sighs> what are you kids still doing up? Oh, hey, Leorio. Welcome back. Did you see him while you were out? Like I told you, I just went for a walk. Yeah, right. Didn't I tell you not to stay up late? You should be asleep by now, like Kilua over there. Huh? What? No way! He's not sleeping! He's only pretending! Uh, you've got a lot of arm wrestling to do tomorrow. If you don't get enough sleep, you'll regret it in the morning. Good night. Yeah, good night. <sighs> don't worry. I don't intend to fight you now. I don't have time to waste. Tell me everything there is to know about the Phantom Troop. All right, if that's what you want. The Phantom Troop is made up of 13 members. Each of them has a numbered spider tattooed on their body. An applicant can defeat a current member to join. Members can be replaced. Or, in cases where there's a vacancy, the leader finds someone new. The group mainly steals and kills, though they do some philanthropic work once in a while. That much I know already. I've been crawling along with these spiders for several years now. I earned my membership after defeating number four. But you know, all I wanted was to defeat their leader. But I haven't had the chance yet. He's cautious, always on guard. Every time I've seen him, he's had at least two people at his side. 
And once a job is finished, he vanishes without a trace. I haven't been able to figure out where he goes. I actually came here tonight to offer you a proposition. Don't you think we'd have better luck achieving our goals if we worked together? What are you suggesting? Would you like me to tell you what abilities each of them have? Although, truth be told, I only know seven of them. What do you say? You interested? We're in the basement. Is he still alive? Yes. We just used a nerve gas to paralyze him. Like they say, the tailor makes the man. Hmm? <laughs> when they told me, I couldn't believe my ears. I mean, how could you let yourself be captured? Right. This wouldn't have happened if you let us help you in the first place. You're such a nerd. Want me to sew your mouth shut? You wouldn't do that, would you? Come on, Shizuku, do your thing. Okay, Blinky. Suck all the poison and nerve gas out of Avogan's body. Could it be? There. That should do it. for it now. I'm gonna tear him apart. His friends too. I won't stop till they're all dead. Hold it. Huh? <laughs> to get out of here, you're gonna have to go through me first. I'll buy them whatever time I can, even if it's just a minute or 30 seconds. <clears throat> Well, what's your answer? Do you want to work together? Or do you want to go it alone? Hisoka, I have one question for you. Do you know where the Scarlet Eyes are? When did the Kurta clan get wiped out? Five years ago. Then I'm afraid it happened before I got my membership in the club. The leader sells everything after first reveling in the spoils. I assume the Scarlet Eyes were no exception. Unfortunately, that's all I know. But I can tell you, until you squish the head of a spider, it will never stop moving. Aren't you going to get that? Yes, what is it? Karapika, something bad has happened. Number 11 escaped. What? On his own? No, it was the Phantom Troop. They came disguised as the Mafia. They must have intercepted Dalzaline's call. Dalzaline is most likely dead. They must have realized we were coming. Probably because they heard Uvo from here. Still, you have to admire the fact that he sacrificed himself for his crew. I guess we should be getting back. The job's done, right? Yeah. The Shadow Beasts have been disposed of and we found all the stuff from the auction. You guys go ahead, but you can tell Krolo that I won't be coming back until I've had a chance to settle the score with that scrawny chain boy. All of us are in the car, heading for Rendezvous Point B. Meet us there as soon as you can. Okay. It seems you got your hands full, so I won't waste your time. I'm asking you to form an alliance. It's not like we're getting married. It's just a little give and take. If either of us comes across some information that might benefit the other, we share it. And if you find the conditions unacceptable at some point, far be it from me to force your hand. So no worries. Well, what's your answer? Tomorrow. Meet me here at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> You shouldn't be taking off on your own like this. Krolo's not gonna like it. Don't try to stop me. I've got a score to settle with that chain boy, and I'm not gonna let anything stand in my way. So what if you were humiliated? 
You need to let this go. Seriously. Oh, really? Come on, that's enough. York New City is huge, Uvo. Do you really think you're gonna be able to find that chain handler? Well, yeah. I, uh, I got some ideas where to look. By yourself? You're starting to bug me, Shell. I'm just trying to help. Hey, Uvo. You think we're just gonna let you take off so you can hunt this guy down? Hmm. There's only one way to settle this. Everyone okay with that? Heads. Tails. It's heads. That figures. Enhancers have good instincts for better. Yeah! I'll tell Krolo what's going on. But remember, we have a meeting tomorrow, and attendance is mandatory. So don't be late. You're telling me what to do. Yeah, right. You should know that I'm the one who always gets things done on time. Huh. I'm taking your car. You're driving, Shaw. Huh? Wait, shouldn't you be drinking? You don't want those leeches to hatch? Oh, man, I totally forgot. We'll have to stop somewhere and steal a six-pack. <sighs> All right, let's head back. tried his cell phone, but there's still no answer. Well, that doesn't surprise me. He couldn't have survived. Not against that monster and all those friends he was with. It's still ringing in my ears, his voice as he came up those stairs screaming out, Where is that damn chain boy? We got away just in time. I'd hate to think what would have happened to us if he'd have shown up even 30 seconds earlier. Ah. <sighs> All right, so what's our next move? First, we need to check in with the boss. You really want to take orders from her? She's just a kid. Yeah, but she's not the real boss anyway. It's Light Nostrad. He's the girl's father. In fact, our orders have always come from him. Dowsling was just head of security. Unfortunately, he was also the only one who knew how to get a hold of him. Maybe there's a number in his cell phone. Miss Neon must know it too. Yeah, probably. In that case, we should definitely check in with her. Boss. Boss. What time is it? Two o'clock in the morning. Huh? What about the auction? It was cancelled. Cancelled? Are you serious? The auction hall was attacked by a band of thieves. Baze, Ivlenkov, and Tuchino died at their posts. We've also lost all contact with Dalzaline. He's probably dead too. Huh? But what about my mommy? Huh? Did those losers steal it along with everything else? I wanted it so bad. <sighs> Don't worry. Apparently the community moved all the auction items to a safe location. Really? Then everything's okay! <sighs> so, when's the next auction gonna be? As far as we know, it hasn't been rescheduled. Ah, uh, why not? Anyway... Since we weren't left with any orders, we're not sure how to proceed. What do you recommend? What are you asking me for? I don't know what to do. Try asking my dad. His phone number's listed right in here. Uh. Squala, you call. What? Why do I have to? Because, out of all of us, you've been around the longest. Yeah, that is true, but I'm not doing it! I can't! I don't want to end up like Dalzaline! Besides, I don't want to get stuck babysitting this spoiled brat. It ain't worth it. I think we'd all agree that time is of the essence, so why don't we settle this with a vote to be fair? I'd like to nominate Kropika. He single-handedly captured a member of the Phantom Troop and demonstrated his ability to lead many times. He's the most qualified among us. Yeah, all right. I second the nomination. Please, you have to do it. Then it's decided. All right. I'll call him as your representative. But let's leave the final decision as to who becomes the leader to Nostrad. It doesn't seem appropriate for me to call your father directly. Would you please call him and introduce me? Yeah, sure. Daddy, it's me, Neon. There's a bit of a problem. There was a robbery at the auction house, and Dalzaline might have been killed. Everything's moving so quickly. 
I didn't think it would. Now is my chance. Here. Mr. Nostrad. Is it true? Is Dalsalain really dead? Yes. I can't believe it. He uses Nen for crying out loud. You could fire ten bullets at him and he'd walk away unscathed. It was the Phantom Troop. What? The spiders? We've all agreed I should temporarily assume leadership. We thought it best to call you to see if you had any orders. You're in a better position to judge that, so I'd like to hear what you think first. Well, sir, I think that we should have your daughter leave your canoe at once. In the event of unforeseen circumstances, I'm not confident that we could protect her. I agree, and I do appreciate your concern for my daughter, but I'd also like to respect her wishes as much as possible. Don't you think her safety should be our top priority? <sighs> All right. I'll arrive there tomorrow evening. I'll have a talk with Neon myself. Your name is Kurapika, right? Yes, sir. I'm putting you in charge until further notice. Yes, sir. Your first order is, keep your eyes on Neon until I get there. Yes, sir. Miss Neon, your father's on his way. He'll be here by tomorrow night. I'll make him take me shopping for new clothes. His instructions were for us to stay in the room until he gets here, just to be safe. Aw, I was gonna go to the casino. Mr. Nostrad confirmed our decision to have me act as his representative in Dalzaline's place. I'm going to do everything in my power to get us out of this situation, but I'll need all of you to work with me. We're in this together. Now there's something I need to look into. Squala, I think it would be a good idea for you to stay here and guard Miss Neon. Huh. Hey! Cool, but we can play cards, like poker, or maybe we could try gin rummy. Huh, found it. Polio and Company Limited owns the building where you were held captive. It looks like it's a dummy company for the Nostrad family. Is there any way you can use that computer to find out what other properties they own here in York, New? There sure is. And let's also check if their people are staying at any hotels around the city. Front desk, how may I help you? I want to confirm the name this room is registered under. With enough money, you can access all sorts of information on the Hunter website. You should get yourself one of these. They can be really handy sometimes. Yeah, but unlike you, I never hang on to my money. If you want something in life, steal it. Nice, you're an inspiration to thieves everywhere. Here it is. They have two other properties in Yorkney besides the one you were held in. And it looks as though the Nostrad group is staying at three different hotels. I bet the chain user's in one of them. You should have no problem finding him by morning. Here you are. It's a map. It'll help get you on your way. I'll stay mm. here and tidy things up, okay? Thanks, man. I love you. Mm. <laughs> ah! Get off! I don't want your love! The only thing mm. I want from you is money! Oh yeah, but I told you I never ever use money. Ah! Mm. Yeah, what? Don't let your guard down! Sure. That scrawny punk with his little chain. He has no idea what he's gotten himself into. I'm gonna rip him apart with my bare hands. Have a look. What am I looking at? This is the website that's for professional hunters, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It lists all the properties owned by the Nostrad family, including those in York New City. Huh. Are you serious? And there's more. It also lists information on each member of the family, including names and photographs. Fortunately, we're not on there, probably because we were just hired. Oh. The problem is that the room we're in was reserved in Dalzaline's name, and he's on the payroll of one of the family's dummy companies. All they have to do is cross-reference the list of known family associates and the guest lists of all the hotels in York New. So sooner or later, they'll discover that we're in this room. Professional hunters have all this information? So it's only a matter of time. 
The longer we stay here, the more danger we're in. We have to move Miss Neon to another room. Another room? You mean we're gonna stay in this hotel? Moving to a different room is faster than moving to a new hotel. Squala, go to the front desk and get another room, but don't check out of this one. And don't use an alias, put the room under Melody or Basho's name. Right, I'm on it. Once you've secured the new room, don't leave it under any circumstances. But what about you, Karapika? I'm staying right here. Such a clear and steady tune. Even when a savage monster is closing in, your heart beats without fear. Let's go get Miss Neon packed up. Yes, but... Don't worry, I'll be all right. I know the strength of my enemy. I'm not about to die. Take care of Miss Neon. It's true. You won't let yourself die in vain. I believe in you. Well, we're doing pretty good so far. We've got the diamond ring, which is worth 3 million Jenny, the 2.4 million we pulled together from our savings, and the 2.75 million from the arm wrestling. That brings us to just over 8 million Jenny. Now, to place an opening bid on Greed Island, we need at least 8 billion, so we've still got a long way to go. We're gonna have to think outside the box, because it ain't happening through legit means. Arm wrestling is legit? Uh, no. Trust me. I've got a solution, guys. Uh... All right, a conditional auction is underway. The prize, a diamond ring worth three million. The game, arm wrestling. Whoever can come up here and beat the boy will get the ring. It's first come, first serve. Don't miss your chance. Uh, Leorio. What is it? You said you had a solution to our problem, but this is the exact same thing we did yesterday. Think so? I know so. We started out just like this yesterday, and it worked for a while until word got out that no one could beat him. And it's the same crowd. This is the kid who beat 500 guys in a row yesterday. And I heard that at least 20 of those guys came away with their arms broken. Someone said the kid's so strong because he was raised by gorillas. <sighs> Sounds like no one's gonna want to challenge me now. Don't worry. This is all going exactly as I planned. Huh? Arm wrestling all these guys was only a way to lure in the big fish. Out of my way. Where's the kid? Got one. Hey, how's this supposed to work? He can't even reach. Gon, let's switch places. I got this one. Huh? Hey, I hate to be the one to cause trouble here, but that wasn't the deal. Yeah, I know. But I'll throw in an extra five million. You don't have any objections, do you? If this guy beats me, it's all yours. What do you say? Hmm. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Go! <laughs> Anyone else here feel like losing their money? <sighs> Thanks a lot. You ruined my business. Oh well, I guess that's it for today. You're one tough guy. I like you. Yeah, but these two kids behind me are tougher. Oh, really? If you've got some free time, you should drop by. Come before five. We caught a fish, but how big? Don't kill me. I'll tell you what I know. The guy who caught the spider isn't even with us. He's just a bodyguard for the boss's daughter. Daughter? Yeah, she's some kind of freak. She's into collecting body parts like eyeballs and guts. Oh, she tells fortunes, and they're always right. She's got lots of clients in the Mafia community, even some of the Dons. <laughs> oh. The only reason our boss got where he is now is because of his daughter and her predictions. There, now you know everything I know. So you're gonna let me live, right? The ability to tell the future. Krolo was right. There was no traitor among us. An underground auction. Yeah, this is it. Where the criminal underworld sells their black market goods. So the arm wrestling scam was your way of getting attention, huh? Everything up for auction is extremely rare, which is why even the opening bids are so outrageous. 
We're talking hundreds of millions. You sure seem to know a lot about this stuff, Leorio. Yeah, what have they been teaching you in med school? Never mind. Wow, this crowd wants blood. You can feel it in the air. Huh? Welcome to this conditional auction. Looks like you're all as ready as I am to get this party started, so let's cut right to the chase. The name of the game for this evening is Hide and Seek. You're gonna love it. Hide and Seek? Huh? Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Now please take a look at the photos being handed to you. Those seven people are your targets for this hide-and-seek conditional auction. Hey guys, it's that girl. Yeah, I remember. She was the one I arm wrestled. Your goal is to capture as many of these seven targets as you possibly can and bring them in to us. And for each target you capture, you'll receive a check for two billion Jenny! <laughs> Two billion Jenny? So that means if we catch all seven of them, we'd make 12 billion Jenny. Uh, more like 14 billion? There's no deadline. And we don't care if you bring in the targets dead or alive. Use whatever methods you want. We won't ask, you don't tell. When you catch one of them, call the number on the handout. Be aware the registration fee is 5 million Jenny. If you don't want in, then return the photos on your way out. Yeah, two billion. I'm gonna send you the photos right away. Go online and post an ad offering a reward for any useful leads. What do you say? Isn't it obvious? We're gonna register for this thing. I mean, we can make a fortune catching a couple of these guys. Are you sure about that? Hey, what's wrong? I thought you'd jump at the chance to do something like this. We've come this far, we can't turn back now. Hmm, I knew you'd say that. All right then, easy come, easy go. Five million Jenny, we're in! Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Why are you just sitting here? Let's get going! There's no big rush, Go. I mean, didn't you notice something wasn't quite right with that auction? I don't know. Seemed all right. At least to me. You don't know. Well, that figures. He's still got a lot to learn. Uh... Hmm. <sighs> Listen. Normally an auction is a place where you bid for things. But this auction was offering a paycheck, which is weird, don't you think? Yeah, I guess you're right. And did you see the ring they had set up back there? I bet they were planning to use it for some kind of betting scheme at first, but then something happened, so they came up with that hide-and-seek thing. You think so? Yeah, it was a sudden change of plans, which means they want these guys found fast as possible. Yeah, apparently the Mafia can't handle them on their own. That wasn't a conditional auction, even though that's what they wanted us to think. They've put us all to work for them as bounty hunters looking to collect a big paycheck. They're spending a lot of time and money on this. They must be desperate to catch those guys. Yeah, how come? Come on, it's not like I know everything. It's not hard to figure out. Just think, who could have the Mafia running scared like this? We know that the underground auction didn't go as they had planned. In fact, it wasn't an auction at all. The only logical conclusion is that the items that were supposed to be auctioned off were stolen by these seven people. And who'd be crazy enough to steal from the Mafia, not to mention all the stuff from the auction? The answer's pretty obvious when you think about it. Only one gang could pull that off. The Phantom Troop. It's gotta be. There you go. So these guys in the pictures, they're the Phantom Troop. Now you know why they're willing to pay two billion for each of them. Gone. You should try calling Karapika. I'm sure he'd want to have a look at those photos. Yeah, good idea. Should we go? I'll let you pick where you want to die. Some place where we won't cause a disturbance, because you'll be making a lot of noise when I kill you.
He's not answering his phone. Well, it's probably because he's too busy to talk on the phone right now. Hey guys, check this out. They're handing out these photos on the street now too, which means Karapika is probably on top of this whole phantom troop thing already. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. So Karapika got a job as a bodyguard. Mm-hmm. I bet he's protecting some underworld VIP. That way he could get closer to finding those scarlet eyes. Well, then maybe he got dragged into what happened at the underground auction. He wouldn't let himself get dragged into anything. Since the Phantom Troop is involved in this, then he would have been diving in head first. I'm sure it's all just a part of his master plan. Who knows, he could have already caught one or two of them by now. Yeah, you're probably right. My dad. Huh? My dad was hired to eliminate someone in the Phantom Troop. <gasps> it was the only time I ever heard him complain about a job. He said it wasn't worth the money. But you know, I think he was actually complimenting his target when he said that. I remember him saying to us, Stay away from the Phantom Troop. That was around three years ago, I think. You ever tell Karapika that story? No. What would be the point? So the question now is, what are the three of us going to do? Yeah, I wonder. It's two billion Jenny per target. But each target is a member of the Phantom Troop. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go after them. Because I won't gain anything if I back down. What? You want to split up and search for them? <sighs> if you don't like my idea, you should come up with one of your own. All I'm saying is their chances of catching these guys is pretty low. They're Class A bounties, remember? They already know the entire Mafia is looking for them. It's not like they're hanging around just waiting to be found. We don't even have proof they're still in York New City. You know what the Hunter website charges for info on the spiders. 100 million! We can't afford that! And that's probably just for one of them. To get info on all seven would cost us a fortune. I guess that leaves us no choice but to try and find them on our own. Yeah! What the? This is Gone. No sign of the target at point A. How about you? Leorio reporting from point B. No target here either. Kilua? Where are you? Mm? Seen anything? No, nothing to report. I haven't even spotted a real spider. Four hours staking out the busiest parts of town and nothing to show for it. I knew we weren't going to find any of them that easy. Maybe we should try searching for them using a grid pattern. In a city this big, that's like searching for a needle in a haystack. Hmm. If only we had a lead or something to go on. Hmm. You guys have any luck getting hold of Karapika? Not yet. I think he must have turned his phone off. Too bad. I bet he knows more about what's going on around here than we do. It won't do us much good if he doesn't want to tell us. What do you mean? Of course he'd want to tell us. I don't know. I think it's more like he doesn't want us to be helping him with anything. If he did want our help, he would have called us by now. <clears throat> well, we shouldn't just sit around. Sooner or later, Karapika's gonna answer his phone. But until then, we'll just have to do our best. I have a feeling that when we really need his help, he'll be there for us. He always has been. And if he needs our help, all he has to do is call. <sighs> all right then. First things first, let's check our home codes to see if anyone's left any messages that might give us a lead. Okay. Oh man, this is it! The leeches are coming out like Shalnak said they would. <laughs> oh, that sure is gross. Sorry about the wait. I have one question. Who are you? I know you're more than just an average Nen user. 
There's power in that chain. More than I've ever felt before. It's like you created it for some special purpose. Are you gonna tell me, or not? Before I answer your question... I have a question of my own. All the people you've killed over the years, do you remember them? Yeah, a few of them. If they left some kind of lasting impression, it's hard to forget them. It all depends on how well they fought. So what is this? Revenge? Did I kill someone you know? The Kurta clan. I ain't never heard of them. We lived in Luxo province. Five years ago, you attacked us for our Scarlet Eyes. Scarlet Eyes? What's that, some kind of jewel? Well, anyway, I don't remember anything about it. But if it was five years ago, I guess I would have been there. <laughs> it just doesn't ring a bell right now. When you destroy the lives of innocent people, what are you thinking? What goes through your mind? How does it feel to have that blood on your hands? Honestly, nothing really. You'll pay for your sins with your life! I tell you, this is what makes killing people so addictive. I need a fix. You want to know what gives me the most pleasure? Taking someone like you who's come for revenge and smacking them down! No! Chain. I don't know what he's done, but the amount of men infused in that chain is incredible. There's only one solution. Offense is the best defense! Gotcha! Not bad, not bad. He still had the energy to strike back after taking that punch. At least now his left arm's busted. He's not hurt? Only manipulators or conjurers could infuse so much Nen in that chain. But only enhancers can reinforce their flesh enough to block my fist. Who is this guy? I have another question. Was that punch the best you could do? Huh? <laughs> Don't worry, I'd say that was about 20%. Now here's what 50% looks like. You think you got the jump on me, huh? But you know what? I bet you want to tell me that I'll regret not using my chain while I had the chance. And we should attack each other at full force, or else this will be a waste of time. All right then. Full throttle! Is that full power? No one can withstand it! I was aiming to snap your backbone. You were quick to react, I'll give you that. You must have noticed the small changes in the dust out of the corner of your eye when I came towards you. I didn't think you could use it. I underestimated you. <gasps> you can usually get by on brute force alone. But your grasp of in is good enough that you can channel it during a fight, too. However, you're not the only one who knows how to use in. What? This chain jail has been conjured out of the power of my Nen ability, so it too can be made invisible using in. So all this time, you've kept that chain conjured to make me believe that it was an actual chain. Yes, if I pretend to be a manipulator with a real chain, the enemy will only watch out for the chain that's visible. And now, you've just proven that that is in fact the case. Oh! 
The capture phase is complete. How could he maximize both enhancement and conjuration abilities? It's not possible! People can achieve 100% mastery only in the type they were born with! You look rather confused about this. As a parting gift, I'll let you in on a secret. For now, I'm a specialist. Karapika, what is this? Your aura has increased exponentially now that your eyes have turned red. Hold on, try the water divination again. I wonder, is it possible? I become a specialist only after my eyes have turned red. Those eyes! Now I remember! Their eyes turned red when they got mad. They were hiding out in some backwoods. Krolo took quite a liking to those eyes. That was a big job. They were pretty powerful. So, you're the last one. This is getting interesting. Let's see what's more powerful, your grudge or me! It's apparent that you were born to be an enhancer. That's the limit of your power. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Even if you are successful, you have nothing to gain from it. You'll be left with emptiness and blood on your hands. Don't think you have the strength to carry that burden. In the end, it will destroy you. This could be your last chance. Don't do it. Turn away from vengeance. Let it go. What have you done? When my eyes are scarlet, I'm a specialist. And I possess 100% of all Nen types. 100% of every type? No, that's impossible. Look at my arm. All I have to do is enhance my healing ability. There. Those bones were broken into pieces. Now they're healed? Chain Jail. The restraining middle finger strips the spiders it captures of their freedom, and enforces Zetsu upon them. So that's why I couldn't produce my aura. Zetsu shuts off your aura. Prisoners of the chain can only break it with brute force. You're the strongest in the troop. If you can't break it, then the others won't be able to either. Enforce Zetsu? This is bad. Nen draws its energy from aura like fuel. Once your aura is shut off, your abilities are useless. Zetsu is tailor-made to cancel out Nen abilities. Not bad. He thought it all out. <gasps> now that your aura is neutralized, it appears my enhanced fist can do a lot of damage to your unprotected body. This is the outcome I was hoping for. I can finish you off with my bare hands and dispose of the rest of the Phantom Troop the same way. Tell me everything you know. Where are the others? Kill me. What kind of abilities do they possess? Just kill me. It's disgusting. The noises. The physical contact. The smell of blood, it all makes me sick. How can you slaughter people with your bare hands? Don't you feel anything at all? What goes through your mind? Answer me! I said kill me. This is your last chance. I've stabbed your heart with the stake of retribution. I'm going to set a rule. Breaking it will activate the chain and crush your heart. 
The rule is, you have to answer my questions truthfully. If you do, I'll let you live a while longer. Where are the others? Go to hell, you bastard. <laughs> Really? Same with me. No good information left in my home code or in my inbox. Now what? Even though there's a two billion Jenny reward to capture one of these guys, it's pretty much impossible to find out where they're hiding. Really? You'd need a professional intelligence network working around the clock to dig up anything on the Phantom Troop. But now we've already paid the five million Jenny registration fee, and I don't know of any other way to make enough money before the auction. So I guess all we can do is tell people we'll pay them for any information they give us. Yeah, but when we do that, we get a whole bunch of information, and who knows how good it is. We'd end up wasting all our time trying to figure out what's reliable. Hmm. We're not totally out of luck here. Huh? Seriously? What can we do? We just need to get more specific about the kind of information that we're looking for. We post something like, reward for recent sightings of the Phantom Troop. Yeah, okay. Is that any different from what we were just talking about? I mean, how's that supposed to stop dishonest people from sending us false information? We'll ask follow-up questions to verify the information. The more specific we get them to be, the harder it'll be for them to lie. We won't tell people where we think the Phantom Troop might be, so if we get a lead that says one of them's in York New City, it has a better chance of being accurate. Yeah, that could work. But we have no idea if they're still hanging around here. They could be anywhere. Yeah, you have a point, but I have a sneaking suspicion they haven't left town. They're carrying all the stuff from the auction, so it'll be hard to make a fast getaway. And we know the Mafia's after them. I bet they're watching every highway, airport, train station, and ferry terminal that leads out of the city. Yeah, probably. Hey, Kilua, doesn't the Southern Beast auction start on the 6th? Uh, yeah? Then we still have three days! If we try hard, we might catch one of them. Then we get him to tell us where the rest of them are hiding. Who knows? If we're lucky, we might end up catching all seven of them. Whoa, that's pretty optimistic, Gone. For this to work, we have to offer a huge reward. Yeah, but all we have left is the diamond, and that's only worth three million. Well, if you check the message boards, people offering reliable information start at eight million. Then I say we offer 15 million. What? Are you serious? Where are we gonna get that kind of money? He uses a chain. Then he's probably a manipulator or a conjurer. Even though Uvogan's strength can dominate just about anyone, a person belonging to one of those types is likely to beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Conjurers often enhance the items they create with a unique ability. Depending on what that ability is, it might cancel out Uvogan's strength. And a manipulator could, well, manipulate him. Huh. This is what we're going to do. We'll wait until dawn. If Uvo isn't back by then, we'll change plans. It can access the Hunter website. That confirms it's authentic. With the license as collateral, we can lend you 100 million Jenny. If that amount is repaid in full by September 10th, we won't charge you interest. Okay. Gone! Have you seriously thought this through? You're actually gonna pawn your license? But that's because I can't sell it. You know that if we can't repay the money, you might never get it back, right? Yeah, but a bank would never lend us this much money, and even if they did, they would charge us interest. Here's your contract, sir. Please sign your name at the bottom. All right. He, he is, is serious. serious. 
There. Okay, 100 million Jenny will be deposited into the account you've designated by this time tomorrow. Thank you. Hmm. All right, there's definitely no turning back now. We're going for it. Let's go. Mm. Yeah, woohoo. Hmm. Whoa. 100 million, as promised. Mm-hmm. We'll really have to be on the ball this time. That's for sure. And no spending it on chocolate well, robots. Yeah, I chocolate know. Chocolate robots? All right, what do we do first? Come on, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Really? First up, we need to buy the Southern Bees Auction House catalog. Southern Bees is York News' leading auction house. The catalog is the admission ticket, and it costs 12 million jenny. Auctions happen over five days, from the 6th to the 10th. But we won't know when specific items will go on the auction block without the catalog. Sounds cool. Come on, guys. Look this stuff up before you get here. Welcome to Southern Bees. We'd like to buy a catalog. We can help you with that. Right this way, please. And how will you be paying? Via bank transfer. The kids paying? Here is your catalog. Inside are descriptions of the items up for auction this year. Whoa, it's thick. There is a card included with your catalog. You'll need to show this to be granted admission. Up to five people can get in with it from the 6th to the 10th, but in order for you to take part in an auction, you have to register the card under one name. So whose name would you like to register it under? Hmm. Hmm. Mine! Gone Freaks! Okay, where is it? Let's see. Greed Island. <gasps> Here it is! Whoa! That's it, all right? Greed Island. The minimum bid is 8.9 billion. Now we just have to raise the money. Hmm. So after paying for the Southern Beast catalog, we have 90 million Jenny left. And that's including the diamond ring. And don't forget, we still have Leorio's license card. No way. Huh? Huh? Gone, where are you going? Huh. Excuse me, sir, how much is this? You really want it? Write down your offer on a piece of paper. Huh? Let me guess, you're a tourist. This is a silent auction bazaar. You want to buy something? Write down your bid. Whoever's got the highest bid before the time limit wins. You want that knife? Write down what you're willing to pay for it. No one else tops your bid, and it's yours. Hmm. Let's see. That knife. Hey, Leorio, you're good at haggling, aren't you? See if you can get that for us. It could be worth a lot. Just like I thought, this is the real thing. You gonna tell me what's going on here? This is a Ben's knife. It belonged to Benny Delon. He was a serial killer a hundred years ago. He created his own set of knives. This is one of them. It's like a collector's item. But is it worth the 300 Jenny we just paid for it? Yeah, I'd say it's worth at least 5 million. Seriously? You mean you didn't know that? Then why'd you bid on it? I'm not sure why, but when I first saw it, I had this weird feeling, so I thought I'd try looking at it using Gyo. That's when I saw a slight aura around it. Gyo? It's another type of men. It's hard to explain, but basically you focus your aura through your eyes. Hmm? You're right! Why didn't I think of this before? Huh? A foolproof method to make us a ton of money. Remember what Wing told us? He said when people are really good at what they do, whatever it is, they often use Nen without even knowing it. So something like this knife emits a faint trace of aura because the guy who made it was an expert at forging knife blades. I get it. We can go around to all these vendors and use Gyo to find treasures they think aren't worth anything. And then we turn around and sell them to somebody else for a huge profit. All, All right, right, here we go. We'll call our plan Easy Money with Gyo! Well, I guess it isn't necessary for all three of us to check if there are any new leads. So, I'll head back to the hotel and get on it while you guys go shopping. Sounds like a plan. We'll hit every market and bazaar in the city. I'll call if I hear anything. Good luck! 
I'd better see if I can learn that yo thing too. Yo, yo. Gyoza? Man, I'm hungry. <gasps> There's one. All right, found one. Hmm. Looks like a weird vase to me, but it has aura, so it must have been made by someone who's talented. <sighs> Another bid. Kilua told me to raise a bid by 250%. 250% of 500 would be 1750? Ah, close enough. At least we got three of the four items we found with traces of aura. Not bad, I guess. And we would have gotten that vase if it hadn't been for that Zepile guy. I know! He's so annoying! He quadrupled my bid on a couple of these things. Thanks to him, we spent more money than we had to. Well, let's take these things to an antique dealer and see how much they're worth. Hmm. Uh huh. You're right. These are all quite valuable. Let's take this painting. It's been signed by the artist who happens to be very famous. This signature alone is worth 150,000. Whoa! And this is also an exquisite piece. It's in good condition, and the original box and accessories are intact. This would go for 300,000. Whoa! But this sculpture is worthless, I'm afraid. But how can that be? We both saw ore coming from it. First, the box isn't the same age as the statue, and second, the carving is rudimentary. The artist didn't even engrave his name. I could give you 1500 for it. Aww, man. The box? That's worth considerably more. Huh? The wood it's made from is very rare. Aged wood like this isn't easy to come by anymore. I know someone who'd pay 100000 for it. Really? Mm-hmm. Now here's what I'm gonna do for you boys today. If you sell me these other two pieces for four hundred and twenty thousand, I'll give you eighty thousand for the box. What do you say? Huh. Trust me, you won't find anyone else who'll give you a deal like that. We need a minute to talk it over. No rush, take your time. But while you're doing that, would you mind if I took a closer look at it? Go ahead. So what do you think? Stop right there! Put that statue down! Don't let him fool you, boys. He was telling the truth about the value of the art and the doll, but he's lying about the statue. I don't know who you are, but I never lied to these kids. Oh yeah? That box ain't worth 80,000. You're just trying to get your hands on what's inside the statue. <laughs> Something's inside? Yeah, it's what's known as a wooden vault. It's a type of safe people used a few hundred years ago. If you know what you're looking for, you can see where it opens, but you're in luck. It looks like this one's never been opened. If it's the real deal, it'll be filled with riches. This guy was gonna take what's inside while he was pretending to examine it. Oh, no I wasn't! Thanks a lot. Who are you anyway? Hmm. Zeppile? Yep. First you drive up the prices of everything we were bidding on at the silent auction, and now you expect us to give you 20% of our profits from the wooden vault? Aw, oh, don't be like that. Consider it a consulting fee. I think I earned it. <sighs> that doesn't sound so bad. Without his help, that antique dealer would have ripped us off. Don't be such a pushover, Gon. You know we need a lot of money, so we can't start giving it away. The most we're gonna do is pick up the bill for this guy's lunch. Yeah, that's cool too. Uh, but let me just ask you this one question. How'd you appraise those three pieces? Appraise? We didn't. Huh? Uh, seriously? You didn't know what that stuff is worth? Then how did you decide what you want to buy? Is it just random? I mean, of all the stuff for sale, why did you pick those three things? Hmm. Should we tell him the truth? I don't see any harm in it. <sighs> I knew it had to be something. That explains why you chose the wooden vault without knowing what was inside, and why you passed up the chance to bid on those other valuable items. Huh? There were others? Yeah, brand name goods, classic trading cards, mass-produced collectibles, you know, stuff that wasn't handmade. Oh, okay. So, I gotta know, why do you guys want to make a lot of money? Huh? Huh? I thought you were only gonna ask us one question. Yeah, yeah, whatever, just tell me. Okay, let's make a deal that we take turns asking each other questions. Yeah, alright. We want to bid on a certain item that's up for auction here. That's why we need the money. Really? What's the item? It's our turn to ask a question. If we sell what's inside that vault, how much do you think we could get for it? That all depends on what's inside, but probably at least a hundred million Jenny. Hundred million? Now tell me what you want to bid on. A video game called Greed Island. Ugh, that way overpriced game? What about that weird vase of yours? How much are you hoping to get for that? This? This is junk. It's totally worthless. Huh? Now, 
How come you want to buy an expensive game like that? There must be a reason. You're right, there is a reason. I'm looking for my dad. I think he left clues on how to find him in the game. Hmm, what kind of hey, clues? Hey, it's our turn now. Why would you buy a totally worthless vase? Huh? I mean, why not go for the wooden vault if you knew how much it was worth? You knew we wanted the same things you did. Most people would go for the thing that's worth the most. But you picked a piece of junk over the vault and even over the doll. So tell us why. Hmm. To tell you the truth, I made this vase. Huh? I made it, but it's not my own work. It's a counterfeit, a knockoff, a forgery. Huh. I used to make these and sell them in the markets. I was dirt poor at the time, and it was the one way I could make a little money. But I quit once I made a decent living buying and selling antiques. This here is one of the first pieces I ever made. I guess I wasn't cut out to be an artist, because when I look at them now, I can see how poorly made they are. That's why whenever I see one up for sale, I try to buy it back. I get it. Then how much would the real thing be worth? It's my turn. <clears throat> okay, tell me, kid. What does your father do for a living? He's a professional hunter. Oh, really? I know a few hunters in the antiques trade. How much would the real thing be worth? It could bring in about forty to 50000 So your dad's a professional hunter. He must travel all over the world. It's gonna be impossible for a couple kids like you to track him down. No, it won't. Huh? Because I'm a professional hunter, too. <laughs> now, it's your turn to ask us something. Hmm? Oh, right. Uh, this'll be my last question. Can I be of any assistance to you? Huh? If you want to make decent money at the auctions, you've got to work with an experienced appraiser. With my help, your chances are a lot better than if you do it yourselves. Pay me whatever you think's fair. Sound good? Before we decide that, can I ask you one last question? What made you decide that you want to help us all of a sudden? It's simple. An appraiser could always use extra clients. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? The truth is, I was kind of flattered. It felt nice knowing that someone was bidding on my work, even if it was junk. No, it isn't junk! That vase is filled with your Nen, an aura-based power! Anyone can produce an aura, but it's really hard to control it. Surrounding things with aura is called Ten. You made it without even knowing how to use Nen, and that shows how talented you are. So it's not a piece of junk, not even close. If you've been in this business as long as I have, you become a pretty good judge of character. I guess you could say I appraise people too. When I'm conducting business, I rely on my gut. And right now, my gut is telling me that I should work with you. And that's my answer. Now, what's your answer? You've got a deal. We'll decide your fee after we see what you can do. Hmm. Whoa! Check out the aura! Yeah, they're authentic, and they're worth a fortune. This would bring at least 300 million. Oh! The next thing we have to do is take this stuff to the auction and sell it. You better not. Huh? You'd be wasting your entry fee. Dealers' markets are cash only. Entering something this valuable at the last minute won't get you the highest bid, so let's take it to an auction review. An auction review? It's a place where items that miss the catalog deadline are showcased. It gives dealers a chance to appraise the goods. But nothing simple in this business. A beauty like this could end up undervalued. Who knows what tricks they might pull? A genuine wooden vault. The glue used to seal the vault certainly looks vintage. Yeah, and I don't see any signs of tampering. Well, so far so good. Nope. Our troubles are about to begin. Huh? I bet this collection's worth a fortune. I don't know. Just because that wooden vault appears genuine doesn't mean that the treasure inside's worth anything. Here we go. Wooden vaults have fooled appraisers before. The wood might be 300 years old, but it could have been carved more recently than that. And even if the jewels are real, how do we know they're the same age as the vault? You really gotta do your homework if you want to buy an item like this. Hey, what's that guy trying to do anyway? He's casting doubt on its authenticity. If people get suspicious enough, it'll drive down the price. It's possible that both the vault and the contents are fake. And maybe the vault is genuine, but the contents could have been replaced. That tactic is known as a transplant. That makes sense. Don't start taking his side. 
Shouldn't we put a stop to this? This is what the review is all about. I mean, it's not exactly the most honorable thing. Everyone just wants to get the best deal. But it wouldn't hurt to put this guy in his place. And even if the wood is from the same era as the jewelry, that doesn't prove the authenticity of the vault. Hold on a minute. That's not the case with this vault, and I'll explain why. The glue used to seal it is clearly old. Just look how much it's oxidized. And who are you? I'm an appraiser working for the owners of that item. I can vouch for its authenticity, and there's no evidence suggesting it's been resealed. Oh, really? Not too many people know this, but the glue used back then melts when it's heated. Forgers melt the glue and reuse it, which makes the seal look like it's never been opened. It's a process known as cauterization. This guy really knows his stuff. Because so few people are aware of this technique, it's a good way to fool even the most savvy of appraisers. If it's done properly, there's no way to tell whether or not it's been opened before just by looking at it. Well, that's not entirely true. Cauterization would have left scorch marks along the seam. At the very least, you'd be able to see that the glue had been slightly discolored from the heat. But take a look and you won't see any of that. It's the real deal and you know it. Yeah, you'd think this slight discoloration is something you could see with your naked eye. But even professional appraisers don't know what they're looking at sometimes. Ugh. Whoa! Seriously, whose side are you on anyway? Do you have an official certificate of authenticity? No. 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 You expect us to take you at your word that it's the genuine article? Why didn't you get it authenticated? Because getting something certified takes too long. We just didn't have enough time to get it done for this year's auction, that's all. Well, in that case... So there's no way we can be sure it's authentic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is no good. They're hesitating. Hey, uh, excuse me. Hmm? What other scams are there besides cauterization? Uh, what? Gone! What are you talking to him for? Don't you know he's the one who's been trying to sabotage us? I don't care about that. I want to learn how to tell what's real and what's fake. Huh? Hey, kid. You the one who owns this wooden vault? <gasps> yeah. So tell me, what are some of the other tricks? Uh... One's called autopsy. How does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. You display an open, genuine wooden vault, but the treasures you put up for auction along with it are cheap knockoffs of the originals. People might not think they're fake because you have them out there nicely on display. It's kind of like bluffing. Oh, so the way we did it could be mistaken for an autopsy. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What are some others? Hmm? Uh. There's double seal and this kid where you I couldn't all. figure out why I found him so intriguing but I have an idea now he isn't concerned with whether something's good or bad he didn't judge me when I confessed that I made forgeries or when these dealers started criticizing the item he brought he's not looking to place blame on anyone he's just curious about everything if something impresses him he's open to it whether it's good or bad but there's a fine line there and he's in danger of crossing it for him, there's no point in appraising anything because he'd rather rely on his intuition. All right, what else? Uh, come on, kid, that's enough for now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Are we going to be able to sell it or not? We won't know till the auction starts. But some of the brokers there today showed some real interest. If their curiosity peaks when the bidding starts tomorrow, the prices could go up fast. Whatever happens, I learned a lot. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's like you've totally forgotten what we're trying to do here. <laughs> Which reminds me, there's another forgery trick that bald guy didn't tell you about. There is? Mm-hmm. Even the most experienced appraisers who know how to spot the cauterization trick have been fooled by this. Can you guess how it's done? Were the vaults left sealed at the auction review? Yeah, and everyone was so convinced these vaults had never been opened or cauterized that when the bidding started, people were willing to pay just about anything. And they were right, too. The seals had never been broken. But if the seals weren't broken and they were never opened, how was it done? Oh, I know! The treasure inside must have been fake all along! You're wrong. <gasps> I got it! They removed the original treasure by making another hole. Exactly. They made another hole away from the seal, replaced the jewelry inside with fakes, then patched up the hole. This method is known as ostomy. Even a kid could figure it out, but a lot of veteran appraisers have been fooled. Ironically, all their years of experience actually worked against them. They assumed that since the glue showed no signs of discoloration, the contents had to be authentic. That's what did them in. You never know what tricks they'll come up with next. Appraisers have to stay one step ahead. 
That's why we get suspicious when specimens look too perfect. Even a little bit of doubt can get blown way out of proportion. The human mind is a funny thing. It can be made to believe a lot of things. The trick I just told you about proves that. <sighs> well, Zeppile, I'm impressed. Hmm. Hmm? Gone, we've got a hit. There's no mistake, we even have visual confirmation. Two targets, a guy and a girl. Hey, where are you going? What about the auction? We trust you. Uh, Just get us the best price. Uh, hmm. All right, leave it to me. Those guys are something else. I got a feeling that if I keep hanging around them, something amazing is bound to happen. So, do you really think that guy could have killed Uvo? Anything's possible. The reason we were sent here is to find out what happened to him. Most people think he's a bloodthirsty monster, but there's more to him than that. You don't have to tell me. I know. Even if his opponent could put up a good fight, he still has enough brains and skill to come out on top. Yeah, I know. Hello? Hi, I'm the one who posted the ad online. You're late! Where are you? Not far from you. In fact, I can see you from where I am. They're at the table next to you, right? We're wiring the money now. You'll have it in a second. Oh! There it is! Whoa, it's a lot! Keep it down! Let's get out of here! Okay, all we know is Uvo hasn't come back yet. Maybe he's just late. I mean, he has been late for a meeting before, hasn't he? Never. Remember what he said before he took off? He said he wouldn't come back until he had settled the score with the chain handler. You were there, you heard him. Well, you just heard me say anything's possible, right? I didn't say he's dead for certain. But that's your hunch. Uh-huh. And your hunches are always right on the money. I'm gonna have to track that chain guy down and kill him. Without fail. So the billion Jenny question is... Now that we know where they are, how are we going to nab them? We don't stand a chance. Hmm? 
We can't bring him in. They're way out of our league. How can you say that before we even try? Keep it down. They'll see us. Oh, what do you think, Gon? I think it's too dangerous. Oh, man. I really thought I could catch these guys, but I guess I was being too optimistic. Me too. My dad warned me about the Phantom Troop three years ago, so I thought by now I could take them on, but... Oh, they're really that good? Well, imagine that there were two Hisokas sitting at that table. What do you think our chances would be? <sighs> Forget it, then. Just thinking about that sends a chill down my spine. Not only that, this is a pretty popular area. Why would two wanted criminals hang out in the open like this? There can only be one explanation. They are on a date. They are? No! That may be what they want everyone to think, but they knew that the couple sitting behind them were informants. Really? They're paying more attention to their surroundings than anyone else here. They'll sense us if we get any closer than we already are. And don't even think about looking directly at them. At first, I thought they were just being extra cautious because they know that the Mafia has been looking for them. But that doesn't explain why they'd risk going out in public in the first place. It's a trap. Yeah, they're acting like they don't even know people are hunting them down. It kind of makes sense why they're called spiders. What they do is wait. Wait for their prey to get caught in their web. And that's when they'll strike. We're being watched. And I have a feeling they're not amateurs. Right. But I'm not sure where they are. Think it's the chain dude? Can't tell. But if it is him, I'll follow Krolo's orders and take whatever steps necessary. I wonder if Krolo has taken an interest in acquiring that guy's ability. Machi, all Krolo said was for us to team up to lure out the chain user and bring him in. You're not forgetting what's implied in his orders, are you? Dead or alive, by any means necessary. That's right, dead or alive. He left the decision in our hands. I don't care how you interpret that, just stop telling me what to think. I was only making an assumption. You're the one with the agenda around here, not me. The mood's completely changed. There's so much tension. It's scary. What? Did they see us? They haven't spotted us yet, so just stay calm. You sure? Because I'm not like you guys, remember? I can't use Zetsu or whatever you call it to hide my aura. This wouldn't be a good place to use it anyway. We'd be too conspicuous. But as it is, those two aren't paying attention to anyone's aura. Instead, they're observing everyone, looking for any facial expression, eye movement, or behavior that's out of place. And right now, you guys are sticking out like a couple of sore thumbs. So just relax. And try to act natural. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> How's this? Oh yeah, acting natural. <sighs> Forget it. Let's decide right here and now. Are we going to bring in this chain user dead or alive? Flip the coin. Yeah, sure. Heads. Tails. Given the circumstances, you took the appropriate action. You made my daughter's safety your top priority. I appreciate that. Now I'd like to discuss our next move. First of all, I'll be sending my daughter back home. You don't mind, do you, Neon? I don't really have a choice, do I? Everything was stolen, the auction's cancelled, there's no point in being here. Oh, this totally sucks. There'll be another auction next year, so don't be sad. I'll do everything I can to make sure those thieves give back all the things you wanted to buy. I promise. Really? Have I ever broken a promise before? You've broken more than you've kept. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> You're Basho and Melody, correct? I'd like the two of you to escort Neon back to the mansion at once. Since you were seen when that vicious monster was captured, you'll no longer be completely safe. But you're in a better position than your colleagues because at least your photos aren't posted on the Hunter website. As a precaution, I'd like both of you to put on some kind of disguise, okay? Neon, honey, think you could pack your things and get ready to go? Okay. I call doubt. Now then, let's get down to business. The underground auction reopens tonight. The community doesn't really care who's behind all this nonsense. Their position is that they won't let themselves be made fools of, and I happen to agree with them. 
the Ten Dawns have sworn an oath to reacquire the stolen goods by any means necessary. Excuse me, sir, but when we questioned the Phantom Troop member, he told us they didn't steal the auction goods because the Shadow Beasts had already taken them to another location. The Shadow Beasts have been annihilated. Nine bodies have been found so far. The tenth, a man called Owl, was in charge of transporting the goods. It seems likely that he's been captured by the Phantom Troop. The Ten Dawns are well aware of the powers of Nen. Owl wouldn't even need to be tortured if one of the spiders has the ability to extract information. At this point, the community believes that the items from the auction have fallen into the hands of the Phantom Troop. And because the Shadow Beasts are now gone, professionals have been hired to deal with the Phantom Troop. Professionals? The Mafia uses murder to intimidate enemies, but it's not our area of expertise. When we're faced with a difficult situation like this, it's best if we leave it up to the professionals. I've been told the Ten Dawns have given the contract to the finest assassins money can buy. So we're free to stand back and let them dispose of the Phantom Troop. But this is a chance for our family to provide a service to the community. We can't stand by and let the professionals get all the credit, now can we? So I have an idea, Kurapika. I want you to join the assassins. You're the only one of us who's capable of killing a spider. Will you do it? They're on the move. So what are we gonna do? And remember, if we fight these guys, we're gonna lose. Well, we're not just gonna sit here and let them walk away, are we? Right. We've come this far. We're not gonna turn back now. Okay, you both are gonna have to listen and do exactly what I say. Gone, you and me are gonna follow them. We've gotta stay hidden from here on out. We'll use Zetsu. Whoa, how'd he do that? He just kinda faded out right in front of me. It's like he's transparent or something. Gone, I want you to promise me two things. If they manage to spot either one of us, we stop right away and back off. Mm -hmm. And if I decide we should stop tracking them, we abort with no questions asked. Understand? Mm -hmm. We'll communicate using our cell phones. I'll ring once for abort, so only answer the phone if I let it ring a second time, and put it on vibrate so they won't hear it. If they happen to split up for any reason, we'll stick with the woman. Leorio, get in touch with Zepile and make sure everything's on track at the auction. You got it. Looks like I won't get to be a part of the action this time around. Good luck, and be careful, guys. Staying alive is what matters most. Hey, Gone, you don't happen to have any tracking experience, do you? Not really, but I did track Hisoka during the Hunter exam. For real? And you weren't spotted? Mm-mm. And I was shadowing him for a whole day. Whoa, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hisoka even complimented me. He said what I did was masterful. Then maybe we should start bowing down and calling you master. <laughs> if you say so. Ow! <sighs> How come you hit me? No reason. I just had to. All right. I guess you're qualified then. The most important thing is that our targets never realize they're being followed. Okay, let's go. All right, you guys. I'll be waiting. Good luck to both of you. They're leaving the plaza and are heading into a narrow street. Roger that. Do you think they're on to us? No, we're fine. As long as we're using Zetsu, they won't spot us. But they're expecting to be followed, so be careful. Don't worry, I will. He sure is being casual about this. Maybe he doesn't realize that the second they discover they're being followed, it's all over for us. I'm practically tearing my hair out looking for any little change in their behavior. But we're okay so far. If they thought they were being followed, their body language would have betrayed them by now. No matter how good they are, there are some things they just can't hide. It could be a slight hesitation or some awkwardness in the way they walk. It would be almost imperceptible, lasting only a split second. It's something that most people couldn't even detect. 
but I've been playing these life or death shadow games since I was three years old. I would know it if their heart skipped a beat, and I would never be stupid enough to miss it. Think we're being followed? Oh, I don't know. Probably. If we are, they must have perfect Zetsu, because I haven't detected them yet. In that case, they must be well trained. Uh-oh. They're heading into the deserted part of the city. Maybe they've figured out they're being followed. Is this a trap? No, it couldn't be. They still don't know we're here. It's possible their hideout would be in this area. Maybe they're just heading back. If they are, then we're in business. So which one is it? A trap or their hideout? If it's a trap, we bail immediately. If it's their hideout, then we keep following them. I haven't noticed anything unnatural in their behavior so far. We keep going. Whoever it is, they're not taking the bait. Then it's probably not the chain user. Why's that? Because there's more than one of them, and I'm fairly certain the chain user works on his own. What makes you say that? Well, he was hired by the Nostrad family, wasn't he? Although, when he confronted Uvo, he was probably acting alone, because otherwise the whole Mafia would have made a move against us. If the Mafia had been involved, they would have used Uvo to set an example. They would have executed him and then dragged his body all over town for the Capos to spit on. And since nothing like that happened, I think the chain dude went rogue and killed Uvo on his own without even reporting it to his employer. So ask yourself, why would somebody who works for the Mafia and has their support decide to act alone? Must be a personal vendetta. You seem to be grasping at straws here, Nobunaga. Oh, shut up. It seems reasonable to me that someone who's out for revenge wouldn't be working with a partner or under the authority of the Mafia community. And that's why I believe that the chain user's on his own, which means that whoever's following us isn't connected to him. Nice theory. Too bad you don't have enough facts to back it up. All right. Then why don't you tell me what you think? Well, I've got another hunch. I think whoever's following us is related to the chain dude in some way. You and your hunches. What's the problem? <sighs> I've had it with you. You give me a lecture about the holes in my theory, but you expect me to rely on your hunches. What do you think, Kilua? They're either waiting for someone, or they're trying to draw us out. Draw us out? Do you think they've discovered that we're following them? There's a 50-50 chance, but even if they are onto us, they still don't know where we are. They're trying to wait us out, acting as though nothing's wrong, hoping that we'll give away our position. So now what? For now, let's just sit tight. Who knows? Maybe they are just waiting for somebody. <gasps> Go. I'm gonna hang up, so listen carefully. If either of us sees anything suspicious, we don't even question it. We just get out of here. In fact, the next time you hear your phone ring, don't even answer it. Just run. Nobunaga here. Hey, it's me. Yeah, what do you want? I'm just calling to see how you guys are doing. Well, we're being followed, but whoever it is doesn't seem to be in much of a rush. So far, we haven't been able to figure out where they are, so it could be a while yet. I hate it when that happens. Sounds like you could use a little good news. Huh? Good news? What's going on? Hey, Finks. I certainly didn't expect to see you here. I thought you were helping Krollo take care of that other thing. This is the fourth floor! Like they say, deceive your allies to deceive your enemies. 
We wanted you to behave as though you knew nothing, which of course you didn't. It was all Krolo's idea. Oh, man. That Krolo, he gets me every time. I should have known because for a time there I sensed too many Zetsu masters lurking around. They got us! We were so busy trying not to be discovered, we never realized they were tracking us! So, kiddo, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Well, well, well. Huh. Here we have the shadow of the chain user. Trapped with nowhere to go. I recognize him. So, little boy, you know who the chain dude is, don't you? What? The Nen user who's able to conjure a chain. We've been looking around for him. I think you're working together, and you've been following us because he asked you to. I don't know who he is, but it doesn't matter, because we have our own reasons for following you. I just need a split-second opening to get away. What do you think? I don't know. If he's playing dumb, then he's awfully good at it. I'd better make sure. First question, why were you following us? And keep your answers short. I guess a half-baked lie isn't gonna work. The Mafia put a huge bounty on your heads. A bunch of websites are offering a reward just for your whereabouts. Second question, who taught you how to shadow? We weren't exactly shadowing you. We were just using a technique called Zetsu. It's a way to shut off your aura. I'm training to become a professional hunter. Who taught you? An assistant master of Shingen Ryu. Third question. Do you know of a Nen user whose weapon is a chain? A chain? He's either a conjurer or a manipulator. So maybe you could tell us more about your master. Does he wear a chain around his right hand? I never saw one, but I do know for a fact that he's an enhancer, and all he ever taught me were the four basic exercises. All right, you can't tell us what you don't know. I just have one last question. You get two choices, so think carefully before you answer. Would you rather die now or later? It's your choice. You have three seconds to answer. It's no use. Don't even bother trying. Okay, I understand. We'll be right there. Well, little boy, your friend surrendered without putting up a fight. Uh, uh. They're letting us walk right in without even blindfolding us? Welcome to our hideout. <gasps> Better play dumb. So, Hisoka is a spider after all. Well, he's taken a liking to Gone, so there's a chance he might help us. But I won't let on that I know him. Ah! Idiot! Oops. What is it? Is there someone here you recognize? Well, uh, no, not really. Huh? <gasps> yeah, there is. We've seen that girl before. Is this true, Shizuku? Do you know them? Uh-uh. I've never seen them. Oh, I remember. Kid who arm wrestle. Huh? What are you talking about? You arm wrestled him a couple of days ago. You lost. Don't bother. Shizuku has no memory of things she forget. That's not true. I may not be the strongest here, but I wouldn't lose to a kid. Well, you were using your right hand. Huh? Really? But I'm left-handed. Ah, never mind. I must be thinking of something else. Yeah, obviously. Wow. Did you really beat Shizuku in an arm wrestling match? Mm-hmm. But we had no idea she was a member of the Phantom Troop. All right. I'm gonna take you on. <gasps> One more time. Are you ready? Go! Again. Ready? Go! Hey, 
Franklin, in terms of arm wrestling, where would you say I rank within the Phantom Troop? Probably around 7th or 8th. You're not weak, but you're not the strongest either. Yeah, well, the strongest arm wrestler among us was a guy called Evogen. But it appears as though he was killed by the chain dude. How many times do we have to tell you we don't know who he is? Listen, kid. The next time you speak without permission, I'm gonna hurt you. One more time. Uvo was your typical enhancer. Not very complicated. You could read him like an open book. But he was a real stickler about time. He used to slap Franklin and me around whenever we were late. I could never beat him in a fist fight. We've known each other since before the Phantom Troop was started. I'm closer to him than anyone here. He... he never... would've... He never, ever would've lost a fair fight! That chain handler must have ambushed him or something! I won't let him get away with it! I'll find him no matter how many people I have to kill! This chain user obviously has a big grudge against us. All we really know is that he was recently hired by the Nostrad family. A grudge against the Phantom Troop? Recently hired? No, it can't be! You might not know him personally, but maybe you've got some info on him. Think about it real hard. Don't hold back. Tell us everything that you know, right now! I don't know anything, and even if I did, I'd never tell you! <sighs> huh? <sighs> I thought you guys were heartless and had no feelings, but apparently you could shed tears for your friends! So then I gotta ask you a question. How come... How come you didn't have any of this compassion, even just a little bit of it, for all those countless people you hurt and killed?! <laughs> Kid, you too cocky. Go! If you move, you die. <sighs> Answer question. You know Chain Dude or not? Like I just said, even if I did know him, I'd never tell you guys. Feitan. Hmm? Don't do it. Don't do what? The thing you were just about to do. You know what I do? You were going to break his arm, right? First his fingers. I rip nail off. I don't care what it was, just don't do it. Why you give me order? I no need to obey. <clears throat> Take it easy, Nobunaga. Remember the rules? They apply to you too. No fighting other members of the gang. Yeah, I know that. We settle our disputes with the coin. Tail. Heads. Heads it is. Let him go, Feitan. So, what do you think we should do with them? They haven't given us any useful information on the chain user. If they know nothing, we might as well let them go. What do you think, Bakanoda? I checked them thoroughly on the way over here. And as far as I can tell, neither one of them knows anything. Are you sure? Yeah. They have no memory of the chain dude. Well, Machi, I guess your hunch was wrong for once. That's odd. But if Pakunoda says so, then I guess that's how it is. Gone. did anything happen to you before the ride over here? No, not really. They just asked me a few questions, that's all. Same here. Somehow she must have analyzed me and Gone without us even knowing it. But what kind of technique does she use? Whatever it is... She must be really good at it, because the rest of these guys seem to trust her judgment completely. What did she do to us anyway? They have no memory of the chain dude. Memory? Memory, that's it! But how could she be so sure? What about you? Do you have any information on the Nen user who walks around with a chain? She has the ability to read memories, just by touching a person. That's it! And that means we're in trouble. We didn't know who she was asking about then. But now I figured it out. If she checks me again, we're doomed. All right, we'll let them go since they're not related to the chain user. Yeah, no point in keeping them around. Wait, we can't be sure. Someone must be pulling the strings behind the scenes. We shouldn't release them until after we figure out who they get their orders from. But even if they are working for someone, it's not the chain user. Actually, I think that guy works alone anyway. So 
So you and Nobunaga are on the same page, then? Well, he can get all the information he wants through the Nostrad family. Yeah, that's a good point. Our objective is to find the chain user, so let's not concern ourselves with anyone else. Hear that? Good for you. You can go home to mommy now. No. They aren't going anywhere. Hey kid, why don't you join us? No way! We could be partners. You've gotta be kidding me! I'd rather die than be your partner! <laughs> Careful, kid. You'll hurt my feelings. You're an enhancer, aren't you? So what if I am? I just had a feeling you might be. <laughs> hey, you guys can take off. I'll keep them here until Krolo gets back. I'm going to recommend him for membership. You're joking. Krolo never go for it. Do whatever you want. But it's not going to be our problem if they manage to escape. Yeah, you can babysit them by yourself. I wonder why the Mafia stopped chasing us. Yeah, I don't get it. We should have seen them by now, although we have been moving around quite a bit. Two kids. Is it all we have to show for a day's work? Who knows, maybe the Mafia gave up. No, they wouldn't give up that easily. They're probably just preparing the next phase of their operation. We wanted to get information out of the Mafia by using the chain user as bait. But since we can't find him, we'll have to change our plans too. Alright, in that case I suggest we start going after them. I've printed off a list from the Hunter website which has photos of the Nostrad family employees that we should all take a good look at. Especially important are the five people on the first page. Apparently they've been working as bodyguards for the boss's daughter. His daughter? These are the guys who kidnapped Uvo. Although he did say none of them were the chain user. Hisoka! No thanks. What? Well you just said the chain user's not on the list. So why would I need photos of five people I'm not looking for? Yeah, but you never know. Forget it, okay? Huh? If he says he doesn't want it, then don't bother. She's right. And by the way, you should cross out a few of these guys. We already killed them. <sighs> I'm just saying that since we don't know the identity of the chain user, we have to find someone who does. Let's work together in pairs and do whatever's necessary to find at least one person on this list. We'll meet back here at 10 o'clock tonight, okay? Hang on. Nobunaga's staying here to babysit, so who am I with? Well, that leaves ten of us, so partner up with the odd man out. Odd man out? Hi. <sighs> this really hurts. Hey, Hisoka. You know who this arm wrestling kid is, don't you? So if you do, why do you act like you don't? <laughs> that was stupid of me. If I had made any sort of move, Hisoka would have killed me in a second. So I just stood there, doing nothing. His aura had paralyzed me. If they were going to kill Gon, could I have stopped them? Would I risk my life to save him? You can't. It's impossible. it's impossible. No. All that All matters, matters is, can, can you kill your opponent? opponent? No. If you know you can't, no. then don't try. That's your answer. No! Never fight a superior enemy, even if it costs you a friend. Stop it! <gasps> Ooh, you're scaring me. Too bad looks can't kill, huh, kid? I'm warning you. Step any closer. And you're dead. Kilua! Really? You think the kid's like Uvo? Yeah. Both of them don't hold back their feelings. And when they're mad, they get so single-minded. Huh. 
There's something else they have in common. Their powers are maximized when used for the sake of other people. Uvo liked to fight one-on-one, -on -one, but he was strongest when he and Nobunaga went up against a crowd. He was? Yeah, Uvo never would have admitted it, but he always worked better when he had someone to look out for. So, working with someone weaker made him work harder? Well, that would be one way of looking at it. <laughs> you don't mince words, do you? But you know, Nobunaga was better at fighting one-on-one. -on -one. It was his specialty, so when he had to fight alongside Uvo, eventually they'd end up at each other's throats. But that's not to say they were unhappy about it. It's impossible. We can't take this guy head on. We'll have to think of another way to get out of here. There's only one exit, and only one small window just to let some light in. How are we going to get him away from the door? It's dark. We've been here all day. It'll be even harder to escape now. I wonder how things are going with Leorio. I hope he was able to find Zepile and everything went okay at the auction. Hmm. Hey, Kilua, are you going to be all right? Yeah. Oh yeah! Do you remember the last trick that Zepal told us about? Not autopsy or cauterization. It was something else. I don't remember. Osmosis? No, that wasn't it. Okay, let's see. Autopsy is when you have a genuine vault but fake treasure. Cauterization was the one where you melt the old glue and... Gone. Uh, I'm gonna buy you some time. While I distract him, you make a run for it. What are you talking about? Don't even bother. I know you're good enough to recognize the difference in our abilities. You won't catch me off guard. That's obvious. I know that. He's got the only exit covered and has a clear view of the room. We can't talk or move without him noticing. He's completely focused. He's probably a master of Iaido, the art of drawing the blade, striking and resheathing in a single motion. It happens so fast. As soon as I move into the reach of his blade, I'm dead for sure. But that's what gives it meaning. You can't do it, can you? That's it, shut up! I won't know till I try. Hang on, what are you gonna do? I'll stop his first strike, even if it kills me, and that should give you enough time to get out of here. Ah! What the hell was that for? Stop thinking only about yourself. Huh? You shouldn't talk about dying like it's no big deal. Are you serious? You were talking like that earlier today when you said you'd rather die than become one of the spiders. Oh yeah, so what? I could talk like that, but you can't. Huh? <laughs> Listen, you idiot, in case you haven't noticed, this is a life-and-death situation. So don't start telling me what I should and shouldn't do. That's right. I'm the idiot, and you know everything. <laughs> You're wasting your time if you expect an enhancer to listen to reason. You guys crack me up. Don't worry. I won't try anything. Just sit tight. You don't have to prove anything. I know you're serious. 
We'll sort this all out when Krolo returns. Then if he doesn't think you're spider material, we'll let you go. But if you try to escape, I'll cut you open. So don't make me draw my sword. Or else you'll be killed. Ah! I remember now! The three tricks we learned about are cauterization, autopsy, and ostomy! You know, you're the one who figured out how it was done, remember? Ostomy. Mm-hmm. Huh? Remember now? Yeah! Great idea! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why didn't we think of that sooner? Yeah! I can't believe it took us so long to come up with something so simple! <clears throat> Now that we've got ourselves a plan, let's go! You'll only get yourselves killed, because when I'm in a fight, I don't show mercy or hold back. You fools! <laughs> They're smashing through the wall! When the exit's blocked, open another hole! They're smashing right through the walls! Huh. Now I'll get them one at a time. Oh, it's pathetic, really. Kicking down the door would have been easier. Now I'll just corner one of them in here and... Hmm. Smashed into the next room, eh? Through there, too. The light hair kid's gone down the stairs. I guess I'll go after the other one. Huh. What? Another wall?! Where'd he go? Maybe he's using Zetsu. Kilua! You there? Yeah, over here! Huh? How'd he get back there? Huh? Right. That last hole must have been a decoy. He broke through the wall, then doubled back and hid so that I'd run right past him. Damn these twerps. I think it's time me and you take this guy down, okay? Their auras are gone. They must be planning to jump me from the shadows. Fools. N is an advanced application of Ten and Ren. Aura usually envelops the body with a thin layer that's a few millimeters to a couple of centimeters thick. N expands that layer. It lets me feel any movement around me. A true master can detect a single leaf falling from a tree 50 meters away. I can make the layer around me expand to the striking range of my sword. That's my limit, but that's all I need. Try to move past me and I'll know right away. So come on! I'm ready for you. Mm, moron! I can't believe he actually fell for that! Have fun standing there all night by yourself, you knothead! But you know, I really would like to give him a beating. Forget it, there's no way. He would have killed both of us before we even had a chance to lay a hand on him. You sure? Uh, yeah. If we only know the basics of Nen, we wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> What's up with you? Now you're back to talking like the Kilua I know. <clears throat> You know, my job is to be the one who says all the crazy stuff, and your job is to keep me in line. That's what I need you for. Yeah, whatever you say. So what's the plan? Well, I guess that all depends on what we want to do. I want to kick their butts! Yeah, I figure. That's actually not so different from our original plan. Three of them are worth six billion in bounty money. But if we want to catch them, we've got to refine our Nen first. Their ability is way beyond ours. Somehow we have to figure out how to compete at their level. <clears throat> the quickest and easiest way to find out would be to ask Karapika. Huh? Why? Because he's the one those guys were talking about. He's the chain dude. What? You mean you haven't figured that out yet? He's the one? So that means he killed a member of the Phantom Troop. That's what it sounds like, yeah. Although, I don't know how he could have done it. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll know for sure when we see him. If he can do it, who knows? Maybe we still have a chance. After all, we learned Nen about the same time he did. 
What we have to do is develop the unique abilities we were born with. But not only that, if we want to go up against the Phantom Troop, we'll need immense power. More power than they've got. Right now, the only one who can help us is Kurapika. Yeah. I would have never made it this far without your help. Now let's both become hunters. Let's go find Kurapika. Looks like everyone's here now. So let's get down to business. You've been hired by the Ten Dawns to carry out one order, and that is to terminate all members of the Phantom Troop. They might make an appearance at the auction tonight, which is being held in the cemetery building, so all of you will be there providing security, and if any of them do show up, eliminate them. How you do so is entirely up to you, so use whatever method you want. There's only one thing that matters to us, and that is getting the job done. If you need anything, now's the time to tell us. Could I get a detailed floor plan of the entire building? A map of the area would help, too. We should probably have code names for each other. Let's just use colors. I'll be yellow. All right, I'll be blue. Then I'll be red. <laughs> We're not playing a board game. Hmm? What's that, old man? Who are you? I'm Silva. And I'm Zeno. Silver and Zeno? What kind of color is Zeno? They're not colors. They're our real names. Call us whatever you want, but you should know we don't take orders from anyone. We'll do things our way. Silva and Zeno. Don't tell me you're from the Zoldic family. Yes, we are. What? The Zoldic family? You mean the legendary assassins that no one's ever seen? Gee, it's not like we hide out all day and only go out in disguise. So Zoldic isn't an alias, but is actually your real name. That's right. Would you like our business card? It has our home address and phone number. If you want someone killed, give us a call. We'll even give you a 30% discount. <sighs> so they're Kilua's family. They're definitely scarier than the others. It's not that the rest of them aren't capable assassins but they're clearly intimidated by the superiority of the Zoldics. The only ones who can compare to them are these two. Who cares about code names? It's not like we're really gonna use them. Most of us work on our own anyway. I agree. We all have different styles, different ways of doing things. And I'm gonna do what I want. But our target is the Phantom Troop. It's too dangerous to go against them alone. There's only one sure way to deal with them, and that's to rely on teamwork. Ha! <laughs> teamwork. Hey, what do you think about that? Well, let's see. Forcing us into a team won't do us much good. If anyone feels like they need help, they can rely on the Mafia community. I think there'll be fewer conflicts if we work on our own. I know I'll be fine by myself. Five against four, that settles it. If you guys want to form a team, go ahead. Knock yourselves out. What time does the auction start? Nine o'clock? Yeah. Hold on. We'll escort you to the building. <laughs> Just keep me posted. Hey, Nostrad. How are things going? Not too bad. I can't complain. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> You're a big shot now, huh? Seems like only yesterday he was leading a gang of two-bit hoodlums. And now here he is, rubbing shoulders with capos like us. By the way, how are your hands, Nostrad? Mind if I take a look at them? My hands? Well, I heard you rubbed them together so hard you got burns. I wonder if you still have fingerprints. Guess it's not easy hiding behind your daughter's predictions, but just be careful, though. Rub too hard and your hands will burst into flame. <laughs> <laughs> Only a small, petty man feels envy. <laughs> Zenji! Stop! <clears throat> Zenji! <clears throat> <clears throat> Just what the hell do you think you're doing? Do you know who I am? You better let go of me or else! Take it easy, Senji. Yeah, come on, he's not worth it. I think you made your point. Yeah, let's go. Go back to where you came from, Nostrad.
You're bleeding. I'm fine. Hmm. <laughs> Too many men resent my success because they're unaware of their own incompetence. Hmm. <laughs> they have no clue what they're up against. Hmm? The most valuable asset in this day and age is information. And what information do people want the most? Do you have any idea? No. Information. Of the future. I'm talking about precognition. If you can predict the future with 100% accuracy, you can rule the world. Becoming one of the Ten Dawns is no longer an unattainable dream. I don't care how many enemies I make along the way, nothing will stop me from climbing all the way to the top. Kurapika. Yes? I want you to know that I expect great things from you. In return, I'm prepared to reward your loyalty. Liar, Daddy. Whenever you say the words, I promise, I know you're lying to me. Well, fine. If you're not gonna take me, I'll have to go by myself. But... Who knew I'd need a pass to get in? Oh... I guess I'll have to wait till next year after all. Hmm... And I wanted to go so bad... All right then, you're clear to enter. So even the police are cooperating. That's because it's the Phantom Troop. They've established a one kilometer perimeter around the building. Anybody who tries to breach it will be pumped full of lead. Hello? Kurapika, we have a problem. Miss Neon ran away. <sighs> Give me the details. It looked like she was having fun, so when she told us she was going to the restroom, we thought nothing of it. But she must have had it all planned out beforehand because she changed her clothes and everything. Okay. I think I know where she's headed. You do? Yes. Go back to the hotel and wait for us. Yeah, okay. Basho, Karapika says he knows where she went and he wants us back at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, all right. What do you think? Is Karapika gonna be okay? Hmm. It's hard to say, but I think my flute may have calmed him down a little bit. And how do you think he feels about being an assassin? All I can do is judge from the sound of his heartbeat when he was asked to join their group, and I could tell he had some reservations about it. Then why agree to it? He's driven by something we can't understand. It's an all-consuming goal. <sighs> In order to reach that goal, he's willing to sacrifice everything, even his own life. All of the decisions he's making right now are being determined by it. <sighs> what a way to live. I couldn't do it. I mean, is there really anything worth giving your life for? It's short enough, why not enjoy it while we can? But whatever, to each his own, right? We got an idea where Miss Neon's at, so we'll head back to the hotel. Okay. He could be right. What's going on? Your daughter has run away, it appears. <coughs> Don't worry, I think she's headed to the same place we are. The auction? Yes. She has had her mind set on acquiring the mummy. She never makes things easy. We're sorry, but the number you've called is temporarily unavailable. Please hang up and try again later. She's turned her phone off. Without a valid pass, she'll be turned away at the checkpoint, and then where will she go? Yes, hello. This is Light Nostrad. I want you to put the police at every checkpoint on high alert. If a girl in her late teens tries to enter without a pass, hold her until I get there. She's my daughter. This is it. This is where they hold the auction. Thank you so much. I couldn't have gotten in without your help. You're welcome. It is the least I could do, after all. Your father's always been good to me. But don't tell him you got me in. Yes, of course. I understand. Looks like we still have a little time before the auction gets underway. Would you like to have a drink while we wait? Yeah, sure. Cheers. Cheers. That's better. I was really thirsty from all that running around. No time to catch your breath, huh? Yeah! Mm. It felt like the bodyguards my dad hired were suffocating me. But right before they were gonna put me on an airship back home, I escaped. Really? 
How did you manage to slip away from your bodyguards? What I did was kind of cool, actually. <laughs> First, I got them to take me shopping before we left, and I bought all this stuff I could use to make a disguise. Then I went to the bathroom, changed really fast, and then snuck away in a crowd of other girls. You're lucky you didn't get caught. I know! I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So, Miss Neon, I hear you're good at fortune-telling. I can't quite remember who told me that, though. Yeah, I am good at that. Lots of important people ask me to do it. Your predictions, how often do they turn out to be true? I'm not sure, but they say I'm always right. Huh? What do you mean? Aren't you the one who tells them? Yeah, but it's automatic. My hand kind of writes the fortunes by itself. Really? That sounds interesting. Think you could tell me my fortune, too? <laughs> yeah. Name. Crollo Lucifer. Oh, wow. 26 years old. You're a lot older than I thought. Do I look it? No, not at all. You're pretty cool. But your name's kind of weird. I know. That's why my friends always call me Leader. <laughs> then they must be weird, too. Okay, here it goes. What? You let her go? Yeah, but this was before I got the APB on her. She was alone in a taxi, and she didn't have a pass, so I turned her back with a warning. She was mad at first, but eventually she left. We're just a little bit too late. All right then. Print out my daughter's picture and give it to every cop in the city. And do it now! I can find her. Huh? Hmm. Just provide me with a map of the city. All right, there you go. Can I read it? Go ahead. I should probably tell you that the fortunes I write are usually made up of four or five poems. Each one talks about what will happen every week of whatever month it is. So in this case, the stuff in the first one might have already happened. Okay. Forever set, a precious moon is lost. The others mourn him with ceremony grand. Rising up to heaven, the mighty moon of frost with a melody of the morning band. Harvest barren, wine spilled, lovers slumber beside the bloody scarlet eyes. Though cut in half shall be your number, tis not lost wherein your advantage lies. Amuse yourself with the entr'acte. Seek out new friends once in a bind. Perhaps to the east one can be tracked. The one most needed you're sure to find. <gasps> Your fortune telling is amazing. It's very accurate. Let me ask you about this first poem. No, 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 don't, don't, don't! I told you before I don't really know what I write. I get the feeling they'll be more accurate if I don't get involved. All right, fair enough. Excuse me, I I'll be right back. <sighs> That's the first time I've ever seen a guy cry. Whoa, why is my heart beating so fast? <clears throat> it would appear as though your daughter is already inside the cemetery building. What the hell? Driver, step on it! It's almost time. Shall we go? Yeah. I'm sure glad we met each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Because unlike my dad, you don't seem like the kind of guy who'd lie to me. Can I ask you something? Sure. A lot of my fortune has to do with the soul's eternal rest. And it made me wonder. Do you believe in an afterlife? Not really, no. I believe predictions for the future are meant for people who are alive. Even if a fortune has something to do with death, it should provide some sort of comfort. So yours should help you like that. Yes, I certainly think it will. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm just repeating something I once heard. When I was little, I saw this fortune teller on television. She said that the purpose of fortunes was ultimately to make people happy. But like mine, she said that hers often held ominous warnings about what was going to happen. 
but that gives you a chance to change your life, become a better person, and avoid those bad things. At the time, I was so impressed by how true that sounded that I've never forgotten what she said. I've admired her ever since, and tried to follow her example. You're not talking about the Galactic Matron, are you? Yeah, that's her. If I remember correctly, she doesn't believe in an afterlife. No, she doesn't. That's kind of why I don't either. Well, I do. I believe we each have an eternal soul. That's actually why I'm here. To fulfill my dead friend's wish. Really? Your dead friend's wish? What was it? You want to know? Yeah, tell me. What he wanted... ...was to wreak havoc. Miss Neon, are you okay? Huh? 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 Miss Neon, what's wrong? Miss Neon! Is there somewhere she can lie down? Maybe an empty room? Yes, uh, of course. All the rooms on the upper floors are open to guests of the auction. All right. Call a doctor and have him meet us up there. <sighs> this is the north elevator checkpoint. We need an ambulance down here right away. Can't do it. We're under strict orders not to let anyone in who doesn't have a pass. Tell them to go to the front. I'll have someone drive them to the hospital. Yes, sir. What the hell? Are you guys stupid? How can you be sure moving her around won't make her condition worse, huh? This is Miss Neon, Light Nostrad's daughter. If anything happens to her, you're gonna be the one who's held responsible. I know, I heard. Most of the Ten Dawns are fans of hers. We have no choice. Make the call. Mm. Hey, do me a favor and rewind that a little bit. Hmm? Sure. That's far enough. That's one of the swiftest blows I've ever seen. Anyone else would have missed it. He could have just as easily lopped her head off if he'd felt like it. <laughs> hmm? What a catch. I haven't felt this excited in a while. I've found my prey. He's mine. I'm Light Nostrad of the Nostrad family. My daughter's in the hotel. We need to find her right away. Fifth floor, room 501. That's where your daughter's resting. Okay. I wonder how she got past security in the first place. There's just no way she could have gotten her hands on a valid pass without me. Does she know anyone else in the Mafia community who might have helped her? <sighs> no, she doesn't. Other than her fortune-telling, she has nothing to do with family business. Huh? I have to check on something for just a minute. Okay. As soon as you're finished, meet me on the fifth floor. Miss Neon, daughter of Light Nostrad, head of the Nostrad family. How did this get on here? These photos of Basho and Baze must have been posted in the last few hours. What's a picture of her doing on the Hunter website? I don't know, but that's probably how they identified her. They must have brought her here for some reason. <laughs> When I find out who did this, I'll tear them apart! I need you to calm down, sir. The first thing we have to do is get your daughter to safety. Right, of course. What do we do? Based on the perpetrator's actions, your daughter is not his primary objective. I believe he took her as a hostage to ensure he'd get in the building. He must have felt his entry pass wouldn't be enough to get him through security. I heard the person who brought my daughter in was a young man. In any case, we need to get her out of here before the situation gets worse. I've already contacted Melody, Basho, and the others. They're on their way. Are you sure we can trust them with my daughter's safety? I want you to leave with them, too. But then, what about the auction? There won't be one. No? Why not? Because this place will be a battlefield. The auction will be cancelled again. That scent. I smell it. A trail of blood. 
dripped on purpose, then wiped up. Barely enough to leave a scent, barely enough to be detected by a certain breed. You're the same as me, a predator. Don't worry. I don't use traps. Too boring. Let's do this one on one. Yeah. That was Crollo. He said come to the cemetery building and unleash hell. Well, that's convenient, because we're headed in that direction anyway. Do you know what the other guys are up to? We all think the same thing. Clean up trash on way to building. That, and how Krolo wants us to do it. Very unusual. What did he say? Make a big show! How come I'm still alive? <laughs> Forever set, a precious moon is lost. The others mourn him with ceremony grand. <gasps> <gasps> Checkpoint C. A white four-door sedan just broke through the perimeter and is headed toward the cemetery building. Don't worry. We'll take care of it from here. You guys just stay at your posts and try to maintain the perimeter. And don't let any civilians through, all right? Do it. <gasps> That's what you get for messing with us! When you make out your report, just call it a traffic accident. Wait a minute, isn't that the chick from the photos? <laughs> Rising up to heaven, the mighty moon of frost, with a melody from the morning band. <gasps> How's that possible? They're called indoor fish, nen fish that can only live in a closed room. They're carnivores and prefer human flesh. You don't feel pain and you don't bleed while you're being eaten. And you can't die until the Nenfish disappears. Oh. Dear Uvo, can you hear this? We dedicate this requiem to you.
No. I just get a busy signal. <gasps> Something's going on over there. Do you hear that? Somebody's taking shots with the big guns. I guess that means war. <gasps> the, the spiders! I see. It's like a battlefield out here. The air is filled with heartbeats of hatred, terror, anger, and confusion. <gasps> I found out who's responsible for this whole mess. It's a girl with some kind of weird vacuum cleaner and a monster with guns for fingers. Karapika, did you hear that? Yeah. They're members of the Phantom Troop. <laughs> Stick with the plan and protect Miss Neon. And whatever you do, do not engage the enemy. Okay, we understand. I wouldn't even if I was ordered to. These guys are some kind of killing machines. Leorio? <laughs> hey, Go. Where are you right now? At that cafe near the hotel, Zeppal took off. What's all the commotion about anyway? We think the Phantom Troop's attacking. That would explain it. We've been trying to reach Kurapika all night, but we haven't been able to get through yet. All right. I'll meet you in the park by that big sculpture. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Here I go. What happened to our guys? And where's all the firepower I asked for? We can't let them get in the building, understand? Jeez, I heard these guys were a menace, but ten of them going to war against all of us? They must be insane. The ambulance is pulling up. We ready? Yeah. Let's go. Yes, sir. What's happened to this city? I remember a time when you could go for a walk after dinner. Where is this patient? <laughs> Try anything funny and I'll blow your head off, understand? Now follow me. What the hell's going on out there anyway? Yeah, it sounds like World War III! Are we having this auction or not? Doesn't anyone know anything? Everyone here is either a boss, capo, or some other high-ranking mafia associate. They're showing their solidarity against the Phantom Troop's attacks, even though they're well aware of how dangerous it is to be here. But panic is starting to set in. The auction organizers won't be able to maintain control of this situation much longer. Hello? Finally! I've been trying to reach you forever! Go! Can you talk right now? No, sorry, I'm very busy. I'll call you back when I have more time. Hang on, I'll make it quick. I just need a minute, okay? There's something you need to know. Me and Kilua met the Phantom Troop. Well, actually... They kind of caught us. What are you trying to do, get yourselves killed? Don't you know how dangerous they are? Let me talk. We thought we knew what we were getting ourselves into until we actually saw two of them in person. That's when we knew we weren't strong enough to take them on. And that's why we've been trying to contact you. We can't stop them without your help. Yeah, that's right. And maybe we can help you too. This isn't a game. I won't assist in your suicide. I guess you don't want to know where their hideout is then. Thanks, but I have my own sources. But do your sources know what their abilities are? Forget it! Just stay away from them, you hear me? You killed one of them, didn't you? You're the one they call the chain user. They're dead set on finding you. Fine, be that way. But even if you don't consider us as friends or equals, we're still gonna help each other, whether you like it or not. Karapika, listen. One of the guys in the Phantom Troop cried in front of us. He couldn't help it. He said a chain user killed his friend, and he wanted to get even. Seeing him like that made me feel angry. He cared for his friend, but not for anyone he killed. We're on your side. We want to stop those guys too. Please, Karapika. Give me that! Karapika! I have to go. I'll call you back. Wait, just listen! Ah, darn. He hung up. Even if you don't consider us as friends or equals, we're still gonna help each other. 
We want to stop those guys, too. Gone. This doesn't concern you. Don't get involved. No luck. He must have turned his phone off. What do we do now? I don't know. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Are you all right? It's over, man. We can't stop them. They're too powerful. You want to know how powerful? Let me show you! Ah! I guess he's broken. I'll just have to go find another puppet. Can someone tell me what's going on? The backup I asked for over an hour ago hasn't shown up yet. What? They aren't there? We were the last ones to leave. We'll be there in a minute. We're just down the street from the hotel. What the hell is that? <sighs> Impossible. Can't be happening. We have 2,000 armed men. Have they all been wiped out? It's me, Bean. Put me through to the Dodds right away. You better hand over our weapons right now. Sorry, but, uh. Oh, come on. Screw the regulations. Don't you see what's going on here? So, what if there are professional assassins in the building? How do we know we can trust them? I say we handle this ourselves. Gentlemen, my name is Zeno Zoldik. Those are the Zoldiks? I thought they were just a legend. I can't believe it! The Ten Dawns hired them? Listen to me carefully. Most of the assassins you hired to eliminate the Phantom Troop have already been killed, and we know that one of your enemies is in the building already. Being armed to the teeth isn't going to save you. Even if you were, I could still kill every one of you in less than seven seconds. And your enemies have similar skills. So I'd suggest you all calm down. Unless you have some kind of death wish. What is it? He was attacked from behind. It was very quick. He suppressed his bloodlust perfectly. There isn't even the faintest signature. Huh. I guess we'll have to use N to track him. Looks like we have an adversary who's going to make us work for it this time. Let's start on the roof and corner him down in the basement. That would be a radius of almost a hundred meters. You sure you can handle that, Dad? Give me some credit, son. I can still do three times that. But you know what? Something tells me we're not getting paid enough for this job. This guy can steal other people's abilities.
Be careful, Dad. This guy can steal other people's abilities. Sure is rough. That must be an exceptional knife if it can break my skin. Judging from the design, it's a mid-era Ben's knife, and it feels like the blade has been coated with a toxin. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Fine? Really? It only takes a tenth of a milligram of this toxin to paralyze a whale. So if he can steal abilities, then he's a specialist. If he could use those abilities himself, he'd truly be a force to be reckoned with. But of course, that would mean there's a higher activation cost. He wouldn't be able to obtain the ability otherwise. He'll have to meet four, or maybe five conditions before he can accomplish it. Correct. This old man's one tough customer. He can't meet all those conditions while taking both of us on at the same time. So at least we won't have to worry about him stealing our abilities during combat. His use of a poisoned knife is proof of that. Correct again. Guess that leaves me no choice. Silva, cover me. Once I pin him down, kill him, even if you have to kill me too. I understand. Stolen abilities. Guess I should be careful until I know what it does. Or at least that would be the obvious thing to do. Hm. He's just trying to buy himself some time. Oh, I see what he's doing now. He can trap the abilities of others in that conjured book of his, and then use them whenever he wants to. He's closing in, but it doesn't seem like he's planning an attack. He probably has to be within a certain range of his target in order for that cloak to do its thing. So, all we have to do is keep our distance. When the time's right, we'll strike. This old man's really something. Don't think I'll be able to take him alive. This guy's pretty impressive. He's managing to dodge all of Dad's attacks while still keeping an eye on me. We don't know what he's capable of. In order to stop him, we may just have to pay with our lives. Everyone, please calm down. We've just made contact with the Ten Dons. We're patching them through on a live video feed. So please follow me into the auction hall. How is everyone doing tonight? Sorry we haven't contacted you sooner. Things got messier than we anticipated, but there's no need to worry. We've taken control of the situation. In fact, their leader is already dead. Yeah! I assure you, it's only a matter of time before the rest of the Phantom Troop are disposed of. So please, just leave the hunting to the pros and enjoy the auction. All right, everyone, you heard him. The Ten Dons have the situation well in hand. They want you to participate in the auction, so let's not disappoint them.
Illumi. Yeah. Where's my client? He's right here. I didn't realize you were fighting him. You sure he's still alive? Good. Give him a message for me. Tell him we've disposed of the Ten Dons. Advise him to wire the balance due to the aforementioned account. Whew, boy. Guess we both had a close shave, huh? You're not gonna finish me off? As you know, our clients were the Ten Dons. And now that they're all dead, we don't see any reason to fulfill our contract with them by killing you. Really? You know you won't get a chance like this ever again. What do you take us for? Do you actually think we do this for the experience? This is strictly business. I won't endanger my life if I'm not getting paid for it. Can I ask you something? Hmm? If it was one-on-one, -on -one, you against me, who'd win? Hmm. You wouldn't stand a chance. Although it's difficult to say what the outcome would be if you were really trying. Insolent brat. So he knew all along. <sighs> that was close. I couldn't steal his ability. Yes, wait for her at the hospital. She'll be arriving shortly. I don't know about this. Are you sure it's safe? If they wanted to stop her from going to the hospital, they could have just destroyed the ambulance. It'll be safer to get her out than keep her here. It's me. Ignore the ambulance. We'll go ahead as planned. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We'll now get the auction underway. Let's have the first item up for bid. <sighs> Things got a little hairy there for a while, but all's well that ends well. At least none of the capos or bosses got hurt. Oh, hey, thanks. <laughs> the next item up for bid is this solid gold executioner sword from the Yule National Treasury. Do we have an opening bid? 30 million. Make it 50. All right, 50 million is the bid. The next item is this Celadon vase from the Lai Dynasty, the last of its kind. This one's the Celadon vase, right? Okay, make us a copy. Let the bidding start at 100 million. The auction's already started. Yeah, sounds like the Phantom Troops leader got himself killed. They're hunting for the rest of them now. Those pros are worth every penny. <sighs> So, while you were wasting your time babysitting for the boss, the Zoldics were taking care of business, which makes me wonder what you're still doing here. You waiting for someone to take you back to your hotel? Huh? Maybe you're sticking around to hold your master's hand, or maybe you're trying to take credit for other people's work. Is that it? Oh! My nose! You broke my nose! So this is their leader? He's just a little punk. Don't damage his face any more than it already is. We'll put his picture up on the net. Okay, we'll be right there. They found the rest of the bodies. There's another one over here. That's five in total. Find out who they are. Check dental records, DNA, fingerprints, everything. Then I want you to find their parents, siblings, lovers, and friends, and kill them all. Now, 
final item of this year's auction. Considered to be one of the most beautiful colors in all the world, the Scarlet Eyes. Since the Kurta clan has been annihilated, we know only 36 <laughs> pairs remain. This pair has an exceptionally brilliant tone. Who'll start us off at 100 million? Sir. This is Karapika. I apologize. The leader of the spiders has been killed, and the auction's gone ahead as planned. What? They're auctioning off the last item as we speak, the Scarlet Eyes. Do you want me to bid on them? Yes, you must get them. What's your limit? There is no limit. I don't care what it costs. Very well, sir. All right, the bid is 310 million. Going what? 350 million. 351. 355! 370! 371! Five! Very well. The bid is now 500 million. Do I hear more? One billion! Oh, oh no! Who is <laughs> What? 2.9 billion? Yes. I got into a bidding war with the bald man from the Assassin's meeting. Zinji! Damn that greedy pig. That's a lot more than I wanted to pay. Well, it doesn't matter. I can easily earn that back with Neon's fortunes. All right, thanks for the update. Well done. It's the price I have to pay to move up in the community. But as long as I have you, I'll never have a problem making money. You're my ace in the hole. Now and forever. Did you actually think you could get away with this? Hand him over! Back off. Huh? What'd you say? I'm warning you. Get away from me. Or die. Me and Kilua met the Phantom Troop. Even if you don't consider us as friends or equals, we're still going to help each other. One of the guys in the Phantom Troop cried in front of us. Seeing him like that made me feel angry. He cared for his friend, but not for anyone he killed. We want to stop those guys too. We don't have to anymore. The spiders are dead. There's nothing left for me to do. We'll be waiting in Day Road Park, Gon and Kilua.
Кропика! Isn't it great? Now that the spiders have all been killed, you can finally do what you've always dreamed of. You can go and get them all back. All the scarlet eyes. So, if you need any help, just let us know. Come on, Gon, you deserved it. What about this? Hello? Guess who? Huh, Leorio. Hmm? It's been a while. Yeah.
Surprise! We're still here.